All right, all right. Late night, Yuck Letterman, man. We live, man. On the Letterman side of the game, the Sharif side of the game, man. I'm going to let the motherfucker OOP go out, man. Let them goddamn bad signals go out, man, so everybody can tap in, my friend. You feel me? Definitely, I need to tap in, shit. You did. But yeah, man, Yuck Mouth TV, subscribe to your guy. You know, this ain't a WTF weekly. It's not the Wonder Twins. Uh, Smoke a lot radio. We didn't uh do it this week because one of our um, I guess canceled. You know what I mean? So uh, we pushed it back to another date. Ah. So yeah, man. Let's just throw some content out there. People miss the kid on the screen. Also got a new interview up there uh, uh on the Innovators, man. Go check that out. Dope interview. A little history of the kid. You feel me? I see your boy uh. Fish and game, first boy in the building. I see you, man. You definitely get some screen time, my G. Welcome everybody else who uh, got that bad signal. We are live, my nigga, at 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. It's early for niggas in New York, 5 o'clock. You're probably waking up, going to the gym, going to work, whatever, getting dressed, ready to finesse. What the fuck am I looking for? Crazy. Oh, my phone. Damn. Where my goddamn phone at so I can shout out the cash apps? My bad, y'all. Ah, shit. Get it. Ah, bye-bye. So I can shout out the cash apps. Appreciate them cash apps, too, man. Salute to the nation. Salute to the committee. Let's see where everybody tapping in from before I get started. You did. Yeah, man. Milwaukee in the building. I see your boy Birmingham in the building, man. I see your son of, uh, woo. Son of something. I see your boy. Yeah, Syracuse in this motherfucker. I see you, Bubba. Uh-huh. Trevor, I see your boy. Charlotte and his motherfucker, man, tapping in. Okay, my nigga. Absolutely, I seen that. Yep, he could do that. It's like I could perform, you know what I mean? I ain't got nothing. Chicago and his motherfucker, Merced and his bitch. KC and his bitch. And I'm glad you saw it, because when I do it, niggas complain about it. He do it, ah, oh, it's all good. You know what I mean? You see the double standard with the shit. Crenshaw on this motherfucker. I see your boy. Where my niggas at? My Slauson niggas at, man. You feel me? Rich City, California. I see your boy Fontana. What it do, man? Birmingham, man. The UK tapping in. I see your boy. Yeah, man. Shit, man. On a late night one. You feel me? Uh-huh. I see your 303. Colorado on this thing. I see your boy Brentwood. Okay, the... the Boy, got some money. Tapping in from Brentwood, boy. You got some bread. What's the boy name? <laughs> Blockbuster video. Okay. Yeah, you got some bread, Brentwood. <laughs> where, where your kids go to? Sierra Canyon. <laughs> I'll fuck with y'all, man. Stocking on the tap in. I see your boy Hillside. St. Louis in this thing, mate. Yeah, man, I see you, mate. What's up? Thank you, Yashua. Blessing for the blessings. Thank you, mate. Aunt Doom, Sacramento in this motherfucker. I see you, Aunt. Ah. Yeah, man. I've been tapping in. I ain't want shit. I want to tap in with y'all, man. I miss y'all like y'all probably miss me, my nigga. You feel me? No Frank Ocean, man. How y'all doing? Shit. Just tapping in right quick, fucker. But it ain't really no shit to, to really talk about, man couple situations and shit but um this y'all night you know what i mean y'all tap in y'all put on the screen what's topics i want to talk about you know which i want to fuck with i'm gonna throw the bat line out too so y'all can tap in you know um y'all gotta excuse, excuse my wonder twin goose the great sometimes you don't uh tolerate the bullshit i love it you know i love the mess no frank ocean you know i like the sig i like to have fun and sometimes a lot of these motherfuckers that hop on the stage be funny as fuck in their own little manner. Even though they be wild and shit and sometimes lightweight crazy and wild. But it's funny. And it's good content. You know what I mean? And it's good uh, dialect. You know what I mean? Because niggas be roasting each other. You know, this shit turned out being dope. You know what I mean? To me. You know, but uh, Gucci ain't feeling the you, you clip one of you niggas off the stage real quick. So I shot the bat line out. Gooch is not here tonight, so I will not be clipping nobody unless you real out of pocket. Don't get out of pocket. Say some stupid shit. You know, other than that, man, talk your shit, man. Period, you know? 
I say once again, leave your flags and your politics at the door, man. I don't want to hear about nobody politics. I don't want you over here talking politics, man. You know, niggas is catching Rico cases, all types of shit. You know what I mean? And if you want to talk politics, man, take your ass to Clubhouse, bro. They talk politics all day, my nigga. You could bring up niggas' jail records. You could bring up niggas' snitch paperwork, alpha David statements, hella shit. <clears throat> you talk about your street politics, your gang politics, all that shit. But right here, we cooling, my nigga. We cooling, man. We don't try to get niggas arrested over here, my nigga. So I do not want to hear it. Do not come over here like, man, the woo woo, the little tone tone just shot this one and shot. Nah, we don't want to hear it. nothing about little tone tone, nigga. Nothing about little tone tone. Sorry about that. Ah, cool. Period, mate. <laughs> you keep that story about little tone tone shooting a nigga on your motherfucking platform. You feel me? Straight up. Also, niggas tapping in, man. You got to show your face, man. You got to something, nigga. I ain't tap. I ain't. Niggas with black squares, man. I can't really rock out. You feel me? No Frank Ocean. Ballastomy. Uh, Ballostormy. Whatever the fuck. You have to show your face, my nigga. Uh, okay, I got you right there, my nigga. What's up with it, champ? You. You. Playboy. All right. Let's let him get his game together. But yeah, man, fuck that, man. Let's say Yuck Mouth is top five. Thank you, man. Appreciate y'all, man. Um, it's a lot of hot ass rappers, man. I want to um ask y'all something, man. Do y'all think that I was saying this the other day on the podcast, or not on the podcast, but on my IG, I was saying that the niggas was losing to the female rappers. And now that I look at it, American hip hop is losing to international hip hop. Let me say that again. American hip hop is losing to international hip hop. Why I say that is it seemed like the the people from overseas is taking this shit more serious than American. I think the Americans got real, you know, real cocky. You know what I mean? Like real, I want I, I want to say not lazy, but you know, not elevated it more. You know what I mean? To where other people are trying to elevate the shit. You know, you got some of the biggest production coming from Europe. You know what I mean? And places like, you know, Brazil and shit. You know, some of the dopest producers, you know, producing the hottest shit. You know, um, uh, what's my dude name, man? Uh, Pop Smoke. That whole sound. That All this production was, was a European producer. You know, um, I think the European basketball players. You look at uh, Jokic. You look at and B, you look at all the people, shit, tall ass uh, Yembe, whatever. Look at all the overseas players, man. It seemed like they taking it a little bit more serious than the American players. Look how they playing. American players, they don't want to do shit, you know, lazy, don't want to do the dunk contest. You know what I mean? Niggas barely want to play in the all-star game. It's like, bro, man. Jordan and niggas is uh what this shit called low managing to where niggas is sitting out games man Jordan played all 82 games every time he was in this motherfucker he missed one game out of being in the motherfucker 15 years missed one game played all 82 nigga besides when he came like at the end of the season I guess he caught the end of the season when he came back but besides that when he caught the end of the season he played all 82 games all 15 years of for 14 14 years of the shit you know these players are getting paid triple the amount or four times the amount jordan was getting paid back then and they're lazy oh, i'm not playing today i don't want to play today my ankle hurt uh i'm sitting out like come on my nigga so american entertainers are getting very lazy and they wondering why you got all the Europeans, you got all the British people playing in all the movies and shit. They probably taking their role a little bit more serious than you. You wonder why America got blew out in that tournament, in that basketball tournament. Them motherfuckers over there blew us out, sent our American players back home to where you got motherfucker LeBron and them talking about, we going next year, we going, we going to the Olympics. Bro, unless y'all toughen up, them niggas going to beat y'all ass too. Them niggas was elbowing the shit out because they play like niggas used to play back in the day. You can hand check, two hands, nigga, you... Swatter nigga, tackle niggas <laughs> overseas. 
Nigga, it's like how niggas used to play in the 80s or the 90s. Nigga, it ain't no bullshit ass. You can't touch this, nigga, this little bullshit ass touch basketball, flag basketball that's going on, nigga. You can't even touch a player, can't bump them. That's why niggas just score 200, nigga. You can't touch the motherfucker, nigga. Like, pew, pew, pew. They blowing hella whistles. Them niggas overseas playing street ball, nigga. So Americans come over there with that bullshit. You can't touch me, sight. Blah, 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 blah. Wow, nigga got four elbows in a dunk. <laughs> oh, <cool. laughs> oh man, American basketball players is getting soft, my nigga. Period, because them got their rules. They got them Adam Silver, whatever them got their rules. He changed, nigga. It's not cool. It's that ninety-five percent of NBA's corn ball. You right. You right like a motherfucker. He said, you have played with, uh, said Kobe played with a uh, separated shoulder. And then how about these niggas not playing serious in the All-Star game, man? They said, oh, man, this is our vacation, man. We don't really play shit. You shit me. Every time Kobe got on that motherfucker, he playing like it's a motherfucking championship. Every time Jordan got out there, he playing like it's a fucking championship. And you saying niggas ain't taking it, <coughs> niggas are taking serious back then. <coughs> Why did Kobe steal the ball from Dwayne Wade at a fast break, open open court, about to slam the ball? Dwayne Wade chased this nigga down, smacked the nigga in the back of the, uh, smacked the nigga in the nose, break the nigga nose at the All-Star game. That's how competitive the shit was. Dwayne Wade was so mad that the nigga stole the ball, it was about to dunk, he ran up and fragrant fouled the nigga, swatted the nigga from behind, broke his nose, all type of shit. Kobe, Still play. I think he played. I mean, I don't know. Did he? Was it at that? I don't know. They took him out. The, they definitely took him out the game. But that still, that's how serious shit was back in the day, nigga. Boxing now is physical for rebounds, right? Yeah, these niggas can't even touch each other. And then the rap niggas getting hella lazy. Niggas ain't even writing raps no more. Niggas just turn the mic on and freestyle. You know, it's just microwave music and shit. So, yeah. The people overseas, man. The Afro beats then took over. Latin trap then took over. I mean, you name it. European, Euro production beats then took over. I don't know, man. They might take it from right up under us, my nigga, because niggas getting lazy. Niggas getting lazy. Basketball players, y'all getting lazy. The foreigners going to come over here and take all y'all deals. Y'all see the tall-ass YM Bay? Nigga, French nigga. This nigga already got a Louis Vuitton deal. YM Bay, this nigga taller than the motherfucker. Seven foot six. Seven foot six, nigga. Ambassador of Louis Vuitton already. First year rookie. French. Not American, French. Not American, my nigga. I'm just saying. French, nigga. So, hey, American players, man. Get your step your weight up, man, before niggas start watching NBA. Period. It's getting dry. It's getting dry. You can see that niggas. That's why niggas is having scoring 70 points a night. No defense. Niggas is not playing defense, bro. Niggas is afraid to. Play D on each other. I don't know what the fuck is going on, but I don't even watch basketball on TV. I watch the highlights. I catch the highlights. Because it ain't even sitting there worth watching all four quarters. It's not. And it's definitely red because the refs be giving a lot of motherfucking blow whistles for certain teams. I ain't going to say who. You know what I mean? Because, you know, hey, can't hate on my squad. But I, <laughs> y'all can guess, man. Niggas get a lot of whistles. That's all I'm going to say, baby. Blow the whistle. <laughs> Too short voice. Blow the motherfucker whistle. Period. What's my nigga name? They said Victor. Yeah. Victor Wimby. Wimby Abby. I don't know how to say that nigga name. Wimby Abby. Wimby. You just gonna call the nigga Wimby. Wimby. <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't fuck with the... Uh, it's not worth watching. And then the commentating is... It's, it's like... I don't know, man. The news is all about LeBron. Like, you know, it, a motherfucker could score 70 points and they managed to say, hey, he scored 70 points. But hey, 
LeBron had an injury. What is LeBron going to do? Hey, LeBron, is he going to play next year? Hey, what is LeBron? LeBron, LeBron. And it feel like they don't give no love to any other stars. You know what I mean? Like Steph Curry should be at the top. They barely get this nigga press. Not LeBron press. They ain't talking about Steph every day on ESPN or, or first take and all that shit. They talking about LeBron every fucking day. But there's other niggas that's on LeBron level that's top. Steph up there. You got Kev up there, Kevin Durant. You got, you got niggas up there that's doing they one too. MB, you got, I mean, Jokic, they don't give that nigga no love. This nigga done got MVPs, all types of shit. They don't talk about this nigga at all. You know what I mean? It's a lot of stars. It's a lot of stars in the NBA, and they don't get them niggas no shine because all the press is LeBron, 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 LeBron. Like, God, he didn't even play tonight. Why y'all talking about this nigga? But, oh, yeah, Tatum. Tatum is a boy, too. They said, I'm a lyricist acting like I can't pronounce words. I can't. <laughs> I just don't know how to say the nigga name. Why am me? Why ain't why I am they? I nigga it ain't in front of my face. I'm guessing it. It ain't like spelt in front of me. Why am they? <laughs> nigga. But anyway, um, yeah, the game is rigged. They can't play real ball. All the stars are sitting down, sitting out, not even playing. You know, why go to a game when the stars ain't playing? Like, think of the people that's paying for them tickets. They come to see the stars play. Let me go to a Warriors game and a, and a Laker game. They against the Warriors and Lakers. They playing against each other. LeBron, AD, Steph, Clay, and motherfucking uh, and uh, and goddamn, uh, what's my rest world wrestling nigga name, man? My wrestler, man. Goddamn, on the tip of my tongue, man. Anyway, they sit out. Who gonna really be at that? Who gonna really want to be at that game? Get to pay them tickets. You think you're about to see LeBron and Steph face off? LeBron ain't playing. You just see Steph go against. Him. You know what I mean? Like, come on, bro. Niggas ain't pay their money for that. Niggas ain't trying to watch that. Like, it was real motherfucking competitive, like beefs, my nigga. Like real basketball, Draymond. Right? Imagine if all them three sat out, and LeBron and them sat out. You just gotta watch all the other players play. It's like, now who who's there for this shit? But that's what it's becoming. The stars are sitting down and you're watching the fucking bench players in a second. You know what I mean? The, the A-list, or the, I mean the, the D-list or the C-list stars play when the A-list and B-list stars is fucking sitting down. You know, niggas ain't come for that, period. And it's a, a disservice to the fans. People that pay, pay for them tickets, especially niggas that got season tickets. Like, God damn, bro, I come to see my favorite player on the team. Which is usually the star of the team or the stars of the team, and they're not playing now. Like, God damn. So, yeah, oh, yeah, big shout out to the sponsor. You know what I mean? Um, Go to E40 Selections and get you some of this. Uh, e Carinta. This is the Blanco. Last time we had the, um, last time we had the Reposado. They got the Blanco Reposado and they got the Aneo, man. You feel me? Tequila at its finest, man. Go to E40, I mean, Earl Stevens Selections, baby. And get you some of that Ikrinta. Oh boy. And tell them Yuck Mouth and Smoke Lot Radio and Yuck Mouth TV sent you. One of the twins sent you all the above. You feel me? Toast y'all out there. Late night niggas coming from the club. See niggas two o'clock in the morning. Niggas driving home from the club, man. Hey, man. Say, man. Toast y'all, man. Mid it. I went to the Warrior, Warriors games two years before they left Oakland. Warriors scored. The Warrior fans screamed, go. My last Warrior game. Hey, at the end of the day, man, um, the basketball just ain't the same, man. Like, niggas is more paid attention to football, man. Like, you seen what that Super Bowl did. They got 140 million people watched the Super Bowl. When have 140 million niggas ever watched fucking basketball i'll wait 140 million for the super bowl that's crazy watching they watch live on television 140 million watch that goddamn super bowl bro 
Yeah, basketball got to step it up. And them niggas get paid too much to be lazy like that. Niggas want to be fashionistas and shit. Niggas want to be clothing designers, rappers, producers, everything but a motherfucking basketball player. They pay you motherfuckers $150 million, $100 million, $50 million, And your ass want to go over here and hang with Kanye or somebody that do clothes, fucking Pharrell and shit, and try to do some designs. Like, nigga, get your ass on the basketball court and shoot some threes, nigga. Get your dribble game right, nigga. You can't even dribble, nigga. Get your dribble game right. Fuck looking at motherfucking clothes, nigga. You got a stylist for that. Sing your stylist out, nigga. You need to hit the motherfucking gym, Slim, and get it in, my friend. Your handles ain't even right for you to be all playing like that, nigga. You get too much money, nigga. Stop playing, man. They said Taylor Swift brought tickets. Shit. Look at last year's Super Bowl, man. It did it did a lot. It didn't do this number. But Taylor Swift didn't perform. You think 140 million people was watching because of Taylor Swift? Are you out your motherfucking mind? Okay, then. She must went 140 million times. Oh, she yeah, 140 million times platinum. She must went platinum 140 times. 140 times platinum. That's what she is. If she if if that's her fan base, she 140 times platinum and her fan base is watched. She didn't even fucking perform. That's bullshit. Now, did she bring some audience? Hell yeah. Did she uh make the ratings go up? Hell yeah. But all them people went there because of no fucking Taylor Swift. Sorry about that. Half them people in the crowd don't even know her. They are real dedicated football fans. Period. You got old heads in that motherfuckers, granddaddies, grandmas in that bitch, you know, that don't give a shit about Taylor Swift, man. Period. But sound cute. Sound cute. Then if that, if it's if it's that, when I ain't gonna even go. When have we watched the Grammys then? When have we watched the Grammys or uh, uh, whatever they perform at, the Oscars or something? When have we watched the reward uh, award show and it had 140 million people watching it and she was performing? I wait. And she actually performed and got a Grammy, hella Grammys, and performed. It wasn't 140 million people watching that shit. See? Got you on that one. Nigga, if the Grammys did that same numbers when she performed there, did 140 million viewers because she performed at the Grammys, then you got it. Shit, the Grammys did 200 million views when she performed. Ah, oh, man, you got it. The fuck out of here, man. Grammys ain't doing no 100 million shit views, nigga. Period. 100 million nothing. They probably got to solve 5, 10 million good one like 20 million views on the super spectacular one 30 million probably when mike and them did it or whatever but come on man 140 million nah she the most popular white girl on earth ah huh. i don't know i know she definitely the, uh, the most popular white singer in the united states definitely you know i tell you that She definitely is the most popular white singer in the United States. You know, Adele, she up there with her too, but Adele can't fuck with the Swifties, you know? She cannot fuck with the Swifties, man. Let's hear what, uh, since we speaking about the um the All-Star shit, let's hear what uh, Gilbert Arena's got to say about it. What could fix the All-Star, man? I rock with uh, Gills Arena, man. Y'all fuck with this uh, podcast. You see, I'm definitely subscribed. Uh, one of my new, uh, shit, my new favorite sports podcast. I think this is the dopest one out of all of them, um, as far as the, the sports podcast dudes. You know, Mace is my best rapper sports podcast. But far as uh, athlete sports podcast, Gills the best one to me. Let's get it going. Fair use. Gills Arena, follow this nigga. Oh, no, he talking about, he ain't talking about the All-Star. This nigga talking about, oh, shit. They talking about the Bulls. Oh, man, hold on, mate. Hold up, swole up. You see this nigga, Scotty Pippen, and all them niggas trying to do this tour, nigga, to talk shit about Jordan, nigga. They doing a fuck Jordan tour. 
Like, you can't say fuck the nigga that got you your rings, my nigga. Like Gilbert said, all you niggas got rings because of Jordan, man. Y'all should be saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Should be bowing down to this. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Niggas left that nigga and never got another ring in a motherfucking life. The nerve of these niggas, man. That's why I say, man, you can help niggas, elevate niggas. Y'all can win. Y'all could. But then as soon as that shit split up and they got some shit to talk, oh, fuck that nigga. He got fuck that nigga. But goddamn, when you was around me, we won. We ran that shit up, nigga. We did our thing. What the fuck problem you got with me? You know, niggas always got the problems with the niggas they had the most success with. And love the niggas that they never had success with. That's crazy. Let's go, fair use. Gills, Gills Arena, let's go. So according to the NBL, uh, Scotty Pippen, Horace Grant, and Luke Longley are going on a no bull tour to tell their side of the last dance story and what it was like playing for the Bulls in the 90s. And we can't see it in this photo, but Horace Grant actually had a pair of J's on. Uh, they made the announcement. <laughs> what are J's? Or they? I don't know, it looked like he got him from finish line. Uh-oh. Yes. <laughs> it may have been L's. Them shit was nasty. Team Jordans. <laughs> yeah, not even team. Them Team Jordans. He, he can't get the regular one. No, he's forbidden. <laughs> yeah. He put his address in. It's a red flag. Man, wearing his shoes at the same time is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what do y'all think about uh, that Bulls trio going in to kind of question the narrative of how they were presented oh. in the last day? You mean presented like... Uh, NBA champions? Uh, that was that, part of it. Okay. So they're presented as NBA champions is basically when they're going in there saying how great it was, you know, um, with their talent and skill. Are they? You know, and they won some championships because that's what uh, the media's have us valuing, right? Championships is what our <laughs> legacy is, right? So I hope they go in there and talk about how great it was to be pushed by the greatest man of all time <clears throat> and made them some legitimate champions for them to even go on stage to talk about the three championships that they had because we all know they wouldn't have had one without it. So it should be all love, we will hope. Uh, because if they say anything negative about winning the championship, it will kind of like hurt the legacy of just ring culture because you got three men up there that got, what, 12 rings? Between the three of them, talking how bad it was to win it. Ooh, no. I mean, I will. Uh, Perhaps. I mean, I'm pretty sure if I hear some one negative thing about ring culture, I'm going to tell you right now, having 300 million seems a lot better again. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Because 12 rings up there complaining. <laughs> I know who ain't complaining. 300 million. <laughs> 12 rings between them three niggas. Scotty Pippen, Horace Grant, and Luke Longley. 12 fucking rings. And these niggas is mad. So what? Scotty got six, Horace got three, and Luke got three. So 12. Or one got four and two. I don't know the exact lineup of the shit. But the nerve of niggas, man. The nigga you had the most success with in your career and you want to do a shit on them tour. The Last Dance also had those players in it. It wasn't just Michael Jordan telling some story. It had the actual footage. We seen it with our own two eyes, nigga. We seen it. It is nothing that you could do unless you got some other footage. Fuck your tour, whatever you got to say. Show me some footage of the shit you talking about because the shit Jordan was talking about was all on footage on The Last Dance. All the footage from, from fucking practicing to games to nigga locker room talk, nigga. All that shit on the bus, nigga. All the shit. Nigga on the plane, everything, nigga. The whole behind the scenes. So if these niggas ain't got the behind the scenes, behind the behind the scenes, <laughs> I don't believe you. You need more people. And Scotty Pippen, you need to go get your ex-wife, nigga, because she is in the streets, nigga. You need to, don't worry. You need to do, do a tour about ex-wives. Fucking your teammate's son. That's what it need to be. Basketball. <laughs> basketball husbands. <laughs> it need to be basketball husbands. <laughs> Real they have basketball wives. It need to be basketball husbands, man. 
The Scotty Pippen need to be on the first season Monday. <laughs> Try to get his bitch back. <laughs> Let's do it for the kids. Like, come on now. Like, you know that shit was disrespectful fucking with Jordan's son. I don't like that nigga. I don't like his goddamn son. <laughs> That shit would be Hollywood gold. They get my nigga Doe up in this motherfucker, man. Doe, what's happening, man? Yo, man, I'm over here dying laughing off of that shit you just said about Scotty Pippen. This nigga, <laughs> dusty ass nigga. He could be a basketball husband, my nigga. Basketball husbands. Yeah, the nigga, shit. She, you just seen she left. She left Jordan's son because he ain't want to marry her. Oh, she trying to get married that quick? Yeah, she was trying to marry Jordan's son, and he ain't want to get married. So she she said she ain't fucking with him no more. But really, come on, man, you trying to you trying to get into the family to where? <laughs> Bitch, we 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 seen this motherfucker play before, man. Jordan was like Jordan was about. To, I think Jordan disowned the nigga, and then he came to his senses allegedly. Think Jordan like this on the nigga for a hot second. Like, nigga, I cut all your water off, nigga. No allowance, no nothing. I don't know. I'm just joking around, man. But they had a podcast together, right? And the podcast was like, she was a real fucking gold digger on the podcast. Like, she was like sunning this nigga. Like, uh, yeah, literally, like, literally, like, yeah, and I want to do this and I want to do that. Well, I had everything already. So what can you do for me? Like, saying that she didn't have all the shit. Like, what can he do for her? And I'm like, damn, like. She was acting like she was Jordan's daughter. <laughs> like, she had the money. Like, yeah, she, she was on one, my nigga. The nerve of these bitches. And she like 50 plus. Bitch, sit your old ass down. Come on, man. Or 40 plus. I don't know. 40 something, nigga. Whatever. You in your 40s. Sit your old ass down. It was just a little play. It was just a little play so that way she could come up. You know what I'm saying? She was trying to. She probably come fuck on. Uh, keep it real. As loose as she is, I think Jordan probably hit that ball. <laughs> hey, why you bullshitting? Knocked her down. You know what was mean? she around back then? She, I don't know if she was around back then. I'm talking about when the son with her. He doesn't oh, that be yes. Jordan don't want that bitch around him. Jordan, Jordan don't, that nigga thinks she a plant. He knows she a plant. Pippin sent that bitch out. <laughs> he sent that bitch to destroy the dynasty. <laughs> Man, go yeah, milk that, go sit, go put that pussy on that son and get half, 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 half. And then leave that nigga come back to the family. We got him. <laughs> that just be playing. I'm just playing around. These are jokes, man, allegedly, my nigga. Yeah. But that, what if that's a play if he sick the bitch on him? And then like, yeah, this, this was a play. Like, you know, I, I see some shit was this, um, some little movie on, um, net, it was on Prime, Amazon Prime. Huh? You saying as far as Jordan sicking the bitch on 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 his No, Pippin, Pippin, Scotty Pippin sicking his wife oh, on Jordan's son. On his son on his son. Yes. The, so that way, yeah, they can get some of that Jordan money. Right. That if if that come out, that nigga it was all the plan. That nigga to fall for it. Ooh. Oh, That'll that be dope. Be cold. That'll be that'd dope. That'll be cold if, if, if Pippin doing it like that. That'll be that'll be cold if that come out in the in the tour. That'll that that will make that tour dope. I tap in if you talking shit like yeah, nigga. I put the nigga on the I put the bitch on the nigga. <laughs> Michael Starr, what's up with it, bro? What's up, my brother, man? What's happening with it? Oh man, we in the building on late night dynamite, nigga. Just woke yeah, up from high. Yeah. I'm up, nigga. Fuck that. Let's go. Hey, hey, same shit here, nigga. I had a power. I had one of them same things, man. Hell yeah. What's yeah. up with I, the show, I, man? I, I see. I, I, hey, hey, you absolutely right. These ungrateful niggas, man. You know what I'm saying? These niggas should be be grateful just to be a part of history. You know what I'm saying? But instead, these niggas want to assassinate the very character, nigga. These niggas wouldn't even be relevant. I'm, I'm just going to keep it 100. I'm not saying... It was ultra garbage, but them niggas certainly wouldn't have had a legacy that they had, nigga. If Jordan ain't in the equation, we ain't even talking about these niggas. Yeah, hell no. Bulls won't be no dynasty without Jordan. We ain't talking about these niggas if it wasn't for MJ, period. You know what I mean? So, say what you want to say. 
especially Luke Lonely, if you don't get your old, <laughs> old, old lumberjack looking at it. <laughs> hey, this, <laughs> hey, this is what I love about this is what I love about Steve Kerr, right? Hey, this is what I love about Steve Kerr, man, because Steve Kerr is not only was he a part of that great dynasty, at least, you know what I'm saying, a significant part of it, but this nigga making his own history, though. You know what I'm saying? You know, he making history in a whole different fashion and extension of that, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, you never hear Steve Kerr really, you, you never hear him jaw jacking. At least I have it. You know what I'm saying? He's too busy, man, trying to get it, trying to get it on the court. He, he, you know, he, he taking that shit to, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm just, I don't know if y'all seen the same one I'm seeing it, but you know what I mean? Steve Kerr, you know, he another nigga that can be out there absolutely clout chasing, but he ain't. He, you know, he got a squad, you know what I mean? He trying to demonstrate his greatness, you know what I'm saying? You know, with through through Steph and Clay and all these niggas, man. So, you know. And, and another thing, man, like, fuck that coach, man. Jordan made that motherfucking coach, man. Jordan made that coach, man. Period. Jordan made that Come coach. We, we didn't give a fuck about that goddamn coach until Jordan and them start ringing them, winning them rings. We didn't give a fuck about what what was it called, the triangle. We didn't give a fuck about that. So Jordan started winning the rings, and then Jordan was so loyal to the nigga. That's why he left the Bulls. Some that LeBron didn't do. LeBron to get his coach fired. Jordan leaving with the coach. You, nigga, I'm leaving with my coach. This is my chemistry. I'm leaving with him. Hey, hey, you know what? Yeah, I can agree with that. If he didn't, if, if he didn't go, if he didn't take that same philosophy and take it to LA and do the same thing with Shaq and Kobe, I can go along with that. But because he did that with two different dynasties, you know what I'm saying? I I, I gotta say that that played a huge role in that. In addition to it, they oh, helped no, each no, other. No, definitely. No, I'm not gonna diss him. Like, yeah, he def- Come on, Jackson. That nigga. What, what's his brother name? Jack. Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson was the ultimate, my nigga. Yeah, Phil Jackson. Yeah. Yeah, now so if, he, if, if, if he if he if he didn't do that with two different if he didn't do that have, you had to have talent my nigga he had yeah. to have talent you got Jordan you got Pippen you got Rodman you got nigga uh 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 what's the nigga name Bill Cartwright you got all the big niggas down there Luke Lonely you know what I mean you got motherfucking uh Steve Kerr you got you know what I mean uh, uh fucking you got all the all them dudes you know what I mean period later on you get uh what's the white dude that was knocking down the shots what's my guy name um the tall dude. The tall, white, skinny dude um, knocking down the threes. Anyway, you get to the motherfucking Lakers. You got Shaq and Kobe, nigga. And all them niggas. You got, what, Eddie Jones? All them niggas was over there? So. No, Nick uh, Van Exel. Nick Van Exel, nigga. All them motherfuckers. Oh, you got the boys, my nigga. You dealing with yeah. them. You dealing with the Bulls. You Probably better. But I, but the thing is, think of how many coaches who had similar talent Kuko. can do nothing with them. Who, 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 yeah, Tony Kuko, yeah. Tony Kuko, yeah. that's what I'm talking it's, about. So. It's, it's, coaches, it's coaches that didn't took similar talent and couldn't do nothing with them, you know what I mean? So his philosophy did play a role. But I'm saying most of your point is, is, is very valid, you know what I'm saying? But, but, but Phil Jackson, I'm talking about shit, you know what I mean? I'm, it, just, saying, it, it, I'm just saying like how. Everybody be defending LeBron like LeBron is the GOAT, but he always need help. He always firing his coach. He always getting his, his players. That nigga changed. overrated, bro. That nigga yeah. over. I've been saying this shit for years. He overrated, man. He over. He's fucking overrated, man. I'm talking about like, and, and this is my opinion, right? It's like the very the, the nigga start off and they got Cleveland. Okay. All he had to do was stay put, nigga. Them niggas had the best record in the fucking league. They lost. Okay. They lost. All he had to do was stay put, nigga. They would have built the whole team around him. But nah, he wanted to go and escape and go play and disband his home team, you know what I'm saying? And go play in Miami with 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 uh with Wade, with Wade and Bashi. You know what I'm saying? You know, he needed that. And when 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 the onus is on him, he don't know how to handle it. You know what I'm saying? Jordan wanted the ball. He he wanted it on his shoulders. Kobe wanted it on his shoulders. Allen Iverson wanted it on his shoulders. Steph Curry, give me the fucking ball. He wanted it on his shoulders, nigga. LeBron wants to pass the ball. He don't want it. I can't give it to him. Niggas put him directly past Kobe and directly to Jordan, nigga. That nigga ain't on the same level with Jordan, nigga. No, he's yeah, not. He, I don't care what he did. He, he on Kareem level to me. He's, he's battling for third. Him and Kareem battling for third. 
I say yeah, fourth, yeah. man. I, I I ain't gonna lie. I put Steph ahead of that nigga, bro. I don't care if nobody say nigga. They both, they both got four. They both got four rings. No, LeBron. Yeah. LeBron ain't changed the game like Steph did. Steph LeBron got, is popular. Steph got all this four at home. He did not change. He didn't yeah. build nigga. They built the team around him. No, they became a team. Nigga, they built nothing. Then them niggas became dope together. Steph, yeah. Steph, Steph, Steph. Look, ain't nobody putting the, ain't nobody putting down. Nobody's putting down their starting position just to come off the bench to play with LeBron. You know what I'm saying? Iguodala was a fucking starter, man, with Denver. He was a starter. He agreed to come off the fucking bench to play with these niggas, you know what I'm saying, who at that point haven't done as much as him just because he believed in their ability to win. Steph, his, Steph will go down in history, not just for his accolades, but for being on the most unselfish team ever assembled, man. They unselfishness, my nigga, is, is really what stand out to me about Golden State, my nigga. You ain't never seen that many stars, you know what I mean, that can do what they do. If if, if Draymond go on a 50-point tier, you won't hear Steph if Clay say nothing. If Clay do it, you won't hear Steph say nothing, and vice versa, nigga. They don't care. The W, nigga, all them niggas are shine. But nigga LeBron, Nah, no, man, he won too much, man. I can't give it to him. I can't. I just, I just can't, man, because he's never been able to do it. When you put him in a position for everything to, to boil down to him, he's never been. He's never been able to handle it. He need help. Hey, you're absolutely right. Hey, Doe, you got something else to say before you get up out of here? I gotta get some more people up in there. Steph, Steph changed the game, man. It went from everybody wanting to see niggas dunking and, and the highlight reel as far as uh, who going to get dunked on for the night to where Steph shit. They want to see how many three-pointers you going to shoot. You know what I'm saying? But it all goes back to Kobe. Kobe started it. He had 12 three-pointers in the game. You know what I'm saying? That was before Steph and Steph came back and you know what I'm saying I think he made what 13 in the game or something like that you know he made like 16 in an all-star game or something like that but he, Steph changed the game as far as shooting you feel me yeah you gotta turn your volume up too but you're absolutely right bro um they don't give they don't give Steph it's his credit he changed the fucking game. It went from a dunking game to a straight three-pointer league, my nigga. That's because of Steph. You feel what I'm saying? Not because of Brian. Not because of Brian. <clears throat> and we not Brian haters. Brian is a guy. Brian is, is number three, though. He can't fuck with Kobe or Jordan. Sorry about that. Exactly. And they don't. And what's so cold? Let's just keep it real. It was because of that case. You feel me? The only reason why Kobe went down the way he went down is because of the bullshit. It's because of that fucking Achilles, man. If he wouldn't have broke his Achilles, that nigga would have still been... He would have got another ring, I think. Because he would have played... The, him and LeBron would have been playing together if he wouldn't have broke his Achilles. Period. And them niggas would be dominating right now. That too. That too. But that he, that would have definitely came happened. Back LeBron off. came like, what, two, two or three years after Kobe? What he came out two oh, years yeah, after Kobe. Yeah, Kobe came in '96. I'm talking about when Kobe left. How long did it take LeBron to get to the Lakers? About three, two or three. How, how long about, did it take? About, about, about two years later. About two, I think about two years later. Right. I want to say about two years later. I want to say about two years later that nigga came to the Lakers. My question to y'all is: In crunch time, look, who look, the fuck? So who who do y'all? Later, if it was two years later and Kobe would not fucked up that Achilles heel, he would have been playing with Bron. Yeah, you're right. Because Kobe had just signed the deal for two years for like two hundred million before he broke his Achilles, right? Yeah, he signed the two years for like two hundred or one hundred eighty or some some big ass price he signed for. It. You know what I mean? And then the nigga fucked his Achilles up. He was out for the rest of the season. Then next season, nigga, that was his last season. I want to say he fucked his Achilles up against Golden State. Was it? I want to say it was against the Golden State when he fucked his Achilles up. 
It was somebody, but he I remember that he snapped that motherfucker too. And he still shot the free throw. Still shot shot the free throw. He got fouled. That's what happened. But they was attacking Kobe. They were trying to beat Kobe ass like they were trying to beat Jordan ass. See, the league these niggas playing right now is kind of pussy because niggas ain't getting attacked. You know, you'll get clothesline coming to the hole. Nigga, that all that LeBron shit, nigga. Shaq would have threw that nigga on his back like he did Jordan. Jordan tried to dunk on Shaq, nigga. You get blah. Sorry about that, little fella. Jordan ain't never get to dunk on Shaq. Nah, Jordan. That's the only nigga he ain't dunk on. Kobe, Kobe done dunked on Dwight Howard. He dunked on uh, Tim Duncan. He dunked on David Robinson. He done dunked on the Twin Towers. He done dunked. I don't know. I don't think he dunked on Shaq. But Jordan dunked on everybody. Everybody but Shaq, but yeah, Tumbo, Jordan nigga, everybody. everybody. And Kobe have too. <coughs> Kobe dunked on y'all mean, nigga. That's what you forget. I don't think Kobe, Kobe ain't dunked on Shaq, but Kobe got the best of Shaq though. There, didn't Kobe ain't dunk on Shaq when that nigga was on on uh the Magic? No, 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 not the Magic. The the, the Celtics. No, Kobe. I'm talking about when Shaq went to the Magic, and Kobe was still a Laker. He ain't dunk on Shaq. No, Shaq, Shaq, Shaq was on the Magic uh, with Penny. I know that, but then he leave the Lakers. He, look, look, look. The nigga left the Lakers to go to the Magic, right? No, I think he went. He went to the Celtics. When he left the Lakers, he went to the Cavs. He went to the Celtics. He went to the Magic first. You think he went to the Magic first? Yeah, nigga. Magic gave him that bag, nigga. He went to the Magic first. Then he went everywhere else. Shaq was, you. so you trying to say Shaq was at the Magic, he was a Magic player before he was a Laker? Yeah, he was. Hey, man, we got to get Mike Ascari in on that one, mate. Mike, man, was you? Yeah, he was, was a Shaq a, a magic was, player. was Shaq a Orlando Magic before he was a Laker? Yes, he was. Oh, yes, okay. he was. He uh because because he was playing with Penny Hardaway. He was playing with Penny Hardaway uh in Orlando. And remember, remember they were they were they was giving they they they, 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 they was giving they was giving Jordan they was giving Jordan problems when uh when him and Penny Hardaway was together. That was an annoyance to that nigga, man. Nah, Michael ain't dunked on Shaq. He tried to. That nigga got pulled out the air. I remember. I seen yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shaq was hacking. He was he was hacking the shit out of Jordan, man. Yeah, he ain't let him do that. Period. Straight up. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thanks for tapping in, though. I'm gonna get some more people in there. You can hang in if you want to tap in later. I gotta get some more people up in there, though. Much respect. Salute. Much salute. Salute. Yada da. Hey, hey. My question is this: In crunch time, who do you whose hand do you want the ball in? Kobe, or I mean, no, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Who who do you want to have the ball in crunch time? The last few seconds, Steph or LeBron? Steph, hands down, and Steph, put it in the hands of a nigga that can pop nigga, on a regular basis from anywhere on the court. Nigga. Man, listen, I get that once. No, one second, and they got to take the inbounds from the other side of the court. I give you that. He ain't half court, not on your ass, and in your life, nigga. In your fucking life. He'll do the Dame. How, how Dame Dollar was doing that, the motherfucking All Star hitting them half court shots. Hell yeah, on a regular basis. Yeah, he'll do that, man. On a regular basis, man. With no question about it. And the thing about it, he would just as easily pass you the ball. He's not selfish with the ball, though. Right. No, see, mother, see, his teammates love seeing him play. They love seeing him cook. It ain't that he's selfish with it. It's just it's exciting to see Steph with the ball in his hand. So they let him do his thing. It ain't that Draymond wine because he don't get the ball. It ain't that Clay wine because he don't get the ball that much or vice versa. Nigga, niggas love seeing Steph cook. But Steph, he know how to get everybody else in it too. Right. You know what I'm saying? No, it's like. That's the most unselfish team I ever saw assemble, bro. Period. All right. Let's, let's get my nigga uh, Billy the Kid in. He, he, he ready to debate, man. Billy the Kid, I know. What's up? I know you saying you saying false, not true. What's up with false, it, man? False, not true. False, what's not, not true. What's not true, man? Yo, 
Curry ain't even top 100 in assists, nor is Thompson. Like that green. Hold on, man. Pull up, pull up the stats. You said he ain't top 100 in assists. No. Pull up the stats. Google, Google right now. I'm not letting you say that. Google, you got a phone, nigga. Bro, he's hey, not. Hey, I'm I'm going to I'm 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 tell you why I won't dispute that, right? Because LeBron is good for passing the ball right. when it's crunch time saying, instead look, of giving it up. Me, so what? So so you make so do you make that point? Or do you make that point to allege that LeBron is a team player or that he's scared to arise in a moment when the team needs him? He passed the ball more times when he should have shot it. So he should leave an assist because that's what he does. He passed the fucking ball instead of well, killing him like Kobe did. Kobe look, wants to kill you. Look, bro, Jordan wants to kill you. Steph wants to kill you. Bro, hold on. Let me let me let me let me uh let me refute that shit. That's the day that we live in. Everybody want to be the star. Everybody want to be the nigga that take the last shot. That's the leader of the team. That's the you know this that and the other. But when I was in high school, I played on the state championship. Okay, then LeBron and the is still playing. LeBron on, is still playing the, the same nigga, time. Why do why do Steph not have this problem with his teammates? The nigga then? who shot the why ball do, the best, who we wanted the ball in his hands with the last five seconds, he was not the best player on the team. Okay, he LeBron him, is LeBron. The all them teams he played on, he was the nigga, best on, shooter most most, no, most of the time. Most of the time, LeBron. Look. What I'm, most of the time, he was the best player on his team then. So why is he passing the ball? What I'm trying to say is, is that LeBron is Magic Johnson Super Saiyan. Magic Johnson had other stars on his team. LeBron was the best player on most of the teams but he that's played what I mean on. By so what the Saiyan. fuck is so what the fuck is he but passing no, the ball? No, that's for? what I'm saying by Super Saiyan. He was the nigga that could do it all. He could pass the ball, rebound, play small, okay. play big. Okay, a lot of us but can do that. A lot of them niggas can do that. You are right. He did not have no help around. Okay, then. So, so that's that means what? Why did you make that point about assist? What that got to do? What we talking about? Because that makes that makes the team better. We're that makes Steph, make, Steph makes his team about, better. Look, look. I was we. I was asked a question. I'm asking you the question. We were asked a question. Last five seconds on the clock. Who are you gonna pass the ball to to end the motherfucker? Steph or LeBron? That was the question. Steph. And you. Okay. Cool. That's it. And you over here talking about assist and shit. We talking about the last five seconds. Who you gonna pass it to? to but to the game but what I'm trying to hold on. What I'm trying to say is, is that just because you give that motherfucker the ball, does that make him the best player on your team? He the yeah. best player on the Warriors. All right, hold on. But Chris Middleton would be the person that you pass it to on the Bucks. Is he the best person on the Bucks? Giannis is not an outside shooter. Of course, you're going to give it to I the mean, person that can Dame hit the Dollar shot. Got there. Before Dame Dollar got there, you want to give it to the Dollar person who can shoot. You're going to give it to the person who can shoot the ball. Bro, you're not. I know you're trying to make your point, my nigga, but you lose on this debate because we all talking about fucking Steph getting the shot, the last shot. That's it. That was the question. We ain't debating on who got the most assists. None of that shit. We're debating on who we're going to give it to, who's a better shooter. Period. That's we, it. We're talking about who got the killer instinct, man. Crunch time when it's time to put the team right, on your but, back, all man. All right, but we can make that debate with anybody. Like, who you gonna give no. it to? Kobe, Kobe, or we Curry? Talk, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna go. Shit, I want it in Curry hand because Curry is proof. Kobe, Kobe, I'm giving Kobe. that shit to Kobe. I'm giving I it want, to Kobe. I'm, I'm gonna give it to Curry. I'm, hey, listen, Curry ain't got the killer listen, 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 I'm giving it to as fuck. Black. Mamba, nigga. You crazy as fuck. Kobe got. You, you, you crazy as fuck. Because look, 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 look. Crazy? why, why, He's why, crazy. why I'm gonna give it. How, how am I crazy? Why you I'm crazy. You can't, for one, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong with either one of them niggas. But I want to put it in the hands of the nigga that I know that can routinely and regularly shoot the ball from anywhere on the fucking court. Kobe can kill you from beyond the park, but he cannot. But he can no, he cannot shoot like Steph can. He can't. That, but I'm talking about he cannot anywhere on the court. He can't. Not like Steph can. And then, look, and then, look, and then let, let me hit you right there. No Frank Ocean, but uh, Steph can't shoot like Kobe, and I'm gonna prove it with this one, right? You seen the boy? What's we call it? Brian Scott, right? They got, they got like I think it's like two seconds on the clock. They tied up. This nigga. Kobe is on the post. He got somebody like on his back, you know, posting him up, holding him and shit, right? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Brian Scott is at the top of the shit, man. 
As soon as that motherfucker, as soon as the motherfucker get passed in, that nigga throw the nigga Kobe an alley oop, alley oop. The nigga Kobe spin off the nigga that that's on his back, caught the alley oop, blah, game over. No, I, 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 I,
and y'all ain't putting nothing <laughs> on the motherfucking cash app. Nigga, we ain't got no super chat. I put niggas comments on the screen without a super chat. I bring niggas on stage without a super chat. I fuck with y'all. I fuck with me, man. And I ain't begging for shit, man. I think that I earn it when I fuck with y'all. I ain't begging for nothing. I think I earn it. I tap in with y'all a long way. So thank you, Micah Scar. You know what I mean? For that 25 on it, man. You feel me? We all we got, bro. Period. Don't let you don't let your celly show you up. And my celly, nigga. Bro, no, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about he said he in jail. <laughs> and that, nigga, that nigga donating more than everybody. I said, don't let your celly show you up. <laughs> Yeah. I got two more shout outs, man. Shout out to Lamar Johnson for the five on it, man. Big shout out. Appreciate you, man. You know what I mean? And then one more shout out, man. Hold on, man. Andrew. Oh, yeah. Uh, my nigga and Davis, man, for the five with 450 on it, man. Appreciate you, my brother, man. Them cash apps are greatly appreciated. Help the machine, you know, help me keep this shit going. You know, shit costs, especially that studio that we shoot the smoke like radio shit at. You got to pay for editing. Nigga, uh, fucking engineers, nigga, the, the fucking studio, the whole shit. So, um, yeah, this shit costs to be the boss, my nigga. So, thanks for everything, man. We appreciate everything, man. Straight up. Hey, man. Uh, let's let's switch let's switch gears, man. What what is gonna take to make the All Star Game better? Like the All Star Game is total trash this year, my nigga. Did anybody watch it? Yeah. What's gonna take to bring the hunger back? To bring the competitive competitiveness back to the all-star game because niggas right now they just showing up and just shooting the ball and not giving a fuck one thing i told my girl that would probably make it better is uh incentivizing record setting like somebody who scored the most points in a quarter or somebody who scored uh a ridiculous amount of points in a quarter they get incentivized with you know you know some money uh I think that would make players play a little bit harder and play defense because now you're defending your money. And so uh, another thing would be to, uh, I think, make the, like back in the day, they used to have the all-star jam on MTV, uh, the little celebrity thing. And remember, they used to have the different rims. They used to have the 15-point rim, the 10-point rim, and the regular point rim. I think that that would also help a lot and make it a little bit more, you know, interesting. When you got somebody like Dame Dollar pulling up from half court, like, you know, everybody going to be doing that next year. Facts. I, um, I, you got something I, I, to say about it, Mike? I, I mean, it's a, it's it's ironic you mentioned it, right? Because it's like, I don't know if it's a little bad or whatever it is, but it's the same shit with the Pro Bowl, my nigga. These niggas took the contact out of it. These niggas want to just milk it. See, see these all-star and Pro Bowl games, man, was for the fans, man, to, to get a chance to see how all stars, all the stars of the game look playing together, my nigga. And you know what I'm saying? And that's what motherfuckers came for, to see the stars act the ass in a meaningful game together, my nigga. You know what I mean? They they took they they took that away. These niggas use this just as a fucking uh vacation uh opportunity or whatnot, man. Did these niggas do any other time of the year, man? Um, I think is that know, not what it is though? I mean, it's it's a vacation, but it's business though. Jordan and them niggas used to look at this as business time. This was another opportunity to get on the court, my nigga, and show your ass, my nigga. Period. But that, that let me let, get on the field and show your ass. Let me let me let me continue from there. See, the All Star Game used to make a player, make a player famous. Jordan got yeah. famous from the dunk contest. Jordan didn't have a motherfucking ring. That nigga didn't had none of that shit. That dunk contest and that and him going to the um the Olympics. That's what blew the nigga up. Period. Right. The nigga right. came in the game with them Nikes on the Nike sweat sweatsuit. And won the dunk contest in his own fucking shoes, my nigga. That's what blew him up. A fucking dunk contest in the All-Star game. Not him winning a, a ring. Not him going to the playoffs. Him winning a fucking dunk contest. And winning, hey, the, hey, and winning the rookie or whatever the fuck. Rookie hey, MVP. Hey, hey, MVP hey, 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 and, and motherfuckers used to die to see him and Dominique Wilkins go at it. Because that's who was giving Jordan problems, man. And that's, who, and that's who he went against, right? And the nigga yeah. won because he did the motherfucking uh the Dr. J uh from the uh, from the uh fucking yeah. free throw yeah. dunk. Yeah. Yeah. But he, he made it look yeah. much yeah. better 
you know, so much, so much uh, 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 look like a ballerina or something. It looked just so much better. But anyway, he won that, right? That's what made him a star. That's what niggas start calling him Air Jordan. That's when he went from Michael Jordan to Air Jordan, my nigga. So All-Star Games has made niggas in the past. Spud Webb, it made him. Nobody knew what the fuck Spud Webb was until he won the dunk contest, period. Uh, fucking uh, Vince Carter. Niggas said, what? Niggas start getting the Vince Carter shoes, all that shit after he won that dunk contest. Dominique, nigga, everybody that won the dunk contest, it blew them up. Same who's with the, the, who's the short I, black nigga who put it I, between I, I the legs? It. For the oh, Nate it. Robinson. Nate Robinson. And then you got motherfucking uh you got motherfucker from the town, my nigga uh uh, uh fucking uh J.R. Ryder that 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 did the uh the old town. That that's when he bought he he did the oh we call the shit the old town, but when he take it through the legs, J.R. Ryder was the first to do it. No, I was hey, talking about the hey. uh the black dude, the black dude for the Warriors. Uh uh Nate Robinson. You talking about you talking about Jason Richardson. No, you talking about Jason Richardson. Jason Richardson. Nowadays, hey. niggas got so much money, they don't need to be made. Like, I'm surprised Jalen Brown went out there, and he got a $200 million contract. And I right. salute him, because he get more money than all you niggas out there that's acting like you too good to do it. A $200 million man hopped out there and tried to do the dunk contest. I salute that. We should not be bringing niggas from the G League to do the fucking dunk contest. That's bullshit. In that case, let's get... Let's get real dunkers, like the niggas that do the dunk shows. Because this is like niggas that do all the dunks for NBA, like NBA Live and all that shit, nigga. This real niggas that suit up in them shits and do them dunks right. in real life. Let's Man, bring that I was, on, out. I was on Instagram and TikTok, and they were showing uh, the, the, the college dunk contest and the, the, uh, the high school All-American dunk contest. And they were talking about how these, how these little dudes will put these professional athletes to shame. And I'm watching well, they, that shit, bro. What, and I'm like, what a bro, reason why, dude, bro? It's one of these the dudes why. put it off the backboard twice and then caught it and reversed it. Hold on, man. Twice and reversed twice. it. He threw ah, it off the ah, backboard, ah. caught it. He threw it off the backboard, caught it, threw it off again, and then reversed that bitch. I saw that. I saw that. Come hey, on, the reason, man. hey, the reason why we seeing that is because, like we mentioned, bro, them niggas is hungry, bro. Take that money out the equation, is you just tip down to the pure love of the sport. Niggas is bringing their best, man. Yeah. I agree. I think, I think Stephen A. Stephen A. Smith had, had a dope ass uh, uh, scenario how, how he think it should be done since the athletes, uh, the, the fucking athletes don't want to do it. He said it should be a competition, a world competition, state to state. They get the, the best five niggas from state to state dunk contest. It narrows it down to 10 people. This is around the whole United States, probably around the world. Get the best, no, United States. Get the best 10 from each state. And that was it down to 10 people at the dunk contest. Real niggas that's really hungry trying to make a name for themselves. These niggas going to come out this dunk contest with a Nike shoe deal, Adidas, Under Armour, you name it. They could nigga fucking a Kanye, uh, 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 Yeezy, fucking 350, uh, fucking motherfucking Jordan shoe, whatever. They going to come out with a deal. Period. Because these motherfuckers going to create a show so tough that they're going to be popular. And that popularity brings sponsorships, brings money, and shit, brings stardom. They might want to put you in the G League after that. You never know. So, yeah, I think it, 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 it takes some people that's hungry. Not the niggas that got 200 million, 150 million, 50 million. It's like, nigga, I don't need to be here. Niggas and jumping over shit should be out of the shit. Yeah, man. I'm tired like, of niggas jumping over shit. Yeah, if you ain't if you ain't doing what Blake Griffin did and jump over a whole fucking Kia, I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah, that nigga dunked like the that whole Kia. That, that Kai stood on top of that bitch. Like nigga, cannot, like Kai Sinat is already five eight, and then you make the nigga sit down in the chair and bring him down to four foot two. That's not impressive to me. And that's why uh, uh what's the Cunnings, the white guy? That's why the white guy won because this nigga was dunking over Shaq without even pushing on his shoulder. This right. nigga was clear. Shaq grabbed the ball off the nigga head and the boom, he didn't grab right. everybody else is grabbing the nigga's shoulder. That nigga didn't grab no shoulder. This nigga was that boy had bounce, my nigga. Crazy that shit. white boy had bounce. I want him in the I want him in the motherfucker every year just because he entertaining. You see him do that two tap and then wow. Oh, I want to yeah. see Matt McClung. I want to see Matt nah, McClung bro. in there too, though. Matt McClung be acting the ass too, that white boy. No, the white boy, Matt McClung, the one that just yeah, won. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right yeah, McClone. yeah, I call yeah, him Cunnies. Yeah, I call the nigga okay. Cunnies. McClone. That guy. Okay. He got Yo, Mike. Yo, Mike. That nigga. Yo, he's Mike. the only one that's taking it serious. Yo, Yo Mike. Did you see that one? Word? Did you see that one where the uh? I think it was the boy from Duke, where he caught that bitch. Uh, jumped in the air, put it around his back, and made it past the backboard, reach back, and dunk that bitch. Oh, Damn, hell no. I didn't see that one. I didn't see that That's one. Good. Bro, this in the college dunk. I, the nigga jumped past the goal, reached back, and dunked that bitch. Oh, yeah. He Damn. jumped past the goal. He he flew across Damn. the air and reached back and dunked that bitch. So the nigga passed the whole shit and bop. Right. Oh, yeah. That's some Vince Carter shit, man. Right. Vince Carter, you he used to jump as high as the motherfucking backboard. Like, yeah, nigga, he was hit his head on the backboard on one of them dunks. Nigga. Nah, this nigga, as he's passing the as he's passing the backboard, this nigga reach around that bitch and dunk that hoop. Hey, Vince Carter had the whole time. Vince Carter turned the remember they had that all star game in the tail. They had he had the tail turned out when he did that dunk. No, Vince, yeah, Vince tail was turned a high flying nigga, man. I just don't like that. Brown is, is the dopest nigga right now, period. One of the dopest, him, Steph, uh, Durant, it's a few more. But Brown is, is one of the head of the class, right? I don't like that early Brown when he first came in. Teenage Brown, 19, 20, 21 Brown did not jump in that dunk contest because that's when he was at his apex. Yeah. I think young Brown could He's not done. creative like that, though. Right now, he not. But when he was young, he could have did all that yeah. shit. All them and one dunks, he was, like, fucking with that. Young yeah, niggas, right. like you said, the junior high school, they doing shit fresh out of high right. school, way different. So, right, shit you never world? seen before, type shit. Uh, uh, hey, fuck hey. Go ahead. Hey, yuck, you made a spectacular point earlier, bro. Because we're talking about how, uh, how, how LeBron is getting all the headways. I mean, look, man, Steph is acting an ass right now, man. Steph is acting a fucking Oh, right now I'm talking about. They don't give this nigga no yeah. sign. They don't talk oh, about this nigga yeah. on ESPN, Sports Center, First Take, none of that this shit. Nigga, he could do. Nigga. He could do a hundred point game. Man, like Steph did a hundred points tonight. Well, LeBron got an injury. How long is LeBron gonna be like this whole shit? Become about nigga. He just scored a hundred points. This nigga, that this nigga, this nigga is making history, damn it. For one, he's pushing a margin to where it's almost will be almost impossible to catch up with him, and. Nigga still talking about it, nigga. This is, I mean, I'm telling you, right now, take Anthony Davis out of that equation. We ain't even talking about the Lakers. And even Anthony Davis ain't doing that much. But take him out the equation. We ain't talking about the Lakers. We're not. Sorry about that. We're not. You know but look, Mike, Mike, let me ask you a question, bro. Charles Barkley and Shaq both said the key to a championship team is your guard play. You got to have a good big man, but if you don't have a good point guard, you don't have shit. Or, so, or, or a good shooting guard. One or the right, other. Right. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Look, look, listen to what I'm saying. Is that I've seen teams with great point guards and great big men fail. I've seen, because cause I come up in the 90s, and I my favorite team back in the 90s was Motherfucking the Seattle Supersonics with Gary Payton Whoa, and Chris Webb. Him. I mean, yeah, yeah. but hold on. After that, I started liking the Kings with Bibby and Chris Webb. And I've seen teams with great chemistry, great guard play, great point guard play. That was the opposite of Steph. White chocolate. <laughs> that was the opposite. Right, guys that were the opposite of Steph, right? Guys who could play ball in all aspects of the game, like a Chris Paul and Blake Griffin. Like, I've seen a good big and a good small and not see it translate into championships. Everything but. Matter of fact, the Suns with Barkley and KJ. Uh, there's so many teams that we could go through with NBA jams. All of them had it with the Penny, Hardaway, and Shaq tandem. Um What's, you know the what point? I mean? What's the point you're getting at? What I'm saying is, is that these two all-stars, these two people who know the game, love the game, that are big men, and how much they agreed about the, the guard play, I don't necessarily agree with the point guard part. I think it's a shooting guard part. 
I think, I mean, the, the best niggas in the games were shooting guards. Nigga, Jordan and Kobe, shooting guards. And now the new best nigga in the game, one of the best, is a point guard, which is Steph. So I think it's So I think what it's I'm trying to say, well, hold on, what I'm trying to say is, is that you got a, you got a team, you the, you the GM. You get a good big man. Do you get a point guard or do you get a shooting guard? Well, look, if you go if you go in the days of, of the Utah Jazz, man, when they had goddamn, uh, what's McCarthy with uh, Carl Malone, and uh, what's the what's the boy name? The white Stockton. dude, John Stockton. Stockton. When they was running that goddamn screen, nigga, like uh, Iverson said, nigga, Stockton was giving them a headache, nigga, over that screen, nigga, that mo uh, him and Malone, he couldn't get past that screen, nigga, and Stockton, wow, was busting his ass. So oh, now you got, so you got. So you got Wade was huh? a shooting guard. Wade was more of a shooting guard than a point guard. Who? John uh, uh, Dwayne Wade. He was more of a shooting guard than a point I, guard. I ain't say Wade. I said uh, John Stockton. Yeah, no, no, no. I heard what you said, but I, I was, I was making a contrast with he asked which one would we want more. I think it kind of depends. Like each, 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 that. Team. No, no. Me, I just me saying all that to say this. He's taking it from a point back then. Right okay. now. You know what I mean? Like back then, it, it was crucial. Like nigga, that 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 Pat, that that fucking Steve Nash, that combo that he had, the motherfucking uh, John uh, John Stockton, that combo he had, the motherfucking Dwayne Wade, the combo he had. Like it was some niggas that had some nigga. Like I he mean, said, if you play the, NBA the, Jam, if you play NBA Jam, every team had a one-two combo that was like that. Facts and every yo niggas, the, the nigga, they my niggas too because he town business, but. You talking about the glove and, and motherfucking Sean Kemp, let's, right? Let's not, let's not forget uh, uh, CP3 and motherfucking Blake Griffin. That's they, what I they, said. They, they became too. Lob City, right? Lob City, my nigga. Right. So he's talking about from look, that look, look, uh, uh, you know? uh, Westbrook, Westbrook, and KD. Same shit, same shit, man. So oh no, no, hey, 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 let me stay on that. Let me stay on that same boat. I mean, shit, it wasn't just Westbrook and KD. It was Westbrook, KD, and Harden, nigga. Before, Harden. before, before, before right, Harden. But, but what I'm saying, all three of them but niggas. Harden was a Harden was a shock troop. Yeah, Harden was a two. Harden came yeah. off the bench. Yeah, shit. yeah, but I'm KD saying, KD and Westbrook yeah. was the ones who who were unorthodox. They were they were basically the opposites of themselves. Westbrook played like a nigga in the post. KD played like a nigga on the perimeter. That ain't that ain't get a chance to blossom though. No, I think but I'm they, just saying they, that they, they, they egos got in the way of that blossom. One two punches around the league historically. Oh, you're right. I'm I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm, I, I was just think, I think, in the success think, that comes with it. I think we don't know something about KD. I think everybody keep on saying that the people that he fuck with is unwork work withable, uh, unworkable. Why it do he? Why is niggas complaining about the every team he go to when he leave? Niggas complaining about him. Maybe he wasn't the right fit because you got Westbrook and you got motherfucking Harden together, and them Clippers is, is got a better record than the Lakers. They be ass right now, and they together, so right. they chemistry, they they synergy is working. The fucked up part was Durant. Now you see it. They they cool together. They both back at home. They they nigga they both playing for the nigga at the crib. They good money. The the fuck up was Kevin Durant. He think I know he's the next Kobe. He think he the next Brian, and he trying to do all this and not thinking about them. Like, oh, this nigga selfish. Fuck that. I knew they can. I knew they can. Hold on, hold on, hold on, y'all. I actually I, disagree with that. I think that he's the opposite of that. I think that he didn't think that he was them niggas because his ego never portrayed somebody who was larger than life or wanted to be a great. I can't tell from he's the always niggas. been low key. And and shy and subtle in his game has been. I knew that. I knew that KD was a problem when this nigga he left the Warriors not because it wasn't a good fit because he proved he proved that it was that he did play well. He demonstrated every time he was on the court with him. He left because of ego, because of what outside motherfuckers were saying, you know what I'm saying, behind him being able to do it on his own. He wanted to go somewhere where he can try to win without them. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, really, he defeated. Right. Why, why, why? No, 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 no. I mean, no. I mean, my thing is this. It shouldn't have mattered. Right. Nigga. It didn't matter. Why does it matter? Nobody get on. Right. Ain't nobody bit. Ain't, 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 ain't nobody bit. No, no, this is what I'm saying is when LeBron jumped ship and, and, and left town to go play with Wade and Bosch, 
You know what I'm saying? Because he didn't want the heat on himself. Everybody, right. ca everybody called that a genius decision. It should not have mattered to KD with outside motherfuckers. And the only thing that should have mattered was we winning championships together. Fuck what y'all talking about. You right. know what I'm saying? That's what should have been. That's because what should matter. In all actuality, the Bulls was a super team. So the now Bulls, he from top to bottom, the Bulls were no every... motherfuckers. The Bulls, you talking about Jordan Bulls? Yes. I'm that was no motherfucking super I'm team. Ninety three through ninety eight Bulls. No, no, nigga. You don't think that, that was... they had a super team? How do we yeah, jump no. way to the Bulls? Why do we you jump back that on, far? When we talking about some recent? Because they only had one the, superstar when besides KD Jordan on the Bulls, which was Scottie Pippen. None of them other niggas was superstars. These niggas got teams with super four or five superstars you on don't one think team. Grant was a star? Hell no. Nah. That's why he on this bitch ass tour. You hear about the tour they doing? <laughs> Him, the motherfucking Scotty Pippen and, and, and fucking Luke. Luke, Luke, Luke <laughs> Fuck that Luke nigga. Luke Longley wasn't a star. Hell no. Nah. Tony Kukos star. wasn't a star. Nigga, that, a yo, hold on, hold on, hold on. Who you gonna pick? Elijah won or Tony Kukos? I wait. I mean, uh, Elijah won or motherfucker. Elijah won or motherfucker Luke Lonely. Elijah won. Are you gonna pick motherfucker Patrick Lou Ewing or Luke Lonely? Luke, Luke, whatever that nigga name is. All Luke. right, we all know. Okay, all right, all right. Well, I they didn't you. have I no spinner like that, nigga. Hey, oh, that's Bill. Bill hold Bill on, hold on. No, 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 like Bill, Bill, wasn't that shit? Bill Cartwright looked like a nigga granddaddy. Let's stop it. They had old ass sinners. Like, come on, man. The only little the active. Right, I, I, I get what you're you got saying, bro. I get I mean, the only, and, 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 you ain't like, even oh, missioning Rodman, Rodman, man. Rodman. You're not even missioning Rodman. I'm about to say the only other superstar. Right. Rodman, Rodman wasn't good. Rodman. It was Rodman, Pippen, and Jordan. That was the superstars of the team. Three niggas. So Kerr wasn't good. Who? Steve he was Kirk. good. So you go. So you gonna call? So you go call? Hey, bro, are you really gonna call and put them on the same level? You go put Steve Kerr, Kuko, and them on. So why are you acting like you don't know what we're talking about? I will put Steve Kerr on the level of JJ Reddick. All right, let's even go with what the Lakers got. You all over the place, bro. You hold on, hold on. So you wouldn't compare Steve Kerr and JJ Reddick? I'm trying to figure. That's what I'm saying. Ain't no nigga like that. We I'm talking about he was decent. He was good. He ain't no fucking superstar. He ain't no D Wade. He, he ain't good. Like, he ain't talking about no fucking bro. Right? You just you, right, we right. just jumped. They not we no went from bro. bro. They, they not, not no pager. No John Stockton. Neither one of them two are pager. Hey, 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 hey. Do you see what do you do you see what just happened just now? This dude just jumped from KD. All the way back to the fucking nineties when KD wasn't born. Now you talking about JJ Reddick, my nigga. Then you jump the pager, nigga. You you trolling, bro. I'm not, hold on, we having a real basketball conversation. But we talk, and I'm just giving you scenarios of what there. you look, 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 This was the whole conversation. You said, you said somebody said uh, uh, Barkley said it takes a real one, right? So we start talking about legendary ones, and I start saying legendary ones because I'm saying this is what he's talking about because he played around this shit and he's seeing more of the story. Now you start talking about everything else, then you went off subject. You just gotta stay on topic, my nigga. Now, no, but it got us. Hold on, but it got us to the. Hold on, but it got us to the place where we saying that somebody like Jordan and Pippen, who didn't have a good one in a five, dominated through the nineties, which they are talking about. Okay, great, 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 great way to land the plane. Because I didn't catch that when you were saying all that shit. I didn't catch what you just said right now. Now like, you was all over moons and quasars. You was everywhere, my nigga. That's what y'all <laughs> always say. The, the, the say this, nigga. I didn't gotta nigga. Cause you was like, nigga, Jordan had a super team. <laughs> but he, I mean, to me, to me, I think that the, <laughs> the two, the two, the three, and the four were the you know the dominant position that that made him a super team. The, the only thing I was saying with regards to KD is that for one, the objective. Every, all these players say when it comes to the league, their ultimate objective is to win the championship every year. Period. The money will come, endorsements and all. The money will come, but the ultimate goal is to win championships. Okay, KD went to a championship situation and won two rings easily with the Warriors, man. You know what I mean? Then all of a sudden, you want to start letting niggas get in your head. Fuck what they talking about. That's all I'm saying. That's what it should have been. Fuck what they talking. We winning over here. You with the most unselfish team, nigga. It ain't just about you joining the Warriors, nigga. Do you know how much, nigga, of an ego 
nigga, they, what if Steph would have been like, man, I ain't trying to give up my shots, nigga, to play with this nigga. What if Clay would have been, what if they would have took that? Man, that shit didn't have to work. What if, what, hold on, what if KD never left? How many rings would they have? Mm -hmm. I believe they had the same amount. I don't think he. I don't think don't he think made. Would have won more. I, I I think he made them harder to beat. That that I don't. That, I don't, I don't think. think he, that I don't bubble, think. The bro, I'm, asking, you don't I'm, think I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to answer your question. I don't think. I don't. I don't. I, I think he helped. I think he made them harder to beat. But I don't believe that they would not have won another championship without him. They was already a championship team before he came. He got. The, they got him a ring. It's kind of like it's it's kind of like the argument that niggas say that Death Row make Tupac. Tupac yeah. was already star. Death Row was already Death Row was already. They made each other better. Right, right. They got better with each other. They made they made they they made each other invincible with each other. You Pac know what I'm saying? Platinum. He wasn't Pac one was of the other. Pac was platinum going to uh, Death Row already. All eyes, I mean, right. all against the world was already. I think double platinum down there. Right, so, yeah, so I just use that as so I just use that as an example. You know what I'm saying? The Warriors is already a championship team. You know what I'm saying? KD didn't have no rings at that time. He couldn't get over the hump with what he had in Oklahoma. They kept coming up short. They couldn't get past the Warriors. So he said, "Okay, let me join these niggas." You know what I'm saying? I and think that, I think I think I think they both joined forces because when LeBron and them won. When they had that stellar ass season, you know what I mean? What was it like the seventy six, like the hell of seven, yeah. like they yeah. seventy and whatever the fuck the record was was like better than the Bulls, right? Yeah. They lost. They lost it to the, the the Cleveland, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. Cool. Cleveland also whooped the Thunder ass. Wherever wherever the fucking Durant was at, they knocked yep. them out the playoffs. Yeah. So you got yep. two teams that got knocked out the playoffs by LeBron. Miami did. Miami did. Oh, it was they Miami. Lost Miami. Won Cleveland. Okay, yeah. Miami. Cool. Let me get that right. But I know LeBron knocked both the niggas out the playoffs. Period. Now, right. The champion from them and knocked the other niggas out the playoffs. They, right. They called the nigga, man. I think Draymond. Somebody called that nigga and say, "Bro, let's team up." Period. And they teamed up. Like nigga, fuck that nigga. That they all. I look, teamed up. I look at it like this. LeBron teaming look. up with niggas. Y'all, y'all team up with me. Fuck that. And they look, got I look at it like this. Defeated LeBron the next year. And the next year after that, got two rings. And I think what fucked them up was Draymond Green. Draymond probably, you probably, it's probably some footage of Draymond, nigga, uh, uh, Uber punching, a super <laughs> punching, or jump punching the shit out of Kevin Durant. And it just ain't on camera, nigga. Like, they was hanging wow. out, that nigga choked that nigga out or something. It's look, beat between him like and, look, look, let me land, let me land. It's go beat ahead, between ahead. him and Draymond. Ahead. And you've seen it at the last game with, with Phoenix. And that nigga was yelling, Draymond, like, yeah, you bitch ass nigga. Like, he was right. all in that nigga face. Like, they got issues. Right, personal shit. They got personal issues. And I think that's one of the reasons why, along with what uh, what Mike said about the rumors, Draymond. And Draymond, like, yeah, nigga, we been them niggas before you came. He keep on saying that shit. And like, yeah, nigga, we woo, 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 woo. You didn't help us do shit. That and the fans saying the same shit, that made the nigga dip. But My thing is. If your My teammate is, said, look, if your teammate, like he's a captain of the team, it ain't Steph. Right. Draymond the captain. If your captain of the team shitting on you, like what you gonna do? Look, 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 Matt. That, it's you, funny I'm that out. you say that. It's funny I'm that you out. say that. Look, 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 I look at it like this. The Warriors are like the 90s no limit records. Curry is Master P. Mystical is KD. And then you got a nigga like Soldier Slim who Draymond Green. <laughs> you get hold on, that that's a very accurate, that's a very, very accurate uh uh you know depiction of that that situation, if you know what I'm talking about. Absolutely. And the thing is, is that we all know that mystical was the real piece that brought it all together. He was that nigga that kept the slaps coming that made it off. He brought he brought Snoop in the to, to goddamn no limit. Oh shit. You hear what I'm saying? Like for real, for real. You lost me just that quick, my nigga. 
Nah, you gotta understand where I'm coming from. <laughs> hey, let me let me make another. We got to say, hold up, hold up. <laughs> hold on, hold up. Curry, <laughs> Curry is not the key. He the nigga. He that nigga. Flag, he ain't going nowhere. Flag nowhere. on the play. Flag on the play, my nigga. Nah, Curry <laughs> is Master P. He that nigga. He ain't going nowhere. Soldier Slim is the nigga who that real nigga who you need on your team to keep everybody in line. Draymond you, just got, you, just, you just gotta smoke a lot. Five yard penalty, my nigga. Nah, no, 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 no limit on, on the basketball. Nah, right and mystical. <laughs> mystical. Hey, no, 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 no. Let's stop talking about rap, my nigga. Like, let's let's get off of that. Like, you I, I'm just using that. an analogy. Nah, that, that's a great uh, analogy. Now let's get back to why Durant left the Warriors. What's your what's your why you think you left? Because huh? <laughs> of what? Because. Because Mr. Cool went to jail for uh, great. Ah, oh, stop it, bro. <laughs> hey, if you don't stop it, my nigga, I ain't fucking with you. Bro. I'm going to take you off the stage, nigga. Say some I shit said great. I said great. All right, bro. Man, where is, man, where is Luce? Where is Gooch when you need it, man? Right, right, right. We letting this be a free stage and shit, you know what I mean? But we talking real basketball politics. Um, um, I'm not a think, I want to ask, ask both y'all a question, right? I think you're good, bro. Bro, shit is fucking. Let me ask y'all both a question. I'm gonna get the screen too. Let me ask the panel and the people in the chat room a question. Do you think it's a um a push to try to erase Kobe Bryant? Because they talk about Jordan and LeBron, but they never mention Kobe Bryant. Like they they act like Kobe never existed, my nigga. Do you think it's a push? Like far as the the, the fucking sports shows, the the, the athletes, you know what I mean, to really erase Kobe and just put LeBron in. That's my question because, you know, if you look at the, the hatred, you know, I don't know if it's hatred, but it, it's a hell of a coincidence that he wasn't at the funeral. This nigga was not at the motherfucking uh, uh, statue ceremony. I'm talking about LeBron. Like, you a Laker. You don't attend this nigga funeral. You a Laker. You don't attend this, uh, the statue ceremony, nigga, and all the other Lakers was there. Niggas that just signed to the Lakers that year was there. Jordan, everybody there. You not there, nigga. Kareem, everybody there. You not there. That shows the hate that LeBron got for Kobe Bryant. And I think that a lot of these people see it and they running with it. You know what I mean? It's, it's a mission. Just me, allegedly, on the outside looking in. I think they trying to replace Kobe with Bryant. I mean, Kobe with Bryant. And they trying to, like, really, like, make niggas forget about Kobe. You know what I mean? That's what I think. And I like when Shaq said, nah, nigga, they got they got to put my, my guy up there. I'm tired of niggas doing these top fives without putting my guy up there, Kobe. He said that on, on whatever they shit is called. He said that on live TV. Like, yeah, you got to put my guy up there. Stop disrespecting my guy. So question to all y'all. Is they trying to motherfucker get rid of Kobe and replace him with uh with LeBron? My question. Let's go. I land my plan. I, I absolutely feel that way i absolutely feel that way i mean and this ain't just happening you know what i mean this has been some years in the making where they've made the mistake of talking about the greatest and they jump straight to lebron you know what i'm saying and just overlook kobe like he just did not exist my nigga one thing about it let's take jordan for example Jordan always give Kobe like you got man. You, when you look at all the highlight film of Kobe and Jordan, they always show how Jordan was even when they playing against each other. Jordan on the coat on the court giving Kobe tutelage how he did certain moves while they playing against each other, my nigga. They're in the midst of a heated ass game, nigga, and they giving pointers, nigga. Nigga, Jordan seen Jordan really seen the closest thing to him, nigga, and Kobe, nigga. That's why that nigga was in tears, nigga, at this nigga funeral, nigga. You know what I'm saying? You, I don't think LeBron will ever get that kind of homage, bro. You didn't like, like Kobe was a real student of the game, my nigga. That nigga, I'm not saying LeBron is not, but Kobe, like, it was real, man. It was a whole different level, my nigga. And the thing. LeBron, nigga, Oh, go, go ahead. Keep, keep going. I'm going to land. I'm going to come in after you. Keep going, yeah, bro. Okay. LeBron need all kind of trimmings with him, man. Kobe, just, just give me the fucking ball and I'll do the rest. LeBron need all kind of trimmings with him, man. He need help. 
Kobe game spoke for itself. Nigga, Kobe game, nigga, made you put him in there because what he did on the court. LeBron need public attention, my nigga. He need too much attention. He need fanfare. I'm not feeling it, bro. I land there, bro. Um, the great, 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 great synopsis, great um response. Um, I think like what you were saying that um the thing about the the, the, the debate shit, you know what I mean? It's always about the goat. The goat is number one. So, you know what I mean? They're trying to compare him with Jordan because he's number one. But in the midst of that, they would completely eliminate Kobe. I think Brian is still competing with Kobe. I don't give a fuck how many like records you broke. You played longer than anybody besides Kareem. Kareem, the only nigga that played 20 years like you, period. So that's why he broke his record, because you played the same amount of time as him. So you got more stats. The longer you paid, the longer, longer more stats you get. Uh, Jordan only played 15 years. Kobe, same thing, I think. So 15 years compared to your 20, you're going to make more stats. You know what I mean? That, that's just motherfucking mathematics. It adds up. But with that being said, they completely eliminate the guy. You know what I mean? And then uh, another one I wanted to say was that I ain't never seen LeBron help nobody but Clutch Sports. You know, Clutch Sports, they a great agency. They helping all the athletes get money. But far as training, I never seen Bron train nobody. I seen Kobe train niggas. I seen fucking Jordan train people. I mean, train Kobe. You know what I mean? Train the niggas, giving niggas a game, passing niggas the torch. Kobe to train everybody, nigga. Uh, Jalen, uh, what's what's the nigga that for the for the Cleveland? He done trained everybody, bro. Everybody. Kobe, when he retired, he was training niggas. He was passing on the baton. You know what I mean? Even when he was playing, he was at the Kobe camp. Niggas coming down to the Kobe camp. Uh, 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 uh Kawhi Leonard. All them is Kobe students, nigga. Motherfucking uh, the nigga in Phoenix. All them Kobe students, my nigga. Kobe was passing the game down. I don't think That's LeBron true. is passing the game down, my nigga. He's using niggas to team up and grab stats and grab fucking uh, championships and shit. He's using niggas. He's not trying to give the game. Like, hey, he ain't hey, no fight the game. Who he trying? Let me, hold on, hold on. Let me get my take real quick. Real talk. So, 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 <laughs> I believe, I believe that I my two favorite players. Let me, let me just get this out there real quick. I like Jordan, but he's not my favorite player. Like, I grew up during that time, but I had a disdain for Jordan, so I like teams that was going against Jordan. Um, but as I grew older, the the Jordan killer for me became Kobe Bryant. And Facts. Kobe learned, he was like, he was like, uh, what's her name from Kill Bill to Pi Me. He, he, he took direct tutelage from the master. No, and this nigga it, was. This nigga he was. He made it better. He made it, he he turned Jordan game better. He he turned and then not only did he turn it better when he got injured, he learned how to change his whole game around and play a different way. Yeah, he started shooting with once, once that Achilles rip, he changed his whole game around from an above the rim game to uh, I'm smarter than you on my feet, Akeem Olajuwon. Um, uh, you know post. And uh, shoot threes. You know, he started shooting more threes. Shooting, when, shooting when he more threes. You know, he became a better all-around player. Right. Passing, assist, three-point percentage, all of that. Free throw percentage became the best. And then there was LeBron that came along in that ascent. And LeBron tagged along with Kobe's rise. Without Kobe, LeBron does not have the the – he don't have the grit. He don't have the heart. He don't have the substance that comes along with being a champion. And especially during these times. Because he never won one while Kobe was in there. Right? Hello? I think I think that um Damn, what the fuck was I was gonna say? Uh, I missed my whole fucking point, bro. I'm asking. Yeah. It, I'm asking. This is the point. This is the point. Right. It, this is the point. That, ride, cold, hold on. Hotel to let, let me glory. let me land right quick. You've been talking for a minute. I think this is the the, the elephant in the room. What niggas do not want to say. Did LeBron James ruin the fucking NBA, bro? 
No, the shit no. That, no, 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 no. Let me add. No, no, no. Let me know. No. I'm talking about how niggas is so cocky. They don't want to do the all star. Niggas is uh, is fucking a uh, 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 management. The, what this shit called low management. Niggas don't want to do this shit that all the stars usually do because he didn't do it, nigga. Brian ain't doing the dunk contest. Ja Morant, I'm not doing the dunk I contest. I see what you're saying. I, 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 I Williamson, you said I'm talking about the biggest dunkers in the game. Right. Ja, Sa, Zion. You want right. to see these niggas come? Dominique, come join some shit. Right. You leave. No. You leave. Hey, hold on, hold on. They say no because LeBron say no. Right. We too big. We ain't doing that. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. we already got our shoe deal. We ain't got to do what Jordan did. Boom. We good money, right? <clears throat> also, also one more time. One more thing. He ruined the All Star game. That's why the All Star is fucked up right now because he made the blending. Like it, it went from the east and west, and he just made some shit like the twenty one pickup game where you could have niggas on the east and the west on the same team. It's just a celebrity fucking face off, basically a celebrity ball street game, street ball type. Let me piggyback, let me piggyback off what you said, yep. Let me piggyback off of that because you made a spectacular point. So. Jordan, Kobe, and all the greats before, when they knew that the torch was in their hand and everybody was following their lead, they utilized that torch, you know what I'm saying, to the, 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 uh, the bring the game to the forefront to make it exciting. And um, make it better. To, to take it to the next level. Basically, what, what, what Yuck is saying is that being that LeBron has the torch in his hand, he's using it to be lazy, you know what I'm saying? He's not using it for the same reason in the same fashion that the greats had did it before him. You know what I'm saying? I would take it a step and further I, and, and, and say that he's using it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't, don't cut him off. Let him land first, and then you talk your shit. Let him land. Oh, my and, I, and, and, and I completely agree with that. I completely think that's what's happening for a lot of different reasons. You know what I'm saying? And before I land, I just want to make, I just want to respond to a comment somebody uh by the name of texas is self-made in the comments he said that kobe i believe got caught with a white woman and he died but look that dude died with his daughter bro don't go there man that man died with his daughter bro uh, look i'm gonna take it a wrong. step further i'm gonna take it a step further and say that lebron made the league more mm -hmm. vanity oriented made mm -hmm. it more about a uh a, a, a brand, a brand, a brand walking down, walking down, walking down the aisle with, with designer clothes on with a, with a Birkin bag with a, uh, you know, uh, it's about an image with LeBron. Like LeBron has made the game more vanity. It, he's brought way more vanity to the game than it needs to be. And I agree with you, Yuck, when it comes to that point. I don't um, think, hold on, hold on. I think that I don't, he's I think... the game in negative way. Hold on, let me lay. Right, just talk your shit, talk your shit. I think that he's affected the game in negative ways where, like you said, that when you're a leader, you got to lead by example. You have to set the tone for the younger people that come next, you know, and, and Kobe did that. Jordan did that. My, uh, Magic did that. Wilt did that. Dr. J did that. And these dudes, nowadays, there is no torch because they are so you know, under their own guys, under their own, you know, makeup and this, that, and the other, that they don't see the forest for the trees. So, yeah, go ahead, yeah. No, I, I, I agree with what you were saying. <laughs> I, I, I definitely agree with what you were saying, but I think that um, a lot of people are being lazy with this shit, you know what I mean? Because of, you know, the, the fa if the face of the league ain't going hard, why well, I'm going to go hard? If the face of the league ain't doing this, why I'ma do it? Why this the face of the league got Beijing? I'ma get Beijing. <laughs> man, that nigga trying to man, that nigga trying to compete with a dead man, man. You know what I don't saying? want no niggas, ball head. I'ma get niggas, patches. I'ma get a piece. Niggas is changing. Niggas is niggas is changing the logo for the Jerry West logo to the Kobe logo, and niggas is mad because that because that because that ain't LeBron. Jimmy Butler said, I'm going to put weed you know in my head. Fuck that. Hold on. Yes. Niggas saying that Brian need a Laker trophy. Nigga, no, you don't. I mean, a, a statue. Nigga, no. Nigga, you know who got more rings than all you niggas? Uh, Robert Ory. Robert Ory. Robert he, Ory. Needs, he needs a statue before any LeBron. Nigga, you I'm, a, I'm a Sacramento Kings fan. Trust me, I know if, that. If, <laughs> if, 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 if LeBron, if, 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 if LeBron, 
if LeBron would have kept his punk ass in Cleveland in his hometown and won there like he should have, he'd have a statue he in his he hometown. Man, 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 look, check this out, man. If you told me I had an opportunity to play for the Raiders, my hometown, you motherfucking right, nigga, I would have played. They would have had my statue yeah, out. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'd be a Pelican too, motherfucking shit. Right. Straight up. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, though, he, can, he, he could have this statue in Cleveland. The Lakers is too big of a franchise, nigga, for LeBron to ever come there and jump over Kobe, bro. Kobe, with, with everything, LeBron ain't did nearly enough in L.A. to ever even be in a conversation with having a statue before Kobe do. Any award before Kobe do, nigga. You won one championship in L.A. when everybody was sick. You ain't done shit since. You ain't done shit since COVID, my nigga. Since everybody been well, nigga. You know what I mean? So no, everybody said, remember when, we, 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 remember, when, remember when niggas were saying that Kobe wouldn't win a championship at the Shaq left? What did Kobe do? He won the championship at the Shaq left. When LeBron two, did two, do the three more, yeah. one, two more, three more, right? Two, one, two, one, three, yeah. yeah, but two or three yeah, more, one, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I mean, I'm, I'm saying LeBron, LeBron got to, like, he, he's trying to compete with a nigga that he can't compete with. You know what I'm saying? You just can't. I don't think. I don't think LeBron. Let me. Let me can, you know. can I get in? Can I jump in right quick? Like this, is like double dutch. You got it. <laughs> no Frank Ocean, but how the females got to wait to jump in? No Frank Ocean. Um, I think at the end of the day, um, LeBron is, is the face of this shit, bro. So they they follow this nigga lead, man. So when you don't do it, and like you said, and like both y'all said, and like I said, he's not passing on the game, my nigga. He basically like. Like, like, basically, uh, 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 making an example for the the new players. Instead of giving the game, he's showing them, and they that following this lead. Like I heard on Gilbert Arenas, like, um, uh, fucking uh, M M M McCanns, right? McCanns was like, nigga, I looked at the the the, the, the rappers, and, and I wanted to call like Jay Z, and I wanted the the chain like this, and I wanted the woo woo woo. And Gilbert was like, man, I was influenced by the basketball players that was around. You know, the ones that was it that was on my team, the ones that had all the money, you know, they kind of laced my boots and shit. You know what I mean? So I followed the big dogs and shit. You know, th that was my example, the faces of the league. I wanted to do what the league was doing, not what the rappers was doing. So saying all that to say this, the league niggas want to do what LeBron is doing. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? On yeah. top of what Pharrell is doing, what the rap, what Drake is doing, <laughs> what <laughs> what Kevin Hart is doing, what what shit, what what uh, Will Smith is doing, they want to do it all. You know what I mean? Period. It's a different atmosphere because now athletes are superstars. You got Chris Paul on all the motherfucking uh State Farm commercials. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. these niggas are superstars right now. You know what I mean? So they're looking at their brand more than anything. You know what I mean? Like, they don't give a fuck about a dunk contest, three-point, none of that shit, period. They talking about, let's just, you know, play our game, show my face, big up the brand, and get these fans. Well, you see, well, you see, LeBron, when he won that in-season tournament shit, he, he didn't even take the money. He gave it to the, to the young boys and busted down. As he should, nigga. That nigga damn near a billionaire. He don't need that. Right. He, said, he said, fuck this little, you know, little half a million. Yeah, you gotta get that shit to Bronny and, and the other son, nigga. See, I'll bust that down, nigga. Nah, he, he gave it to daughter. his teammates. He gave it to his teammates. Yeah, he could have gave that to the kids, nigga. Period. But I feel it given to the te teammates, too, because them young dudes ain't gonna make that money like that no more. My nigga. Uh, that's the one you're gonna go with. We're trying to like LeBron looking out, like, come on, man. The same niggas that he gave that money, he ready to trade them. In. He ready to LeBron. trade them in tomorrow. LeBron trade me after you give me a couple. LeBron changed the game. LeBron changed the game because all of his championships he won when the team had to break the bank going to get other stars to win with LeBron. You know what I mean? Whereas the Warriors probably added maybe a star or two, but they, but they basically. That, that that go to state team was built mainly through the draft. You know what I'm saying? Um, let's look at Miami. Miami, I mean, a lot of them teams, Wade was already a champion before LeBron got there. You know what I mean? Somebody made that point in the comments. That was absolutely true. You know what I'm saying? LeBron could have did exactly what he did later on down the line. You know what I'm saying? By doing that, if LeBron do all of this in Cleveland and he don't jump ship, I think it's a whole different conversation. I don't think it would be 
a doubt in it. You know what I'm saying? If this nigga win and lose with his squad, you know what I mean? Sink and swim with his squad year in and year out, and he do it just how Kobe did it with the Lakers, how Wade did it with the Lakers, and all of that, he did it. It's, it's not a dispute. You can't dispute it. You know what I'm saying? Because he did it at home. But because this nigga needed to go here, there, and there with all these other niggas to get what he got, I just cannot put him in that greatest camera. Like, Mike, let me ask you a question, bro. I can't, look, I can't look at him the same as Mike, these other niggas, bro. Question, bro. If, if, if LeBron, during that season, during that Miami, when, he, when he went to Miami, instead, what if he had went to the New York Knicks with Fox and he won a championship? Would you look at him a little bit different? Why would I look at him any different, bro? Did you hear what I just said? No, because I'm at. You said, hold bro, on, hold on, bro. No, bro, bro it's not, bro. I, hold on. I, I, I'm hearing bro, exactly listen, what you're saying. Hold on, hold on, hold on, you ask me, you ask me a question, my nigga. Niggas respond to what you're talking about, man. Please. You ask me a question. I'm about to hop in and, and just yeah, go to some. Yeah. it's not a, it's not about. It's not about him leaving and going to Miami. It's the fact that he left a team that was great that he could have stayed with and it would have got greater. You know what I'm saying? But him choosing to go elsewhere to get it. What made that I team cannot... great? Man. Who was uh, on that team besides LeBron? Let's name a couple of people. Wade, hey, 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 Bosch. Hey, no, I said the Cleveland Haskell. team. Hold on, hold on. Let, me, let, me, let me ask y'all a question right quick. Because Wait, this, nigga, or, or. this nigga said this on the screen, right? I'm gonna ask you one question. Do Bronny James and his brother got more money than Anthony Davis? I'll wait. I'm talking about in that, like, come on, like what they make. Like, you can't say, like, I got kids. They my money is my money. My kids, they didn't. I'm just saying, I got grown kids. They they, they the benefit, they the beneficiaries. They the beneficiaries. LeBron's yeah. money is his fucking money. Just because Brian a billion, almost a billionaire, his kids is not a fucking billionaire. You live with a billionaire, your dad a billionaire, but Bronny ain't got a billion in his fucking account. Sorry about that. Or a billion in assets or whatever he got going on to make Brian that nigga. The I sons don't you. got that. So you can't I say agree. the sons, he rich as shit because your dad is a billionaire, of course. So the nigga saying that the son, I said that Brian could have gave it to his sons joking around. You know what I mean? Hey, y'all both. And he's saying that the sons don't need the money. <laughs> nigga, yes, I do. I'm building my own money, nigga. I'm building my own account, nigga. I'm about to go, so, nigga. I'm in USC, nigga. Yes. Put 250 in my account and put 250 in my brother account. Nigga, the fuck you talking about? Period. Family first, nigga. How about that? I agree. I agree with you. I agree with you, bro. I, I, I agree with I both agree of y'all. I agree with you. I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying that. All of these stars we're talking about, all of these stars did it with they with the team that they was drafted by, and whether they won or they lost, they went through a struggle, man, with their squad, man, their team. They didn't jump ship. LeBron jumped ship, and you ask me who did they have? Man, why do I need to answer that question, bro? That team that LeBron had in Cleveland. You said it was great. Best, hold on, bro. They had the best fucking record in the NBA that year, my nigga. Oh, they had the best and I'm record. I'm asking you, besides Cleveland. LeBron, who else? Before he went, to, before he went to Miami, it, it, who was on that team? It, it, no, it, it, the it, Warriors. It, Warriors had the best record, and no, beat. I'm talking about before LeBron. The Warriors was even in the equation when LeBron went to Miami. I'm talking about when LeBron jumped shit from Miami and with the uh, uh when he jumped shit from Cleveland and went to Miami to play with Wade and Bosh. You know what I'm saying? Cleveland. Le LeBron had one of the uh, he had the best team in the Eastern Conference. No, I Boston had, had the best, the best team. team in the Eastern Conference. I, man, LeBron, man, they squad went to. Then they squad go. Then they squad go to go to the go to the finals. Man, lose to Dallas. I think. Then they go yeah, to the finals. Hold on, but okay. hold on, but hold on. Let me, let me so hold on, hold on, hold on. Right so you mean right. tell me that 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 Miami team was better on paper than that Boston team? Man, I'm not look, bro. Look, bro. You, bro, so bro, you ain't about Rondo. Bro, bro. Hold on. So you talking bro, about Rondo not, at the bro, one? You're not about to distract bro, but my listen, point. Listen, you're listen, not about to distract my. I ain't biting on. I'm not. You're no, I'm not. Rondo at the one. We talking about Paul Pierce. Hold on, hold on. Hey, you talking about? 
you talking we're about talking Paul Pierce. You talking we're about talking. Kevin Garnett, and you talking about Bro, Ray I don't Allen. Know if you buy all of the or same not. team. Bro, would you jump in? I'm, I'm talking about LeBron going from an A one squad that he had in Cleveland and choosing. And you telling staying, me that that A one squad and, and, was better than instead, Boston? And, instead of staying with his squad, he left and went and started over in Miami when he could have stayed. Put where he was at. LeBron and by himself would have beat Boston Ronnie. in the final. Hold on, let, let's Man. let's address it. Let's address the elephant in the room. The first nigga that lead Cleveland was Kyrie. He couldn't deal with LeBron. He's like, I'm out. Nigga. I'm going to Boston, right? This was before Kyrie even was even in the league. We talking about before no, that LeBron was the second left time. Cleveland. You talking about the, when he came about, back? You talking about when he came Le back to Cleveland? We talking about before Cleveland? When LeBron left Cleveland the first, the first time, time, man. He had Shaq with him. Not in Cleveland. No, 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 not. no not, not, not in Cleveland. But they had a good enough squad. No, they did not. Who did they the, have the besides LeBron? Man, that team went to the finals, bro. Because of LeBron. Who else was there on the okay. team? Le LeBron should have stayed there and let that team bring some right. stars Delonte to West him. was the next best nigga, bro. Okay, well, LeBron should have stayed That's there and let Cleveland team. bring. He should have let them Anytime bring some stars. Anytime that Delonte West is bro, the second best player bro, on your bro, roster, bro, that's so not a great team. Talk, you're missing my whole point. Bro. He Stop he left. Each other, my nigga, he left. He left and went to. He left to play with Wade, who was already a champion. When he could have did just like Wade did, stay put and let Cleveland recruit some stars to come to Cleveland and play with him. That's what I'm saying. And then look, the more of the story, this shit is. LeBron don't deserve him. Let's get back on point because niggas went around. Moons and Quasars went around the planet in the back. Let's get it back to this. We Forget was like, you, nigga. Oh, hold on, hold on, nigga. Hey, your dreadlocks is dry, nigga. Stop it. Anyway, <laughs> let's, get, let's, yeah. get back to, let's get back to the game, right? We was talking about statues. Do LeBron deserve a statue at the Staples Center or the Crypto Arena? No. I think LeBron's statue belongs in either Cleveland, which he only got one championship over there. I think the most sense makes in Miami because he got two OOPs over there. He did a two-piece. And, yeah, he, he made that big-ass announcement and all that. I think his statue should be in Miami. If anywhere, it should be in Miami. What y'all think? I think Cleveland. He only won one chip there. He got two but in that's Miami. Where he's from and that's they don't. They only have one chip there. Oh, ever. <laughs> so that needs to be right. Well, so I don't. One banner because of that nigga. I don't. I don't think he deserves. The only reason they have a chip I, I, is because I, of that nigga. I don't think he deserved a a, a, a a statue of Miami at all because Miami was already a championship squad. Them dudes still, them dudes still had. I mean, look what they had, man. Them dudes still had Alonzo Mourning. They still had Haslam. You know what I'm saying? They still had White Chocolate. They still had the. They still had parts of that team that laid over when Gary Payton and all them niggas came, when Pat Riley came out of retirement to coach that team, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? That all you just added, you just added LeBron. You added LeBron you added Bosch, bro. You know what I'm saying? But it was already a championship caliber team. LeBron left a championship caliber team. You know what I'm saying? Because he didn't want the he didn't want the spotlight to be on him. He wanted to share the spotlight. This is why I can't put him in a conversation with Kobe and Jordan because these two niggas, Kobe and Jordan and Steph or whoever you want to name Iverson, they want the spotlight on them. Iverson and Kid, my nigga, took their teams, nigga, to the finals, nigga, by their motherfucking self, nigga. Iverson carried LeBron, the Sixers to the finals, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Jason Kidd carried the motherfucking Nets. To the finals two years in a row, so nigga. You know what I'm good. saying? Nigga, 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 all LeBron. Right, right, Le 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 LeBron. Kenyon Martin, my nigga. Come on, bro. Man, he was man, he's man. Like you man, said, that, like Charles Barkley said. And like you said, you need a one and you need a oop. So he had oop. He had Jason Kidd. He got, was Jason Kidd playing with Kenyon? Yes. Okay, cool. Boom. You got a what? one and a two. Like you said, what? you need a one and a two combo. Uh, it's, like, take, it's like NBA jams. One right, but it was combo. a three with them because they had Richard Jefferson. But, but okay, take cool. take three, take kid out the equation. Take quit out the equation. We ain't talking about Jefferson or King and Martin. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so let's take look, look, look. let's take all that out of the equation. I'm asking where the fuck is LeBron's statue gonna be at? 
Y'all talking about in a lot Cleveland. of shit. I told it, you it would have Cleveland. to be in Cleveland. That's the only place that makes sense. But I'm going to say, Mike, you, you start doing the moons and quasars. Y'all both got it, niggas it, it, nah, it's, it's the only, it's the hey, only, it's the only really place. Did. It's the only really place did. that, that makes sense, going to be on South Beach at the massage parlor. It's the only place that makes sense, my nigga. And it's the only place that makes sense because that's his hometown. He ain't gonna get it nowhere else, my nigga. Shit. That nigga shit gonna be on South Beach at the massage park. Hey, they say his shit gonna be at uh, in, uh, in, uh, <laughs> that nigga shit gonna be on hey, Cedar Road. Look, 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 look. They say his shit gonna be at uh, Mexico with the uh, with the steroid dealer in front of the steroid. <laughs> <twin>. <laughs> This shit gonna be right from the steroid building in Mexico. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with the zebra. <laughs> I'm fucking with y'all, man. I got, I got that nigga statue gonna, gonna be on Figaro and Western. Oh my lord, man! It's the, <laughs> allegedly, man, we ain't. Uh, this all alleged. Man. <laughs> and they gonna say man. black men don't cheat. That was gonna I say at the bottom. <laughs> we ain't gonna make this all about LeBron. This is my last LeBron question before I go to the next shit, man. He gonna wear a 24 jersey on it though. My last LeBron question, man, right? Um, God damn, y'all made me forget what the fuck I was about to ask about LeBron. God damn, okay. LeBron. Ah, oh, shit. Okay, um, boom. When I was talking about the All-Star, y'all fucked up my All-Star thing, that he fucked up the All-Star because he made the, the two teams join together. Now, nigga, Adam Silver brought it back together. Like, fuck that, it's East and West again. Now you seen what happened, nigga. Two hundred, and then another nigga scored one seventy some, one eighty some. That's when you get the East against the West, my nigga. Now niggas seen that and thought the West was gonna win because the West was stacked. LeBron won that motherfucker and scored eight points, my nigga, and sat down the whole two quarters, my nigga. He played the first half and sat down the second half. That nigga chunked up hella shots, was breaking hella shit, and sat his ass down and said he was injured. Come on, bro. Like, well, we you know, I was watching. I was watching the mic stuff. After, after saying all that, would Jordan or Kobe have ever scored eight points in a fucking All Star game? I'll wait. Never, 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 never. Well, never. For my homeboy, for my homeboy standards, he is forty five years old. So, man, come on, man. Excuses, excuses, man. Out of here, bro. Kobe on his way out scored 80 points, nigga. 80 some points. Nigga on his 81, way out. 81. 81 with the with the torn Achilles, nigga. Fresh that off nigga wouldn't that nigga wouldn't have accepted eight points, nigga, in a, in the motherfucking preseason makeup game, nigga. He wouldn't have accepted that, nigga. What superstar has ever scored only eight points at the motherfucking All-Star? Like, I'll wait. Now, nigga, Iverson ain't never, nigga, oh, fuck it, I throw it to a nigga, John Paxton, I mean, <laughs> he ain't never been to the All-Star. That nigga wouldn't have left the court, nigga, knowing he only scored eight points, in it. Bro, the nigga scored a soft eight, my nigga, no Frank Ocean, a soft eight, like we on the block, man, serve a nigga a soft eight. <laughs> like nephew, nephew, nigga, I got eight dollars, man. Tomorrow the first. <laughs> so it's serving nigga soft eight. <laughs> eight piece Miss Skittle, my nigga. Like the five eight piece, piece hub, eight piece hubba, man. Eight piece L baby hubba. <laughs> the mini hubba. <laughs> hey, but that's disrespectful. Now, see, a nigga sit down. I ain't even doing this shit, man. Fuck that. I got eight points. Once he realized that he couldn't get the MVP, because he was shooting for it. That nigga shot a million threes. All this shit's brick, air ball, brick, brick, brick. He started doing a couple dunks. That's how he got his eight points. And, uh, yeah, let's hang it up. <laughs> and then that nigga sat down and started telling stories. <laughs> like, come on. This is, this like an old-ass man. Is this your king, my nigga? Like, Jordan would have Jordan would have had. Nigga, if they scored 200, Jordan would have had 100 at 200. Fact. That nigga, that nigga sat down on the bench and said, "Yeah, I played in my first All Star game with Will Chamberlain." If they scored two hundred, Joy would have had a hundred of them two hundred. If they scored two hundred, Kobe would have had a hundred and fifty of that two hundred. I'm just saying. Period. 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 Pop said, I my, my first All Star game was with Allen Iverson. Shout out, Pop. Recipe to the dime. Oh, look, 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 look. Let me give a big shout out though. Another big cash app shout out. Bing bling 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 bling. Cha ching. Cash out shout out to uh we know the truth, man. Big big shout out to we know the truth. 
dollars on it, man. We appreciate the love, man. And again, man, it's helped the elevation of the nation. I appreciate you, man. And don't think niggas too rich to uh, get paid for what we doing, my nigga. That's how we pay our bills. We get paid for what we do. So thank you for appreciating the conversation and making a donation, man. Thank you to the nation. And I appreciate y'all, man. Period, man. One love, man. But back to the topic, man. I, I, um, I tell you, I tell, I tell you who else didn't go out in that game, though. I, who got the Z? Stiff motherfucking the great. Curry, man. Steph the Great Curry, man. Steph the Great Curry got his in, man. Making history, nigga. Even in all, nigga, shooting, shooting from all over the motherfucking court, nigga. Keeping everybody in all, you know what I'm saying? You know, entertaining the people, man. He ain't yeah. hugging the motherfucking bench, nigga. He playing that game, nigga, like it's a regular season game, nigga. Showing out, nigga. No breaks, nigga. And Niggas want to try. We got to give it up for Sal Business, D. D. Lillard. You know what I mean? Dame Dollar Time. You know what I mean? Dollar. That nigga pulled up from fucking. Bro, that nigga got the MVP. Town business. Nigga, come on now. I All had never MVP. seen a nigga pull up from three quarters of a court and shoot that bitch full Brian, rip and smack Brian, that bitch. Brian thought he was getting the MVP and got shut down by Dame Lillard. That's called some old pouting shit. I'm pouting. He sat nah, down. Nah, he didn't me. pout. That nigga didn't pout. That nigga... Folded his arms and said, when I played in the first uh, uh, All-Star game, Rosa Parks went to jail. <laughs> <You're> st- <laughs> that, nigga, that nigga wasn't talking about his old war stories and shit. Nigga said, Martin Luther King tried to fuck my bitch. <laughs> that was at the second All-Star game. <laughs> And I'm gonna <coughs> I'm gonna end this LeBron talk with this one. The Jordan debate. <coughs> that NBA <coughs> All-Star 75. All them niggas got their applause <coughs> when they came out. Jordan came out last. Shut down the whole arena. <sighs> they going crazy. That lets you know who the king was. Mm-hmm. The crowd didn't yell for LeBron like that. Sorry about nah. that. Nah. They didn't. They did not. The crowd but then again, yo, 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 you come from the same school I come from. Do you remember on Nintendo, they had Larry Bird versus Jordan? Oh, shit. Here we go. Here we go. You remember on Nintendo, they had Larry Nintendo. Bird versus Jordan? I remember it's Techno me. Bowl. I don't remember Larry Bird versus Jordan. Oh yeah, I, I remember that. I, I, I remember Jordan. Versus, I remember Jordan. Jordan. It's called Jordan versus Bird. I remember that. Yeah, Jordan versus Bird, and yeah, you had yeah. it was the hardest fucking basketball game in the world because you had to you had to press A to dribble type shit. And yeah, I remember, I remember Jordan versus hell, Bird. Hell yeah, that shit was hard as motherfucker. But I know but back in the day it. that even my even my even my people who was black used to pick Bird a lot. Bro, bro, you just, I mean, just stay on point to what you're talking no, about. No, what I'm trying to that. say is, is that on, if Bird, got, if Bird had went out there, he would have got the same response. I got to look. They said Kobe got five single digit All Star games. I got to look for that, man. We got to Google that. Never, ever. What the fuck are you talking all right, about? All right, all right. Why, why he looked that up? Let me, let me, let me get my spiel with with with, 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 with you just said. So. So my spiel to what Yuck just said is this. You know what I mean? In addition to that, that was an old and young crowd for everybody to say, oh, yeah, these just Jordan old. He he catered to the old crowd, this, that, and the third, nigga. He got that round of applause from the old and young, man. You know what I'm saying? Oh no 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 no! That's my that's that's my that's my background. Uh, that's a commercial. Uh, yeah, that was the old and young crowd, my nigga. They gave Jordan that applause, nigga. The respect is real, my nigga. I'm telling you, I don't care how much these niggas want to anoint that man. The people, man. I'm telling you, in an honest conversation, man, ain't nobody putting, ain't nobody putting LeBron over Kobe, man. Nah, I fuck with Kobe. Kobe is my number one. But what I'm saying is, is that a lot of people is biased over Jordan, 
and like it's a lot of politics over Jordan, and it's a lot of like, like you know. Uh, okay, it's politics over LeBron too, though. Right, right, but that's why I put Kobe number one. That's why I put Kobe number one. It's the undisputed with Kobe. Hold on, let now me, let, me talk, let me talk some shit right quick. Hold on, hold on, because look, if, do you remember the fight with Miller and Jordan? They kicked oh, Miller out of the shit. game, even though Jordan was the only one who threw a punch. All right, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, uh, go ahead. Right, let's, uh, go, let's go. Let's go with nineteen ninety-eight. Let me get the screen. Let's go with nineteen ninety-eight. Kobe's first All-Star appearance. He scored fifteen points, fifteen point four points. I don't know what the four point four is, but uh, yeah, the lockout. Let's go to the ninety-nine lockout. Ninety-nine lockout. He scored twenty points per game. Um, let's go to the. 2001 All-Star game. Tim Duncan, he scored 19 points on that one. Let's go, let's go with the 2002 All-Star game. He uh, was the MVP on that one, scored 31 points. Let's go to the 2020, uh, 2003 All-Star. Okay, he got the votes and whatnot, I think. Okay. Five that was the controversial year. That was a Kobe. That was a Kobe versus uh, Kobe versus Jordan year. He right, scored, that was the controversial. He scored, he scored twenty-two points on that one. Let's go two thousand and four. Kobe, uh, what he score? What he score? Oh shit! They combined with Kobe and Shaquille O'Neal combined for forty-four points on that one. That ain't no single-digit game. Um, let's go sixteen points on that one on the uh, boom the two thousand and five one. Let's go to 2006. Let's see what he scored. 36 points. Let's go 2007. What he scored? Uh, boom, boom. I think 30. he was hurt that year. Hold on, he was dead. Hold on. Time One of them years he was hurt with that Achilles. Hold on, Kobe Bryant was going to let the All Star Game defeat his uh, side. Boom, boom. But Black Mamba and his fans in Las Vegas, blessing. Yeah, my man with 31 piece. He got 31 points on that one on LeBron. Okay, finger problems, 2008. Boom, and 2009. 2008, 2009, that was the year. Okay, boom. Uh, engaged finger problems. They don't show us points on this one. Because he said, didn't play uh, in that one. He was hurt. He played under three minutes. Yeah, he played under three minutes. So this is the one that he tapped out because he was hurt. So that's what they want to talk about. That's the one. My bad. But he was hurt, my nigga. LeBron was not hurt, nigga. Right. Sorry about that. Right. Not like not like Kobe was hurt. Hold on. The next one, 27 points. 2010, uh, against LeBron. I mean, yeah, against LeBron. He the East. Kobe the West. Hold on. What did what, he do? I think he scored like 37 points, nigga. He had a, a bum ankle or something. I don't see what he scored, though. They ain't showing. Okay. Against the Los Angeles. Boom. Grab. 37 on that one. Yep. 27 on that one. Kobe ain't playing no games when it comes to the All-Stars, my nigga. I ain't never heard a single digit. Prior to one with the finger shit, he had played three minutes. Any That's game, it. period. That's it, my nigga. I said 2013, nine points. That's probably the finger game. Right, that's what I'm saying. That, I know he was hurt during that year. Oh, I know yeah. for sure he was hurt he during that. Hurt. And it was the Achilles year, too. 2013, most popular man. Okay, it's a uh, most summer Houston boom boom Kobe performances with co host still elder children. Once again, the most votes he held to nine points. Yep, you're right, he got nine points. You're right, still scored more than LeBron. LeBron had eight. Sorry about that. This <laughs> is ah, cool. Gotcha. But that was his that was his injury year. Oh, he was injured. See. And your finger it, it, after the right his shoot on his shooting hand and his Achilles was fucked up. Oh yeah, come on, man. That's the injury year. Oh, you can't when he had to change his whole game around and turn yeah, into a post play. Take credit with a nigga cripple, my nigga. Stop it. LeBron ain't crippled, my nigga. That nigga Duncan Ali Oops hella shit. Bro, after the nigga pulled his Achilles at the age of like 30 something, the nigga still went on to score like 2400 points. That's amazing. That's that's unheard of.
at that age? But on some real shit, my 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 one through three go like this. this. It goes Kobe. This is a question I gotta ask that that niggas that uh that Gilbert Arenas and them that that try to really push before after this we're gonna move on to another topic. But Gilbert Arenas is pushing this line that Jordan them was soft and the new niggas is hard. Like they saying that Jordan and, and, and them couldn't survive in today's NBA. They said Jordan and them couldn't survive because these niggas know how to dribble more. You know what I mean? You can't touch a motherfucker. You know, uh, uh, they more advanced. They can shoot from the three. Everybody can shoot from half court. So Jordan would have got destroyed in today's era. Vince, uh, Vince Carter, uh, fucking the Dwayne, Dwayne Wade, all the all the boys. You know what I mean? Penny Hardaway. You know what I mean? Fucking Dominique. All them niggas who got murdered. Uh, fucking what was it? The Clyde, the Glide, nigga, the glove. Look, uh, Shaq. All them niggas who got destroyed in today's era. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck do you think about that? Yeah, I saw a video the other day on my Instagram, and it and, and it, it made me think about LeBron. And it was it was Pippen going. To, it was the Chicago Bulls versus the uh, the Miami Heat, and it was like 97, 98. So Pippen goes up for a motherfucking uh, layup. He misses it, catches the rebound. Alonzo Morning goes up to go block his shit. He misses it completely, but instead of trying to block the ball, the nigga hit him with a straight elbow from the top rope. Bow! Up against the forehead. So Pippen gets up off the ground and takes the ball to shoot his free throws. While he's shooting his free throws, this nigga forehead is swelling up. You can see the knot growing on this nigga head as he's shooting the free throw. And I started thinking about LeBron. How would LeBron take that same elbow to the motherfucking forehead? This nigga ain't shooting no shots. This nigga out for a motherfucking month with migraines. That nigga be on his that nigga be on his cell phone pressing charges against that. But nigga. that's why I like that. That's why Kobe is my number one because I know Kobe still would have took the motherfucking shots and still would have adapted to the nowadays game and the old day game. They said Jordan had seven and eighty-five. I gotta look that up, my nigga. That's when Jordan first came in the league, my nigga. That that the probably that same year he won the dunk contest and the MVP. Oh, you talking about when his head looked like a dirty tennis ball? No motherfucking seven, man. This you talking about when he was rocking that Ivy League? Man, listen, man. Jordan came from motherfucking North Carolina, said the, the motherfucking uh, Tar Tar Heels. He came from a championship from college, won that. Came fresh in the league, straight to motherfucking All-Star. Won the MVP of the All-Star and did the motherfucking dunk contest, won that. Just the nigga intro, where the nigga had eight, eight points at? He didn't even get no time like that in that game. In 85, you know how many motherfucking All-Stars they had in that game? Anyway, he won the dunk contest. But I'm saying, like, that 85 All-Star game, bro, you got to realize who in that All-Star. Like, they got real, real legends in that game. And Jordan is, is, is in his rookie year. He's nobody. He still won the dunk contest, nigga, and got the motherfucking up. He did his one. But I'm just saying about the point. I'm just talking about the point total. Like, he couldn't have had that many points because he wouldn't have had that many minutes. I just don't like how niggas acting like the old school niggas was soft. And they had more shit to go through. You could touch, you could elbow a motherfucker, you clothesline a motherfucker. You can't do that now. You'll get ejected. The shit that Draymond Green is doing, that was every player was doing that. Period. Draymond Green was raised by the motherfucking Pistons. His dad was with the Pistons, nigga. So he know that. This nigga was raised around the Pistons, nigga. Them niggas that beat up Jordan so bad that he had to go to the gym, buff up. Nigga, they made you on who he was, the pisses, but beating his ass. Beating his ass on the court and beating his ass physically. Elbows, nigga, chokes, nigga, fucking him up. Nigga, you can't come through the hole without getting elbowed, nigga, thrown on the ground, nigga, tackled. Nigga, nigga, WW clothesline of niggas. So Jordan had to get sneaky, nigga, boom, 
trick shots and shit. You gonna foul me, boom, I'm throwing a trick shot and still gonna make it. That's where the trick shot come from. Cause these niggas hacking the shit out the nigga, you can't regularly duck. Okay, boom, you had me, ah. Cuff one, boom, land. Bah, you got me, ah. Cuff another one, boom, land. That's where the trick shots come from. This nigga trick shot cause they found the shit out of him. Then he got buff. He went to the nigga that, that you know what I mean? Then the same nigga that trained Kobe. He tell you about these buffed up, nigga. Now, nigga, you try to elbow me. You can't move me. Nigga, you try to push me. Can't move me. Nigga, I got, uh, uh, pow, uh, buff, elbow you. Ah, dunk on you, nigga. Fuck that. I'm dunking on all you, nigga. Ah, ah, ah. Ring time. You know, but it was hella physical. You couldn't score without getting, nigga, bruised. This where the mask come from. Because niggas getting their nose broke daily. How many masks you see right now? I'll wait. Niggas getting their nose and face broke daily. How many fucking masks did Bill Lambeer had on from the Pistons? That nigga stayed with a mask on getting his fucking nose broke. Right. He was hey, yuck, yuck, listen to this. The, the, the starters for the NBA 85 All-Star Game is for the Eastern Conference, Isaiah Thomas, motherfucking Bernard King, Moses Malone, Julius Irvin and motherfucking uh, 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 Patrick Ewing. Of course, Michael Jordan only going to have eight points. He a rookie. On the court with Larry Bird, Isaiah Thomas, Bernard King. Hello? Hello? No, I can hear you. I can hear you still. Did you hear what I, who I said the starters was in that All-Star game? Yeah, no, I heard you. I heard, what, I heard what you said, but there ain't no excuses, nigga. Once Jordan got his feet wet, nigga, he took off, nigga. He made the game what it is. He the reason why niggas can get Hold on, Julius kids. Irvin and Larry Bird, you think that back in the 85, he would have got more touches than them? I'm just saying, bro, as a rookie, fuck no. Hell no. Wait, nah. fuck no. Not at all, period. But they said he played 22 minutes that game. But with Julius Irvin, Bernard King, do you know who Bernard, we all know who Bernard King, if we come from that age. Bernard King is that nigga. The boy. We're talking about Julius that. Irvin, Bernard King, and Larry Bird on the same team. My thing is this, man. For 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 it, for they they keep on like trying to. The thing is, what I like about Jordan, right? It's it's a real elevation story because this is a nigga that got dropped from the high school uh, uh, basketball team. You know what I mean? Like the junior high school came back in high school taller. Taller, yeah. this nigga was taller. So boom, he make the team, and his brother is, is the nigga. His brother is going crazy. Jordan's brother was a high school uh, a superstar. They didn't think Jordan was gonna be the nigga, so he had to work through high school, go to college. You know what I mean? Start doing this one too. He got his height on him. He got his bounce on him. Nigga jumping out the gym. Syracuse. I mean, uh, fucking North, uh, North Carolina. Uh, uh right. Tar Heels championship. Come to the NBA. Now you gotta get your feet wet. Now he got to just build his skills up. Like, he really built himself up. Just like Kobe. Kobe wasn't a nigga when he came in. He had to build. Kobe was on the fucking bench when he came in. He had to build himself up. You know what I mean? He, so, was, he was behind Ellis. I'm just saying, bro. None of them niggas was the niggas when they came in the game, bro. They had to build themselves up. And they got the blueprint from Jordan, my nigga. Period. It wouldn't be no you Remember the nigga with the big Jordan, eyes, Ellis? Nigga. It wouldn't be no LeBron without Jordan. They all got the blueprint from him, my nigga. Period. Straight up. You remember the nigga with the big eyes on the Lakers, Ellis? Yep. What about him? Kobe was behind him when he came in the league. Right. Facts. So at the end of the day, man, niggas had to had to, had to work to get to where they was at. So I appreciate Kobe grind. I appreciate uh, 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 Jordan grind because they weren't the top niggas coming in. Brown was the top nigga coming in. He was a nigga in junior high school. He came in as the nigga from the Rippington.
He's the boy. He's the chosen one. They had that stamped on that nigga as soon as he came in. Jordan didn't get that when he came in. Kobe didn't get that one. He didn't get the chosen one. Before a nigga laced up. He didn't, nigga, nah, nobody got that but him. But the but hold on, but the to to to, to show Jordan out, get- even though you had all that pressure on your back for you to show up and show out and do what you have to do with all that pressure, it means something too. They said Shaq was the guy too. Yep, they said Shaq. Was yeah, the guy. Shaq was too. Right, Shaq, Shaq was supposed Shaq to be the new coming. Too. He was supposed to be the new Jesus. Yeah, Shaq. Shaq was our, our YMBA, whatever that nigga name is. <laughs> hey, they did a. They did a. I was watching this shit on YouTube where they did a a, a comparison of, of the strongest dunks of all time, and Shaq got three of the strongest dunks of all time where he was able to bring down an actual NBA rim. And they were talking. They had they had five college niggas dunk at the same time, and they still couldn't bring that motherfucker down. Yeah, Shaq, Shaq brought that motherfucker that down, down by himself. He brought that shit down a few times. They had to make the shit stronger because of that nigga. Period. I had the whole regulation because of Shaq. That right. nigga hang on that bitch. That bitch snap. Ching. Right. <laughs> you no, know, the first time he did it, that bitch shattered. Yeah, facts. Instantly. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Shaq been that nigga. So he came in the game like Brian, but Jordan and Kobe didn't. They had to work for this. And for them to be the best in the game, having to work for this, that, that makes it even more, you know, relevant. You know, That's it wasn't I no love hype. Kobe, bro. It wasn't no fucking hype. That's why I love Kobe. I just don't like Jordan because he get a lot of the, the, the credit and a lot of the, the, the accolades, even though his partners in crime did a lot of the, the dirty work. Let's see what his partners in crime got to say, man, because let's finish with the Gilbert Arena shit, man. Let's see what the players got to say about these hating-ass bull niggas, man, because these niggas sure, are trying, sure. to, trying to hate on motherfucking uh, Jordan, bitch-ass. I ain't going to say the B word, but hating-ass, pimping. Horace Grant, where the fuck you come from, man? Luke Lonely, you old forest motherfucking uh Reindeer chasing looking ass nigga, man. Sit down somewhere, man. Fair <laughs> arenas, man. Let's go. Gills Arena, let's go. 300 million ain't complaining. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> fair use, fair use. I got slightly less than that uh, during his time with the Bulls. So, I mean, hey, all I'm saying is when they do that, who would you rather be, James Harden or Scotty Pippen? I want to see what Scotty Pippen got to say. <laughs> man. Right? Man. Yeah, because that's sad. I just, that's they, sad just the way they, they going. gotta be careful. They gotta be careful with their words while I'm watching. That's sad the way they going out. That's, Come on, man. That's mm-hmm. sad. Damn shame what happened to Flip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Them three looking just like that. But what's the narrative? What was the narrative that they push? Well, he said something like that bullshit documentary, yeah, right? I know. He called it bullshit. So I so that means it gotta be negative. Because he's saying, he saying it was bullshit. So it's something that he want to talk about that wasn't told. That's what I'm saying. How does he want to, like, how are they portrayed inside of the, the document? Besides champions. Something like that, good. Uh, I don't think it was wholly positive. Fair use. That, it's called a documentary. That nigga said, the document. <laughs> Gil be kind of tipsy on this motherfucker. I be tipsy too. I be fucking up my words too. That nigga said, the document. It's a documentary, my nigga. Let's go. I be fucking up too, though. Fair use. Let's go. We all be tipsy. Fair. Me, Horace Grant was called a snitch and was going to the media, giving inside info. You an inside info on what? Winning championships? On ring culture. All I'm saying is on ring culture. All I'm trying to say this is ring culture, y'all. Yeah. This is yeah. one of the best dynasties the world have, yeah. has ever known. Yeah. Right. So that's all. I'm, okay. I just be careful, motherfuckers. Out there. Don't don't that's don't let me get in question rings again. Man, that's a lot. They ain't happy with the rings. It's just a lot. It's a lot over there. And I just want to see how media treats it, though. Well, they're gonna have to stand tall on the, what they push out to push out to the rest of us, because you know you're you're talking about people's legacies. Hold on, man. Let, let me let me let's talk about this fair use, man. You got one nigga on there with more rings than Kobe and LeBron. And you mad, nigga? Wow. This nigga pimping is crazy. This nigga done lost his cotton pick and dreadlock mind, my nigga. Hey. Hey, Billy Kid. What's up? You got that nigga some uh, uh, dry dreadlock juice? 
Like, what, what's going on over there with pimp and dreadlocks, my nigga? Y'all, y'all fuck. I'm, I'm gonna have to get this nigga some shrooms to open his mind up or something. <laughs> Yeah, nigga, some dry dreadlock juice, my nigga. Like, what's going on? Fuck a dreadlock. Fuck a, dread fuck a, fuck a, fuck a, uh, fuck a, a re rejuvenation. This nigga needs room. Hey, that nigga chin longer than the, the fucking goons on out on fucking Popeye. The mother fuck a chin. Popeye. That nigga nose. That nigga nose is like a motherfucking goomba. That facial boy. That nose is mainly boy. That boy look like he snorted a lot of cocaine. <laughs> Like he was the coke tester for Pablo Escobar. Like every time a brick came in, Pippin snort <laughs> tested. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah snorting off the brick, nigga, with that big ass nose, nigga. That nigga like he got ant eater in his genetics. Uh that nigga was a. Uh, <laughs> this nigga was a. Uh, <laughs> this nigga snort out uh, <laughs> bombs and shit at the airport with that nose. <laughs> that nigga could tell. That nigga yeah, could smell. It. That nigga could smell a heart attack about that. That nigga could smell a heart attack about to happen. <laughs> you got a TSA boy. That nigga hired by TSA to snort out bombs and shit on the airplane. Right. This nigga. Yeah. This nigga sniff Louis Bay for for a for, for 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 uh. God damn, this nigga ugly as motherfucker. That nigga hey, that like nigga one of them. Smell, that, that nigga smell when when your wife cheating on you because his, his wife cheated. <laughs> you remember you remember that show Popeye? You remember the goons? Didn't I that just nigga look just like one of them goons. Didn't I just say that nigga? I'm 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 sorry, I'm drunk. Boy, I swear I just said that nigga. You crazy? I thought that was an original idea. Boy, you are out your motherfucking mind. I just said that. <laughs> hey, you <laughs> ever hear something and then repeat it and be like, nigga, I just said that shit. I swear to God, man. Niggas is litty. All right, let's get back to the dialogue, man. Just want to, you know what I mean? Fair use. We're going to hear what they got to say. Because when the players are saying it's bullshit, it's bullshit. These niggas is like, what the fuck is going on, bro? Like, hey, man, y'all niggas got rings and y'all mad. So this is the real NBA players talking they shit. Like, bro, y'all need to cut it out. Uh, a little bit more, man. Fair use. And then we're going to dialogue and get the fuck about it. Let's go. And, and there know, sacri is. sacrifices and stuff like that. And this right here can just jeopardize everything that people talk about. Well, you know, the tour don't start in America. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what it starts. We're going to get what they say. No, for, <laughs> no, for, <laughs> sure. No, for sure. I'm just and saying. It's starting this weekend. So, you know, not sure. But that should let you know how far it might, how long it might last. If it's starting overseas first. They like the other temptations. <laughs> Kenny, are, are you rolling with, with them going on tour to set the record straight from their viewpoint? Uh, uh, what, I'm, nah, man. This is this ain't cool, man. If it ain't positive, man, I, I don't. Because it's not. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm trying to put some, <laughs> put a spin on this shit, and you can't because... Damn, dog. It's just sad how it's now, huh? No, no, no. It's everything. Like, if you read, even when you read, like, the chat, right? Like, Gil didn't watch The Last Dance. Oh, no, I did. I watched it just like you guys, right? But what I don't want to hear is when you push championships and we use championships as this thing right. that we all must yep. mm -hmm. get. Right. We know what it takes to get one, some of us, but we know it's going to take Breaking players from bad habits is going to take talking. It's going to some chastising. I don't want to hear you motherfuckers bitch about what someone said or did to you. It it led to a ring. And yeah, one of you got right. six. One of yeah, you got right. three. One of you got three. Yeah. What you went through to get it, bitch, I don't want to hear nothing yeah. about it. Yeah. Because you're calling us. You're calling us losers. Well, yeah. Yeah. And we don't know how to win. And you guys are win yeah. complaining about winning yeah. sends, a, sends yeah. a bad message. Yeah, that's why I'm 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 uh, yeah. talk your shit, man. The niggas that won all the rings complain about one of the rings. And you want to call other niggas losers, man. Come on, let's talk some shit, man. I'm gonna throw the line out, I'm gonna throw the bat line, and we're gonna end, get him off the screen, man. That's enough, man. Fair use, Gilbert Arenas. Y'all follow him. <laughs> I'm gonna throw the bat line out one more time, and then we're gonna get the fuck up out of here. I got some fly shit I want to show about little D though. 
Let me let me let me put on for my nigga right quick. Cause we didn't talk enough about these sport niggas, man. Straight up, straight up. They put some fly shit, mate. Because you, nah. They put some fly Let's shit up. Sometimes you hear about a motherfucker report card, and you know you you don't know it's official until you really hear about it. You know what I mean? So this is a L.A. crip that was locked up with Lil D. You know what I mean? Ricky G. The you know what I mean? Real Bill niggas. You know what I mean? And he's gonna give his experience, man. Fair use, man. His name is L.A. Ryan. And he talking some real shit, man. Real official tissue shit, man. So let's check. Fair use, man. Let's check it out, man. Town business, man. L.A. nigga speaking on real town politics in the pen, though. Let's talk. Let's go. In the, hold on. In the Fed. Not the pen. In the feds. This piece on a guy that I met in Atlanta, USP. His name is Little D from Oakland. I uh, met Little D through a guy named Jamaican Mike from Five Deuce Hoover. While we was in Atlanta USP, uh, we was way away from home and we had to kind of like stick together because there wasn't that many California guys down there. I know Little D represent Cali and, we, and I represent Los Angeles, but in the feds in this particular time, we are, we was one. I end up actually meeting Jamaican Mike because Jamaican Mike is from Fire Deuce Hoover and I lived in Fire Deuce Hoover neighborhood over there on 49th and Hoover around the Olympics time. I used to see Jamaican Mike in a regal with mules on it. And they called him Jamaican Mike because I think he's from Jamaica, but he's he used from Fire Deuce. Now, when we was in Atlanta USP, we always used to work out together. Me and Jamaica Mike. Jamaica Mike always talking about how much he can bench press. That's how come pretty much I was, 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 was hanging a little bit with Jamaica Mike because he loved to lift weights. And Jamaican Mike was hanging with this guy named D. D was kind of quiet. And he told me that this guy was from Oakland. And this is one of the guys that kind of like is Felix Mitchell's family or Felix Mitchell's uh, friend or some kind of competition with Freeman. I'm not for sure what he told me, but it was years later that I found out that this guy was a major guy in Oakland. Uh, I almost didn't meet Hey, him duh, nigga. Because D was kind of quiet, and him and him and um, Jamaican Mike, they worked on the trash crew. But one day, we was down in the uh, recreation. That's when we had uh, uh, my homie uh, El Crazy Mike from uh, Schoolyard was there. It was a bunch of us. Uh, G was there from, uh, I think his name, G something. He was from Bakersfield. Uh, but we had a nice little old thing going on in Atlanta. And when I met Little D, I didn't know Little D was that big until one day we was down there lifting weights and, and the mic introduced me and said, yeah, man, this is Little D out of Oakland. He was, uh, I think Little D had a 848, a kingpin thing but i know little d was a kingpin back then little d was one of the most smartest guys that i ever met and he was real low key he was real dangerous and at the same time he thought think for himself and i always watched little d so one day we was working out and uh i didn't i didn't know little d was that big but i seen little d back on me i think it was 85 or 100 pound dumbbells on the bench. And I said, man, this guy benching, this guy back on the dumbbells, I think it was like 85s or like 100. But I didn't know D was was that ripped until one day we was in the gym and uh, you know, guys got the high sign and Mike, uh, Jamaican Mike got the high sign and he talking about, you know, how much he can bench press and how much just a little D kind of like took off his shirt. And I was like, man, Little D ripped up like a bag of dope. I see. I said, damn, that was kind of big. And I was, and I was really trying to work on. Hey, big no Frank Ocean. Yo. <laughs> this nigga looked like he was excited about the little D. <laughs> hey, 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 oh, no, I beat <laughs> the excitement. Hey, that was too much excitement. Oh, man. This nigga pill, my nigga. Like you say, this nigga hey. pill is tough as fuck. That is like, God damn, like, I don't know, too man. Much say, too much admiration right there. 
Yeah, man. Hey, man. No Frank Ocean, man. No, no LGB, Elemental P. <laughs> yeah, man. Fair use. Let's go, man. <laughs> A little uh, LA Ron, nigga. Come on, you got too excited right there, my nigga. Like, come on, man. Like, yo, don't. Nah, hey, bro. Shit. <laughs> on my stomach. I didn't have a lot of uh, weight training because I had I got shot when I before I come to jail and I was kind of skinny. But I started off at Terry Hut. But when I got to Atlanta, I gained some weight and I got it to like two hundred some pounds. But little D, I don't know how much time he had back then. I think little D had thirty years. And little D used to work out religiously. I mean, he had the six pack, he had the chest arms, he had some vicious back arms, and he ate right. And I know that D had a lot of uh, money, and I know that D was a good dude, and I know D was crying, he was dangerous, but I didn't know that little D was hooked up with all of these guys. And to one guy, this one day, this guy named Hootie from um, Long Beach, Hootie was a kingpin too. Hootie is actually Ken Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg is actually Hootie's brother-in-law, which is boss lady is actually Snoop's wife. And Hootie is actually Snoop Dogg, Snoop's wife's brother. And his name is Durrell. And, and Dur Durrell was a good friend of mine. But one day Durrell was telling me about Little D. And I think uh, Little D, I mean, Hootie's sister used to come visit Hootie. And that was boss lady. She the one managed his Snoop at the same time that is his, his wife. And I think they went to ju element, junior high school together. They've been going since junior high school. But little D, one day they told me, man, you know, Hammer is in the visiting room. And I'm like, MC Hammer? He like, yeah, man, MC Hammer come to visit little D. I'm like, little, little Dur 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 the one from the Bay, he said, yeah, man, Hammer is in the visiting room. And I think Hootie's sister was in the visiting room. So I'm like, wow, is that right? I say, you know, we kind of live ways together a little bit. And then the next time, I heard about Little D was Gary Payton actually came and visited him in Atlanta. I think it was Gary Payton came and visited him. But to make a long story short, after I left uh, Atlanta, I got into a fight with a guy. And uh, I ended up going to... Fair use. We don't want to hear about your fight. Well, hey, 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 Mike, you, you, you behind them walls, man. Have you heard about the shit that he's talking about? Nah, we don't talk about that type of shit, bro. There's so many stars in here, bro. It's like, it's everybody, regular niggas in here, man. Everybody that made the head on things, man. So it's kind of like, uh, the way he glorifying, bro, I mean, you would never... <laughs> I probably... I didn't been... Nigga, I didn't been on a bus with the Menendez twins. I didn't been around Charles Manson, all kind of... Uh, bro. It, it, it's just a, it's just another day up in this motherfucker, bro. We don't. <laughs> this nigga, this, this nigga, this nigga has an, he has an infatuation. He's look, he's starstruck. Hey, he's man. starstruck it, by Lil D. It definitely it seemed like he got his boots laced. You know what I mean? Definitely got his boots laced. He didn't that know nigga be, that, that nigga be that we'd be making all kind of jokes about this nigga on the yard. He'd be like, nigga. <laughs> I didn't like how, how when the nigga, when he said a little deep pill, the, the, the amazement, the eyes, his eyes just busted out of his socket. You know what I mean? Like, wow. Like, bro, oh, yeah. I know you official tissue yeah. out here in LA, bro. No disrespect, man, but you got to watch like body language. Your bro, body language I, show that, that you The LA, LA niggas, though, I'm telling this proof, nigga. Them niggas will be, them niggas will be, them niggas will be, be like, nigga, well, we. <laughs> Hey man, it is. Hey man, but it, it true tells though. But all bullshit aside, like uh, watch him. What he gonna start talking some shit though? Man, he gonna start naming some of my real niggas, some of my OGs. That's how I know that he's talking some real shit. You know what I mean? Like all bullshit aside, he talking some real shit. Let him continue. Let's go. Fair use. Leavenworth. Then I went to Lompoc. One day I'm in the gym in Lompoc. And a guy was showing me his photo. He was showing me, Freeway Rick, and some other guys in the gym. His name was Ricky Jeter. Ricky Jeter is from the Bay, too. Ricky Jeter was one of the good guys that played basketball, and he played football. And Ricky Now, hey, Ricky, now, hold on, man. Hey, hey, I'm going to ask you this question, because I know exactly who that name is. Mike, do you know that name? I ain't going to even ask you no hold more. On. <laughs> You 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 know that name that he just named, right? 
Damn, I, this shit. Yeah, I know of him. I know of him. But you heard of that name in Oakland, right? I have. You're not a nigga. Like, a, to be an L.A. nigga, the name a nigga. <laughs> like, come on. The, the, come on. We know who Rick is, man. Come on. It's legendary. He's from the Ville, my nigga. Rick Jeter. That, that, come on. That nigga used to date my sister, my nigga. That nigga down there, my uncle, my nigga. I know Rick. He from the Ville, period. <laughs> So at the end of the day, this nigga name it real players, like on top of, you know what I mean? So I believe his story because of the names he named. You know what I mean? But, but the thing about it is that he he's he's in the feds. In the feds, as he said and he correctly, it ain't like the state. Like in the state, like, you know what I mean? Everybody's sectarian, everybody's within their realm. But in the feds, it's it's the California call. You know what I'm saying? Like it's the whole state, it's the whole coast. You know what I mean? In some areas, you know what I mean? Like especially California. You know what I mean? You know it ain't in Cal like out here in California. You know you got the Bay, you got LA, you got the Hoovers and etc. Out there, nigga, we all one because it's us going against DC or New York or Philadelphia. You know what I mean? We, we, it's different. In the feelings. So I mean, he would know. I mean, he should know everybody. Would be around a whole lot of niggas that's from all over the state in the field. So, so I mean, it's not a far stretch that that he know that he ran into all the people that he ran into in the feds. You go, you are going to be around them people, especially if you're doing a serious time. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm not surprised at all. And Russ said that he said the same shit you said. Like he said, little deep first pull up, they was in Atlanta, nigga. They're locked up in Atlanta. So y'all the only Cali boys down south. So y'all got to team up, nigga, and protect each other. So that's what he was saying on the intro. Like, we the only Cali boys. That's how we, you know, we had to stick together. You know what I mean? Out down south. You know what I mean? Then he got transferred out here to Lime Park and all that shit. But they, they started that shit off in Atlanta. That's what he was saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all we got. We all we got. Once, once we outside these California borders, yeah, we all we got. And you gotta like, you gotta let them know, like, just like what I said, like on the intro of the show, like, leave your flag at the door, like that flag shit don't count when it's black against white, black against Mexican, black against Asian, black against this. Now you you got Latin King, whatever it may be, it's a race card once you get in jail. All you, all the niggas on the same race, the Aryans, you can't forget the white guys. All these niggas team up and protect themselves, and they press a hard line. Period. In the joint, from the county to the pen to the fucking feds. Period. This, this, well, 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 the state, the state and the feds is two different worlds. Specifically based on the fact that the state, the state, everybody is within a is within a politics. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like it's kind of like down south. The further we get, me being from the Bay, the further we get and uh, towards Southern California. It starts to matter matter less about what part of the bay or what part of north you're from, because we all we got. But but once we get further up north, then everybody start breaking down. Oh, I'm from Oakland. I'm from the city. I'm from Vallejo, X, Y, and Z. You know what I'm saying? You no. Know, so in a bigger sense, you know, what I mean, when you outside these outside the California borders, you know what I mean? Shit, it's the Cali card. It's, it's no matter if you're from or, or down south, nigga. Like it's real in the field, nigga. You get your ass carved up. You know what I mean? For you know, for playing. You know what I mean? So uh, yeah, that's I mean, that's the nature of the beast, man. And on top of that, man, like they put niggas. It's like what I peep when I was going. I just did county time and I did a a, a fucking camp time and shit. But what I peeped on the whole shit is that they create that, you know what I mean, that survival. You know what I mean? When you're in that motherfucker, they create that. They put you in the motherfucker with your worst enemy. You know what I mean? Get boobopped up and then send you to the car where all your peoples is at. And you got to be like, hey, let's team up. So it's like a setup, my nigga. They throw you in the, in, the, in the fucking tank with the wrong, the nigga that you ain't supposed to, wrong gang or the wrong, and y'all had to boo woo woo. And as soon as you come out that tank, you're going to make your decision what cars you want, my nigga. So you come in jail not knowing it's that car. You, of course, you banging what you bang. You thinking it's your street car. 
But once, nigga, the politics go and you get boobop, nigga, and yeah, you better choose your side, nigga. Or, period. And then not only that, like not to be on no, no, no allegedly, it's what I heard. I don't know. Allegedly. Fuck the, not, not saying fuck, but beyond, not saying fuck, beyond the street politics and gang politics, you got police in that motherfucker gang banging. You got police gangs. CO gangs. Oh, that's absolutely like in, in the state, they got some shit called the Green Wall, you know what I'm saying? Which is probably the most uh notorious room recently within CDC, you know what I mean? If you was at if you was at Salinas Valley, you definitely know what the Green Wall was, you know what I'm saying, or is still, you know what I mean? But the thing is, is that everybody know like by the like I started off on the four yard, so it's like Within your first month, you know what's what, period. You know what's what and who's who, and who's who, and and whatever it is. You know what I mean. And to politics. your point, yeah. And, and, and to your point, and to your point, um, when it when it was wartime, these police do play games. I remember when I was at New Folsom, we was at war with the Serranos. Uh, you know what I mean, like doing shower time. Like it's just you and your celly, like they doing showers, uh, cell by cell by cell. But uh, they crack the doors and let you out there, and all of a sudden they make it seem like they accidentally cracked a couple of the Mexican doors, and they, you know what I mean? And if they door open, they gotta come out and get rocking with you. So if you ain't ready, <laughs> you ass out. So me and my celly, every time we came out, we were strapped. Period. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? You know, shower everywhere we go, nigga. <laughs> we go on, nigga. You just know what it's gonna kick. I mean, I mean, bro, this shit be real behind the walls. It's just like the society never hear about it, bro. You know what I mean? But you know what I mean? It, Somebody in the chat said two two worlds. It's two different worlds, man. Like it's I'm out here in LA. Worlds. I'm out here in LA, <clears throat> and just me niggas in LA County could call shots in the streets. I'm talking about not the the other card. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about. The yeah. other politics. Right, right, right. They're calling shots from L.A. County. They calling shots from the pen and the feds. And whatever they shot they call is moving in the streets, bro. So well, the thing about it, Yuck, let me make sense of it to you. You know what I mean? The, the power comes behind the walls. The major niggas that run these cars got locked up at some point. You know right, what I mean? I'm the Uncle King Sam fans, took me away. the bosses, yeah. the king fans, the bosses, the OGs of the sets. So yeah, yeah. most exactly. of them are behind the walls. So yeah, they still running the line. You know what I mean? And, you know, niggas outside, they send their top lieutenants them and saying to push whatever line it is on the street. You know what I'm saying? But you know, that's why it happened that way. You know what I mean? Unless you one of these new gangs, but I'm saying eventually the way the government works. You know what I mean? If, if, if it become known or at any point that, that you the head of any organization, my nigga, the, I mean, the law is they have a prerogative to take you off the streets. So that's why it happens that way. You know what I mean? But then again, they lock these niggas up. You know what I mean? Why? How do you think? How do you think niggas this locked up in the supermax penitentiary, my nigga, still able to give directives to the street? Why? Because the government the government, as long as they can regulate what you're doing, they gonna let you know what they they gonna let they gonna let you do what you do, because they are in your business for the most part. You know what I mean? That's why they be doing a whole lot about what niggas do because they because they're able like these police. You got police, yeah. You got police that be that be a part of all of these structures too, yeah. You got Crips and Bloods and. Nothing surround you know, niggas that's in this 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 correction officers because they ain't got no records or whatnot. You know what I mean? But some of these motherfuckers be reverse spies though. They play both sides, man. It's all kind of man. This shit is tricky, man. Nah, you know and then, I mean? nah, but beyond the, the 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 you know the gang politics, you got police gangs, nigga. Right. Like real, like they are the gang, nigga. Like what you seen on fucking training day. You got that, like, you, it's notorious, the Rampart Division. But you got, yeah. like, real shit. Like, they are real gangs out here in L.A. Like, they mob and they got tattoos and shit and everything. Like, it's if serious. Y ever get a if y'all ever get a chance you to look at Green Wall. 
it, you get behind them walls and it's even more serious behind them walls. If y'all ever get a chance to research the green the green wall, research the green wall, you know what I'm saying? Google that shit, the the, the Department of Correction, they they prison gang, they police correction officer prison gang called the green wall. You know what I mean? Them niggas was beating up beating up correction. They, they was doing all kind of crazy shit. You know what I'm saying? Man, like if they if they got a problem with you, they gonna they gonna make it a, a problem, period. I, I witnessed that, like, you know, um, I was on Celebrity Row with my nigga Caffeine, and Caffeine was always yelling and shouting and screaming and shit, and everybody had a problem with him. The COs let niggas get on Caffeine. Everybody had a problem with Caffeine, they let nigga boobop Caffeine. You know, and then sent Caffeine to the hole. So I know how the game is in that motherfucker. They, they let it go down, period. Straight up and send the, the victim to the hole like he did it. You know, my nigga Caffeine from Men's Society. I mean, uh, yeah, Men's Society when he uh asked about his uh cousin and shit and got stumped out. That's Caffeine. So uh yeah, he was in celebrity role with me. You know, he rapping, having a good time. Niggas trying to take advantage of their time. Niggas ain't trying to like stressed out. So he was a happy, you know, he was happy in that motherfucker, rapping, cooling and shit. And they was mad at that. So they let it go down on him, like on a, you know what I mean, a little ooh op, nothing, nothing crazy. And they took him to the hole. That nigga was in the hole for a month. That nigga got out that hole. Nigga came with this petition like, yeah, I'm going to sign a, I want everybody to sign a petition mm -hmm. against the CO. I'm like, oh, hell no, nah, nigga. These COs at this time known for coming in your room with shields and beating your ass like they go crazy. I'm like, I'm not signing. No, no, nigga. You by yourself with that one, my nigga. So, yeah, like you. <laughs> You gotta understand, they do that shit just for entertainment, my nigga. You know what I'm saying, bro? At this no. time, they right, they hitting our motherfucking ops every week. They they raiding our shit, like searching and shit, throwing shit in the hallway. You gotta put your shit back together. I'm not playing with these niggas. I'm not about to sign a petition. <laughs> and these niggas, no, 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 no. Nigga, we just, nigga, we just went through a major search about three weeks ago, nigga. Them major searches, nigga, ain't no joke, nigga. They tell you they throw all the shit everywhere. You gotta just put your shit, put everything back together, nigga. They going through everything, bro. It, it's the worst, you know. So I be, yeah. I be happy than a motherfucker though. You know what I'm saying? Long, long as they don't find, long as they don't find my shit, I'll be cool. <laughs> right, right, right. I was watching, yeah, I, be Vince, happy I was watching Vince, Vince uh, Staples' little show on Netflix, man. The funniest shit, man. He was locked up in jail, right? A nigga keys to the crack pipe in a motherfucking, <laughs> a motherfucking, <laughs> a lighter crack pipe in a rock out his ass. He thought the nigga was taking his shit. <laughs> a nigga digged in the toilet, grabbed a crack pipe, the rock, and he take it, start blazing up in the cell. <laughs> I said, <laughs> somebody, <goes> down. <laughs> somebody, in a, somebody mentioning a goose. Somebody mentioned a riders gang, the police gang, and the boy nigga, nigga, woo wee, nigga, Virgeron and them niggas, boy, them niggas. Now, hey, I had just missed that. I probably would have been a part of the lawsuit, man, if I was out. But I feel, uh, I feel oh, not so too much for that shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Virgeron and Summit and all them niggas, man, them niggas wouldn't cool, nigga. nigga them niggas was dirty as a motherfucker, man. Especially Virgeron, motherfucker, man. Virgeron was a scumbag, man. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. Yeah, you got legendary, legendary police that operate like nigga, like they ain't even part of the police, nigga. It's us, right. nigga. We running shit. We on some street shit. We taking dope. We taking money, nigga. We doing raids, nigga, without no police, without no search warrants. We, and we ain't arresting nobody. We gonna cuff y'all up, take everything, and good night, nigga. That type remember, of shit. You remember track star and all them niggas back in the day, oh, nigga? Yeah, man. Come all on. Them <laughs> Nigga, the, whole, nigga, the whole foo foo is that niggas from the town. Like they grew Joyner. up with niggas and they become the police. T. Lewis, nigga, and them niggas. Joyner J. Joyner was on my ass. T. Lewis. Joyner. Joyner just killed one. Joyner, Joyner just killed. Joyner just killed one of them EBK niggas. Shit, I'm surprised Joyner ain't locked up. He shot that nigga in the back of the head at the gas station when he was running away. Nigga, that was murder. Nigga, that wasn't self defense. You know what I'm saying? You don't remember that shit? You didn't hear about that shit? One of them EB, one of the EBK, the one of them little rapper niggas that got killed. Nigga by Joiner. 
Nah, I ain't hear about that. I'm out yeah. here in LA, bro. I'm out here in LA. But yeah, um, that happened. It happened last year sometime. They them niggas. Uh, they said them niggas shot a rival at a gas station. You shot one of them niggas in the back of the head, trying to run away. Oh wow, bro. Rest in peace. Condolences to that brother, man. I ain't know that, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah police hypey as the niggas, bro. Period. They ain't no different. They just got a badge, my nigga. Let's hear. Let's hear the player shit that bro talking about, little Dito, man, and uh, wrap this yeah. shit up after this. Let's go. Dito was real flamboyant. He was one of the guys that was real flamboyant. You had uh, Ricky Jeter. You had uh, a few of the guys down there. I forgot the other guy's name. I wish I could remember his name. But anyway, I'm looking at James Beasley. That's his name. James Beasley, man. James Beasley and a few of the guys. I, I met uh, the other boy named Banks. I think he was uh, I think he was uh, Phoenix Mitchell's nephew. He the one had uh, the Rolls Royce when he was 18. But when I'm looking at this photo album, man, I see Talib Kawi, which is the guy that played in um, with Janet Jackson in the movie Poetic Justice. So I'm looking in the photo album and I'm telling uh, Ricky G, I'm like, hey, man, uh, I know that dude right there. He said, man, that's my cousin. I said, I say, you mean tell me Lil D your cousin? He said, yeah, man, Lil D my cousin. I said, yeah, man. And he said, Tali is my cousin. Tali Khalil, Khalil is my husband, my cousin, the one who played in the movie. And that's how I come I knew Little D was a major guy in Oakland. So he told me, he said, yeah, man, look, man, um, I said, when you call Little D again, you tell Little D that a big fish from Big Fish told, said, what's up? Because I, I had to get out of Atlanta because I got in trouble. So I guess I must have did a real good job up there handling my business because when I talked to, to, to Ricky Jeter, I told Ricky Jeter, I said, listen, Rick, Tell uh, tell uh, D that I said what's up. So one day, uh, Ricky G to come to the compound, I mean to the gym. He told me meet him in the gym. So I met him in the gym, and he was like, "Yeah, man, I talked, I talked with Little D today, man." And Little D told me you you a good dude, and you a cool dude. You's uh, you bought your business, you handle your business. And he say, "Uh, man, he told me look out for you." I said, "Okay, man." So um, we get to, we talking about uh, Tyler Carby, his cousin. We talking about a lot of guys out of Oakland, you know uh. We talking, you're just talking about a bunch of dudes that was really getting money in Oakland, man. I mean, these guys knew all the guys. They knew they knew everybody, man. Because you know, I know Beasley, I know uh Banks, I know uh I know a few guys, man, but I I forgot a lot of their names, man. Uh, because my brother used to mess with, with some of the guys too that was that was in USP with. But when, when Ricky Jeter was telling me about uh, you know, that was his cousin and stuff like that, that was one of the first times that I kind of like knew that little D was going with somebody that was in the was in the culture, was in the business. And I heard later on that D wrote a book. I haven't read it. I, matter of fact, I was supposed to read it, but somebody didn't let me read the book. Uh, a dude in, uh, in in Victorville was supposed to let me read the book, but he never gave it to me. He just got it. Sleep didn't let me read the book. But uh, uh, Ricky Jeter, man, he was, a good, he was a good athlete. And uh, we all, we played football and everything. But all these guys, we ended up leaving. Then, then I heard little D had got actually the clemency. And I heard he was trying to they, uh, they try to give him take the, the thirty, give him a little bit more. He, I heard D said, "Nah, man, I ain't. I don't want that stuff. Give it to somebody that needed." And I heard little D got out, and I heard that uh, he's doing pretty good. And he's he's uh he's he's, he's doing uh, seminars and he's talking all over the country. Yep, you know it, Bill shit, nigga. How you feel about? <laughs> hey, real recognize real man, Bill shit, man. Period, man. Town I, shit. I, 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 I'm not surprised at all, bro. It's like I like doing my journey, my nigga. I ran, I ran across a lot of, a lot of, um, you know, major known niggas, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, from all over niggas that made all kind of headlines. But I think really the main one with me, um, probably was a uh, double R. You know what I mean? The brother that seen here for killing Huey P. Newton. You know what I'm saying? You know, I was on the yard with him, you know what I mean? I got to get a lot of dialogue with bro to really get some insight to what went into that situation, man. You know what I mean? I'm telling you, this this history is a motherfucker, man. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, but the thing about it is that in here, like, everybody in the made headlines, you know what I'm saying? You know, like, it's, like, especially on a level four yards, nigga, it's like everybody that made the headlines. Ain't nobody more or less impressed with the next motherfucker, nigga. We all got more time than we can live to do, nigga. You know what I mean? Nigga, everybody at zero, nigga. <laughs> you just regular, nigga. I hit the yard, nigga. 
22 years. I had the yard 22 years old with 147 year of life sentence. And nigga, I thought nigga I had more time than every nigga on it. Nigga, niggas on there with 10 life sentences. Niggas been been down since the late 60s, 70s. Nigga for the one year of life, seven year of life sentence. Nigga, 40 or 50 years. Nigga, like nigga, come on, bro, that shit humble you, nigga. <laughs> it just it just hit different, bro. So yeah, so. Yeah, I, I get everything he's saying. It's just, I, I mean, see, it's, it's just a wreck. It's just another day with me, man. Um, they hear about crazy shit, man. The dude, I heard the dude. Um, I don't know if it's you that told me or somebody else that told me, but what's the dude? The Mason dude. What's his name? That was locked Which up. One? The murder with the cross on his uh, on his forehead. Are oh, you talking the about Manson? Manson, Manson, Charles Manson. Charles Manson. Manson. Hey. Yeah. I heard it's rumored that when Charles Manson sold his book or whatever his interviews and shit made all that money that he was looking out for all the blacks in the joint that he was locked up with. Like he was paying niggas. I can believe it. I can believe it. They said man, Charles look, Manson had look, the hair on lit. Hey, check this out, bro. Believe it. It's believe it. Look, all of these racist, all this racist shit that motherfuckers tell you, bro. When I was in a hole, when I when I had I was in a hole in 07, 08, I was fighting the attempt to murder my nigga. Do you know nigga who was helping me nigga fight my appeal, my nigga? Who was helping me learn the law? A motherfucking Nazi lowrider, a skinhead, was giving me hella legal game. I'm talking about real boss legal game. My See, nigga, that racist shit mean nothing, bro. You know what I mean? Look, the only thing about a supremacist is that he's pr- he's a proud member of his race, just like I'm a proud member of mine. So with that understood, we don't have no misunderstanding because we two proud people of our race. So when we take that part out of the equation, there is no misunderstandings until there is a misunderstanding. You know what I mean? Like, no, like we we get used that to that's, coexisting that's- with each other, man. That's the that's the real issue that the world need to get up beyond. But how niggas, boy, you just said it. You a motherfucker that I mean, this excuse my language. Oh, you say it how you mean it, bro. Say it how you mean it, bro. No, 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 no. You're a brother that's representing your culture, and you standing on the business your culture stand on. He's a brother that's representing his culture, standing on his culture, but y'all not against each other. Like I'm for my people. Yeah. And I'm going to defend my people if it come to that. Same with you. I'm for right. my people. I'm going to defend my people if it come for that. Other than that, nigga, we could buy, we could chill, build, whatever. Absolutely. As long as, no Absolutely. As long as it ain't no, you know, uh, Absolutely. Uh, confrontation. You know what I mean? Right. Every, everybody in here, we do business <laughs> with each other and, and, and we coexist, bro. We around each other for the rest of our lives a lot of times, bro. Unless these appeals... Like, in my situation happened, bro, outside of that, bro, you know what I mean? Like, no, wars don't carry on forever. We ain't taking off on each other every time we see each other. We doing business. We selling each other weed, alcohol, you know what I'm saying? Everybody everybody got some kind of hustle that they market. But it's a whole different world in here, bro. You know what I mean? So the perception that society is getting is, is that's Hollywood, bro, that's trying to paint a picture, my nigga. But you know what I'm saying? But it's, it's less reality than what you think. Now, the wars is real. When it kick, it kick. When it kick off, it kicks off. It is what it is. <laughs> but you can, but it ain't a far stretch that, that Charles Manson would have been looking out for everybody on his, on his tier, on his building, or however that happened. It ain't a far stretch. You know what I'm saying? No. Charles, you got to remember, Charles Manson ain't killed nobody, man. That man, that man is convicted behind influencing somebody to do something. He ain't did nothing. He ain't bust the motherfucking great. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you know, hey, we got to look at the facts and not the hype. Facts, man. I'm glad you said that because he, he ain't killed. I mean, hey, influence, you know what I mean? Influential, but far as actually stabbing, stabbing, and, and Killing and shooting and yeah, he didn't do none of that, man. It's just like Alpo. It's just like the Alpo story. Everybody talking about he was a killer, nigga. It's the same thing, nigga. 
If no, you it's like the nigga in the Oakland. No, he, didn't, he didn't kill nobody. What was the nigga in Texas that had that little coat and everybody like sacrificed themselves? That coat where they in Texas. What was that called? Oh, you talking about Jim? You talking about Jim? You talking about Jim Jones? Not Jim Jones. That was a no. I'm talking about in Texas. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about something else. What's the white dude? They they bought the tanks out and everything. What was this dude's name, man? Chat help me. But Come he on. had a whole coat yeah, where they yeah. had females. David Koresh. David Koresh. It was that it? Waco. I Waco. Think so. Waco. David yeah, Koresh. Waco says, yeah, yeah. That, man, they <laughs> boy, they bombed all them niggas, man. They give a fuck. Women, children, everything. The government don't give a fuck. When you against them, you against them, man. They're gonna eliminate your ass, period. So at the end of the day, man, um, I think that on a good note, I think that this shit is purposely being segregated and separated. Even though segregation ain't here, it's still racial division. And it's been purposely done because if we unite, America got a problem, the world got a problem. You know, speaking of like the unite. Look at the unity as far as the foods, the different type of cultures, the different type of shit that we got from everybody in America. Like, we could go eat Asian food. We could go eat Mediterranean food. We could go eat motherfucking Mexican food. We could go eat soul food, nigga. We could go eat, you know what I mean, like uh, Italian food. Like, we got all that shit right here because of the different dynamics that came to America. Everybody making money. You feel me? This was they big. This was... This was their biggest issue with George Jackson and Fred Hampton because George Jackson and Fred Hampton, they wasn't just talking about, whereas Elijah Muhammad and everybody was talking about black separatism, right? George Jackson and Fred Hampton, they was talking about uniting all the poor whites, the poor Mexicans with the blacks. Fred Hampton had the support of the poor whites in 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 the poor, you know what I'm saying? In in people had, outside of race, right? They had the Rainbow Coalition, my nigga. Yeah, and and, yeah. and, and just like just George Jackson was on the same shit behind the walls. He wasn't just on the like, he was he was talking about. Oh, he was like on all the convicts. And the convicts need to raise up against against the pigs. You know what I mean? He had that kind of respect you know what i mean that's why they that's why they was dangerous because they because they had a real case to make and they was getting real fanfare on that see with huey and all them see they can set they can isolate them they can play them against one one side or other but when you got motherfuckers that's uniting both sides to go against a common enemy you know what i'm saying that motherfucker dangerous. <laughs> that motherfucker dangerous. That, that's, yes. a, that's the key. That, that's the key to, to, to solving America's problems. There's too much division out here. You know, then you go out the country and then everybody's unified because they go to their own, you know, the politics. They go to their own race. They over here, they own, you know, boom. But they come to America, you're free. But you're not free because you put against each other as soon as you come over to this motherfucker. They tell you that black people are, are less than human. They tell you that you gotta vote for this motherfucker. If you don't, if you don't know these presidents or something, you can't get your pass. I mean, your green card. Like they ask you all the presidential shit. Who you gonna vote for? Who you gonna do this before they even let you in the country? Period. You can't be a radical. You can't be like I don't disagree with this. So you gotta be like kind of conditioned, right? So you conditioned to go against us. Why unify with us? But come to our neighborhood and plant your seed, which is your store, which is your wash house, which is your fucking uh your restaurant, whatever you plant, but it's right in the middle of the hood. We don't have these restaurants in Beverly Hills, Westwood, uh, uh, fucking uh, uh, Calabasas. You know what I mean? They are right smack dead in Inglewood. You know what I mean? Glendale, all this shit in the hood, nigga, in the middle of the shit where they could get money, right next to a church, right next, but you go to Calabasas, it's rolls, nigga, like you're a farmland. You don't see no church, you don't see no liquor store next to each other you'll see a motherfucking grocery a motherfucking uh, a swap meet it's straight cleared out so it's by fucking design bro not only are they separating us they're milking us my nigga they put the same motherfucker in that said hey don't like black people but hey go have a store in a black people neighborhood that's why you got hurry up and buy just that and shit with the asian people sometimes and you know what i mean because they come in with the attitude that black people is the enemy. They don't tell the white guy to hurry up and buy. You seen the same movie on uh, Don't Be a Menace. 
why they telling the, the black dude hurry up and buy the white nigga still and everything. He's still a hella shit. They like, hey, bye. They hella nice to the white guy and the black nigga ain't stole nothing. You know what I mean? The white guy walked out with hella shit. Period. Because it's program. Period. So, you know, I think the unification will fuck up everybody. You know, you like um what? Hey, you know what? It's a reason why they say the revolution. It ain't that the revolution won't be televised. It can't be televised. Because if you televise the revolution, then, you know, all you're doing is waking up a giant and they'll find a way to thwart it. That's why when niggas get to talking all this mass unity and get to talking all their plans and shit, I stay away from them kind of conversations, my nigga, because, you know what I'm saying, it's always somebody within that circle, my nigga, that's a Cointel Pro plant. It's going to be there to throw some bullshit in the, in the middle of it to sow dissension in the, in the, in the defeat the whole purpose. That's just how that's how they destroyed the Panthers to begin with. So what I'm getting at is that when it comes to unity, you, that's something you that's something you got to walk. You got to you got to walk that shit. You know what I mean? Like, you know how like you and I, yuck, East Oakland, West Oakland, you know what I'm saying? And whatnot. We ain't talking about uniform we ain't talking about okay i fuck with the village you fuck with ghost damn we showing it we doing it we already in the habit of doing it so it ain't something that we got to sit down and be talking about all we got to do is just you know what i'm saying just add to our script in this you know what i mean in this bill for near it, it it's not a it's not a something you that sit down with a motherfucking clipboard and just script i mean it has to be a way of life if it's not in you, you're not going to be able to do it. Period. No, but, no and, and what you're saying, I absolutely agree. But it it, it goes back to the tribes, the 12 tribes. Right. All these different people are part of the 12 tribes. We the tribe of Judah. The Asians is a tribe. The, the Latins is a tribe. You know what I mean? Like all of us, the, Ar the Arabs is a tribe. The Indians is a tribe. Like all these people are tribes, bro. And then once we realize that, that we all up under the same shit and they all like, you know, the, the people, you know, small hats get the most credit, but we all part of that tribe. We it, It's 12 tribes. It's not just that one tribe that everybody's promoting. It's other tribes. It's 11 more. So once motherfuckers get in tune and know that y'all all part of the same shit, it's like, like, come on, man. Y'all all the tribes, like all y'all the tribes. You know, period. Like once once y'all unify, like like the, the the other tribe doing, the other tribe done unified, and they get billions of dollars sent from America every year. Nigga, it's it's eleven more other tribes who need to be a part of that. Once we figure that out, we good money. Period. We we a part of that tribe. We the tribe. The black the black tribe is the Judah. We the we are the the Judah tribe. I ain't gonna say our that. problem is that our problem is that we don't understand that we need alliance. Everybody else, everybody has established alliances with others except for us. We're the only ones to isolate ourselves. You know what I'm saying? The Mexicans can unite with Mexico and go back to Mexico. The Europeans can unite with Europe and go back to Europe. The Chinese, can, the Americans can unite with China and so on and so forth. We the ones that's over here got a stigma against Africa. And vice no, versa. no, 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 Africa got a stigma against us, I'm, I'm, but no, no, but no, hear what I'm saying, yep, the, the, the same way, let you in. I'm, I'm about to use the bathroom right quick, talk your shit, yeah, right. yeah, the same way that it was a program against using us against Africa, it was the same program that they used, the Europeans used to turn them against us, man. You know what I'm saying? They went to it's the same shit, bro. We it's the same instigators that played us against each other throughout history, bro. You know what I'm saying? If we come from Africa, how can Africa naturally be against us? It was a program. Why do you think in these textbooks, you know what I'm saying? We see the worst parts of Africa. We see the jungle, you know what I'm saying, with the pestilence and all that shit. Even though that's just a small percentage of Africa. You know what I'm saying? But yet, every major nation in the world is over there plundering in Africa for all their natural resources. But they had you and I thinking that Africa is the worst place in the world to be at. But yet, they're over there. And vice versa, you know what I'm saying? 
No, they, it, you know, it was an institutionalized program to turn them against us as well. They go both ways. It's a common, it's a common instigator in that if we, we, we really look at the history. So yeah, those things may be true. You know what I'm saying? There was mis is people misled on both sides, but the biggest thing is the common instigator. It was the program to turn us against each other. Just imagine if our people over here was able to these phones we talking on, do you know that we wouldn't be able to talk on these phones if it wasn't for certain minerals that they find over there in the African continent? No, if it wasn't for a black guy. Black guy created yeah. a telephone. Right, but I'm saying... The but, 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 telephone was created by a black man. I understood. Let's not... Let, let, but, but those like, minerals come like from the African continent. Like lower than Earth, but at the end of the day, everybody got tributes. Everybody brings shit. Every culture got their own shit they brought to the table. It's like I talked about the foods. Now, not only in Africa, you got pyramids. You got pyramids in Mexico. You got pyramids all over the world, period, because we all was one culture. We all shared the same technology, same mathematics, uh, uh, arch uh, you know what I mean, architect, whatever, the whole shit. You know what I mean? Whatever it was, the masonry type of shit, whatever it was, everybody was unified and doing their own shit. This culture got that. This culture got that. That's why the Bible uh, or, or whatever, the, not, not, I ain't going to even say the Bible, but the Jesus story is told in every fucking religion, not just, you know, Baptist or, you know, Catholic. It's told in every religion because it's the same story passed down with a different splash on it. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, Unifying, you know what I mean? Unifying this shit, not separating it. Everybody put their splash on it because it's coming from this race. They splash on it. That race, they splash on it. Instead of like, yo, this is just what happened. We ain't got to change it to be favored to towards our race. We ain't got to change it to be favored towards our race. This is just it. And we all unify and just worship this. You know what I mean? Not, oh, this is a prophet. Nah, nah, that was a prophet. No, this is the mother. No, that's the life. No, nah, that's the separation. The first separation came from religion, my nigga. That was the first separation. I'm going to keep it a buck. Religion separated us first. And then it became the the, the Willie Lynch, it became the Willie Lynch shit, rich against the poor, light against the black, uh, 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 house nigga against the, the field nigga, you know what I mean? Mama against the daughter. And all that shit is going down right now period. But before that, it was religion, Baptist, a uh, 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 fucking more, I mean, not more, but uh, whatever it is, Muslim, not not to be disrespectful. Please forgive me, guys. No, you're right. But, but, you're right. But That's other, what they had to do over here. Religions, like the boot, like that. Come on, I can't even name them all because like, I'm kind of, you That's know, what that's what they had to do over here in order to establish this country. But those same religions unify people over there in the motherland of these religions. You know what I'm saying? You have a melting pot over there that way you seeing very to little to no conflict divided, most of the man. time over here. Cross, but but over cross, here, they, over they over crusade, here, it was crusading about that cross, my nigga. It was crusading over here. in Africa. All that shit that they raided from Africa was in Rome, and then they took the shit from the Vatican. All that shit, like they got a black Jesus and a black uh, uh, a black uh, a Madonna, a black Mary in the Vatican in German. They know you see statues of the black Madonna and the black Jesus. You see it. They know the history. They took the history and then rewrote the shit and painted the picture as the different color. That's, That's the separate. Fact. That's the fact. That's the separate. That's I've been fact. over there in Germany. I've seen the black Madonna and the black Jesus. On statues out there in Germany, go to the, the Vatican. Anybody go to the Vatican? Go see the Black Madonna. Go see the Black Jesus. That statue, black, not white, not black. Come on, man, they hide shit. And that's, it. bro. If if they get if if we all united, they have no fucking power, bro. They keep us divided, keep us funking against each other, keep us warring against each other. He was worried about each other, not worried about them. They could pull every motherfucking banana tailpipe they want to pull. Well, well, we got to figure out who the we is, right? Because in the history of the world, there's never been no such thing as pan unity. You know what I'm saying? 
unity is only happened from amongst uh, a, a, a group of people who had common interests. Like, like the, you hear of the Pan-Africanist movement. In the history of mankind, there's never been no such thing as Pan-Africanism because throughout African history, African tribes always went to war against each other. Throughout European history, European tribes warred against each other. Throughout Chinese history, Chinese tribes went to war against each other. Japanese, so on and so forth. The Aztecs, Mexico, the Indian tribes, you know what I'm saying? The Paiutes against the or, or Choctaw. It's been war and strife. There's never been no such thing of pan unity. That is an idea. You know what I'm saying? No, now the oppressed people, you know what I'm saying, can unite. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's a possibility. But to just well, think. I'm, I'm just talking about the, the common denominator. Like you just said, all types of wars that happen within they, their own culture, within their politics. That's like Bloods and Crips. That's your own politics. I'm talking about when you get to the pen, when the Bloods and the Crips know they outnumbered and they got to team up. The same shit in America, we outnumbered. We need to fucking team up. Right? Same shit. That's all I'm saying, my nigga. We that's are a, no, that's a fact. the government and the motherfucking powers that be. The motherfuckers that run the president. That nigga is asleep. It's somebody that control and put the motherfucking teleprompter what this nigga need to say. Motherfucker got him on the schedule, what they need him to do. It's all a puppet shit, puppet master. Now, when you got puppet master controlling the government, controlling finances, controlling everything about this motherfucker, we need to team up like we in the joint. And like, we got to do, you, you feel me? But you know how it happened in the joint and or any other place where where such a thing, what you calling for, works? It happens when people understand their role and is educated on their role. You know what I'm saying? Everybody is not chiefs. You have to have you have to have leaders. Just you have like to have a nigga figures, in the and pen and you want to have people. Like, hold on, just like a nigga in the pen could drop his flag and, and go back to back with a blood and hear crip over survival. We could do the same fucking thing because right now it's about fucking survival, nigga. They they man, they running the foo foo on us, my nigga. Why we over here worried about sports and shit? They passing laws to fuck us up, my nigga. Period. Nigga, they opening the border up, all types of fitting all, all types of people coming through this motherfucker while we over here chilling, nigga. Like, it's some shit going down. We got a unit of truckers. They they banning shit, even though I don't want them to do nothing because against New York. We have too many. I don't want them to do nothing against New York, but they got to get rid the of them forces. Of, we we got to get you. We got we got to, for one, it's things that we have to do in order to make that thing happen, though, yeah. I mean, they can't be ignored, bro. You got to get rid of them distractions. Bro, all the things that they get away that. The only, the only, the two times I seen motherfucking unity was 9 11 and the pandemic. Niggas was extra nice and extra unified in the pandemic because you needed one another. If you didn't have no water, nigga, if you didn't have no toilet tissue, you might need to knock on the neighbor door and say, hey, I need some toilet tissue, my nigga. <laughs> like, so everybody's so extra how? Really and extra unified. They were forced to. They were forced to, yep. It was no choice. It was forced. It was a matter of survival. They were forced to. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's the, the, the time when people tend to come together is when there's no other choice but to do it. Right now, it, 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 probably, it, it probably won't happen willingly because people, for the most part, the people that we would need to get it done don't feel like it's urgent enough for them to do that. They don't feel like it's important enough for them to do that. They feel like, oh, yeah, well, they not getting money, but I am. I'm taken care of. They might not be, but I'm taken care of. You know what I mean? Yeah. When we we paying American tax dollars for a war that we ain't got shit to do with, when we paying American tax dollars for a country that we ain't got shit to do with, sending billions of dollars a year, Sending a hundred some billion or eighty, whatever the fuck the number is, to a war that we have not, they have not won yet. Sending billions of dollars for some shit we ain't got nothing to do with, but still we got the biggest homeless rate in the fucking world. Nobody got the homeless disaster that America got, but we could send billions of dollars to people for war, but we can't feed the poor. That's what Pac said. We got money for war, but can't feed the poor. That's why Pac was the biggest nigga and the best nigga to ever do it. They talk about, oh, this nigga. No, no, Pac. He said real shit that really made sense. I don't give a fuck about your metaphor. 
talk about real shit. You got money for war but can't feed the poor. That shit resonates to this day. And we paying for that shit. So once everybody get tired of paying for that shit, you're going to unify like, nah, I don't want to pay for no fucking war. I ain't got nothing to do with it. I don't want to pay for another country problems. And we got problems in our own fucking country. That's why Trump talking about America first. Period. What are the other country? Like, what are they sending money to us? We got homeless. What are they commercials about? Like, remember we have commercials about Africa? Like, hey, send a, send a dollar a day and you can help this one. We got homeless out here. Where's the commercials in Europe? All the commercials and in, in, in fucking everywhere else in the world about our homeless. Hey, give a give a. I got well, a the day reason day. that is because now, those no, are no, ploys, no. yep. Yeah. Yeah. Those are ploys. Five dollars a day, you can help this homeless person in a tent on motherfucking <laughs> Venice Beach or on motherfucking Skid Row. Give ten dollars a day, you can help this homeless person downtown Oakland. They don't right. have commercials, but we got commercials yeah. about them. Every fucking country, we gotta do You're right. But those We're, are ploys, though. Commercials, like why we gotta help everybody? Nobody helping us but China. The, we owe China those are ploys. The ploys, though, yeah. Them, them, them things. Them things are ploys. Do you know that they got a commercial talking about feed the poor Jews of Israel? <laughs> Can you believe that they got a commercial on that? These motherfuckers got all the money in the world, but yet they got a commercial that's talking about poor Jews is over there in Israel starving. When y'all got all the motherfucking money in the world, y'all run all the shit, but, but yet they pay. It's a ploy. It's a, it, it's a ploy that's part of the script. You know saying, what I'm saying? Bro, we could give money to everybody else, but we are suffering here. That should make everybody unite. Because all you niggas, I don't give a fuck what race, I don't give a fuck what religion, I don't give a fuck what part you from, I don't give, you all paying for this shit. Everybody should feel violated. That should make niggas unite like we want some shit to go down right. And I don't give a fuck. It could be the best of both peoples, but I want Trump. I want a nigga that stand on business, a nigga with some nuts, no Frank Ocean, a nigga that, that, that's, that's fucking like a charismatic, you know what I mean, talk shit. Clown niggas, roast niggas all day, but stern on shit and got billions of dollars. I want a rich motherfucker in there that say, I don't need your White House money. I'm not staying there. I'm staying at Marcielago, whatever the fucking compound, a fucking big ass shitty guy, whatever he got. I'm staying at the Marcy thing. I don't need to stay at the White House. Nigga, I'm golfing, nigga. And I'm doing interviews every motherfucking day. He, don't, yeah, don't, time don't, to golf. Don't, none of them motherfuckers, no, none of them Yo, represent see, our Biden. interests. Man. So I don't care. I don't care who it is. Where the fuck is Biden, Pam? Trump, Biden, Trump, don't none of them represent our interests, man. I don't give a they fuck. Represent I, have, I want a nigga that could stop the war. Trump could stop the Russia shit. Trump and the other nigga Putin is good money. Trump and Korea, Trump is good with all them niggas. He can shut all this shit down. That crippled nigga is being puzzled and controlled so he could cause all this conflict, my nigga. That's why he got the bricks going down. You got all these different nations going against the motherfucking UN, all that shit. And they made their own shit called BRICS. That's nigga the, the B, the, F, the R, the I, the C, the K, and the S. All them countries. Name the countries that, and they all together, nigga. Period. And what, where's, what's, what do the R stand for in that, in that BR? Russia, right? What do the I stand for? What do the C stand for? China, right? Now you know where we had it, right? What do the I stand for? India, right? Okay, now we now we going somewhere. They got their own shit, my nigga. What the S stand for? Saudi Arabia. So what, what are we going? They all gathered up together like, fuck the UN, fuck America. We doing this. We're not even a fuck your dollar bill. This was going down under our nose. Under this sleepy ass nigga. When Trump did that, when Trump was here, it wasn't nothing. We never heard of BRICS when Trump was in office. Even Obama in office, we never heard of BRICS. Fuck it, give them, it up. Them, them things, yeah, them things just don't office. happen overnight. Even that shit been in Bush effect for a lot office. of years. Even when both of the Bushes was in office, we never heard of BRICS. We that, never heard that of shit been in effect. Go ahead. It's been in effect for a lot of years. Yeah. It don't just happen. It's just, you know what I mean? That shit been in the makings for a lot of years. It's just that from president to president, they kick shit down the down down the down the hill for another time. But that shit been in been in the effect, bro. That 
that shit that just happened on the Biden watch. That shit is some you know, I mean, them alliances and them things has been building throughout the years, man. You know what I'm saying? Like this this animal being building throughout time. You know what I mean? Like, you know, for one, one thing about it, the, 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 the seat of the president in the United States is just a figurehead. He don't make he it's only a select few decisions that a president can make on his own. Outside of that, any major decision he make has to go through a, a Congress and the Senate. So this government is not oblivious to whatever the alliances is. It's a lot of people that, that, that watch. The president is surrounded by advisors, bro, that make it their business to know what the fuck is happening in the world. You know what I'm saying? So Joe Biden, I mean, he's, he's a convenient scapegoat, but no, nah, I mean, I don't buy it. They know it. This government knows what the fuck has been going on outside the borders before Biden even went in office. So it ain't just him. It's both sides. They playing the game on the people, man. So I don't I don't know on either side. I think both of them stand accused. Hey, like I said, it's the, it's the best of both evils, man. But I'd rather have Trump in there than that sleepy nigga. That's all I'm saying, man. Period. A nigga with relationships with all them people, no Frank Ocean. <laughs> but look, 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 look at this nigga wife compared to that nigga wife, man. That nigga wife, Sleepy Joe, his wife look like she about to croak along with him. This nigga got Melinda, Melinda, what, what's her name? M M Melania Trump, he got the little young bitch. Man, a baddie. This is one of the baddest <laughs> first ladies we ever had, <laughs> my nigga. Besides Michelle, okay, her and Melania, like, they the two top, right? Yeah, well. Who better, who better than them two? I mean, for, I mean, for a four time John F. Kennedy wife John was a bad little bitch. A, that's the third one. Okay, cool. But she yeah. can't fuck with them two. I'm sorry. She nah. Yeah. Nice runner up. Nah, 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 I mean, you know, I mean, you know, now, Michelle had, Obama. Had, Michelle, had, like, Michelle Obama take the cake, in my opinion. She takes the cake, man. And and then Trump wife next, right? Okay, cool. And then you got Kennedy Trump, Kennedy wife next. Okay. The two the three baddest wives in the game, champagne. Now who got and, the baddest wife right now? As president, you know candidate that's running trump I mean, yeah i look at it like this if trump getting off his main that's just an, that's just an indictment on the fact of how corrupt this government is this nigga being convicted of several felonies my nigga if that would have been me and you we'd never make it in the office one you couldn't have a better an example and regardless one one felony in addition to everything else this nigga did one of those things, man, would have disqualified me or you from running for office, my nigga. If 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 any of things would have been alleged against us, I don't care how cool or how much he make motherfuckers laugh. You know what I'm saying? That's what a comedian. That's what they do. That 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 comedy is smoking mirrors that distract you from the bigger from from the from the from the, from the game that they pulling over your eyes, right? You know what I'm saying? But the thing is, is that that nigga getting away with shit. I, w I would be scared as death if this nigga is able to make it in the office for everything. In addition to that, you know what I'm saying? This nigga just influenced motherfuckers to run up on the United States uh, to, to take over the motherfucking uh, that, that, that ride that happened at the state capitol. Yeah, if those was black people, get, nigga, get, that, it, it would have been a blood. It would have been a bloodbath, my nigga, if those were black that. people. We know that. We know this, that. So this hey. is what I'm saying. But listen, listen, listen. Why are you mad about what they do? They're because not mad about what we do. I'm, I, I'm not mad about it. I'm just it's, saying it's, I look, can't. Look, look. It's, it's, that's it's white supremacy. Look, look. That's white supremacy at its height. Well, look, look. Let me see. Let me show you what what was contributing. Not not to cut it off, but um, is the KKK mad at drill music? The niggas rappers killing each other. I'll wait. Why not? Because we doing a job for them. They don't. They can't be mad. So why are we mad? If we like feel the same way, they doing our job for us. They went up there. I'm not. It, it, it ain't. It ain't that I'm mad. It's just that yeah, I don't feel like. I, 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 that's why the white. That's why the white. It ain't that I'm mad. mad. I, I, I will never be because because we have people saying that Trump is for us. How in the hell does that help us? How in the hell that? How in the hell that Trump getting in office? How does that bode well for black people? 
I want to ask you the, the, the question. Because Brown people, how does that help us? All right, when did you say that when a nigga was rapping about Trump? I'm in the Trump Towers hollering with Jay Z. He was talking about me, me at Trump Towers. When did the nigga not, say that when I, niggas I'm was not a fan of that? I got money. Like I got I, Trump. I'm ball like, like when did I, nigga I, got when did what you just said happen when niggas was rapping about Donald Trump? Let me hear what you that mean. don't that that don't have nothing to do with me. <laughs> it don't change my opinion. That's the you niggas. Had that same opinion when niggas was rapping about Donald Trump. Before he became the president, when he was just the well, ball well, nigga, with the Trump nigga, and the Trump niggas been, niggas been glorifying niggas that been oppressing us. Niggas glorify the mob even though they kill a lot of niggas and use a lot of niggas. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. You came back. Well, you I mean, you know what I mean? So, I mean, what's the difference? Like, like that's niggas been one. doing that. Niggas glorify Hitler, Mussolini, and all these niggas. You know what I'm saying? You know, they, they, they made a career out of killing niggas, bro. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, that's no. a good one. You fuck me up with that one. All right, I'm gonna shut my ass up. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hit him. Like, All right, man. I'm gonna shut my ass up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just I'm, just, I'm just saying, though. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, nigga forgot about Mussolini. Nigga said Mussolini. No. I I see, niggas, like, see, niggas is captive. Niggas is captivated by the superficial part of Trump. You know what I'm saying? They're not captivated by the part. They're not educated on the fact of in order the shit that that nigga did in order to get there, my nigga was uh I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna throw, the, I'm throw out you out too. Let me throw invite, last invite, because niggas talking about political shit, which we never do on Young Now TV. So all your political niggas and religious people, I'm just talking about unification, but we done got to the nation and, and the present presidentification. <laughs> but continue, my nigga. <laughs> that nigga said a presidentification, my nigga. That <laughs> nigga. Word. That nigga word. A presidentification. The yuck mouth word of the day is presidentification, my nigga. Okay, man, the presidentification. Got it out. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the elective official <laughs> debate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I just, it's, it is what it is. I just. I'm just not one of them that feel like Trump is is a nigga that's for me, man. I don't feel you like know? I don't feel like none of these motherfuckers is for me, man. Period. No, they not. They not. But I want a nigga that's gonna make a nigga scared that we gonna drop a nuke on their ass. I want a nigga that don't that make them say, "Hey, I ain't playing with that crazy nigga." I want I want a nigga that disrespect the queen like I ain't bowing to you. I'm not shaking like you see what he did to the queen, my nigga. He was. <laughs> Hell yeah. Come on, hey, man. Hey, hey. Like bow down, kiss the ring. That nigga didn't do none of that. Trump was like, yeah, whatever, little bitch. Excuse my language. Hey, hey. Excuse my language. Hey, hey. Hey. To the queen. But that's how it, that's what it looked like he said to me. No Frank, no, hey. no disrespect. And Hey, God they and hey, they up and God they up and moving you. around here. They up and moving around here, yuck. So I gotta run, bro. But um, right, thank right, you for mile, the tap nigga. in, big bro. One mile, my nigga. One mile, man. Thanks for the cash out, bro. Yada that. Anton Daniels. Anton, man, what we doing, Playboy? What up, y'all? What's happening, big boy? Early morning, man. I see. I was about to use your footage, man, for the town business shit, man, when you had the uh the, the mayor and shit got attacked today, man. Oh yeah, you can use whatever you want, man. I don't care. I'm not doing that, bro. I don't I, I respect your shit, but I'm letting you know no, I you can use it. In. I you, when you, when you use it, when you use it, it uh it big me up. So I don't care if people use the footage, bro. Okay, so we tapping in on this Trump shit, man. Like you, you a real Trump supporter, man. So I want to hear what you guys say about this, bro. I um. So so what's the question specifically? Give me give me the question so you can throw me the alley you. Right. Basically, I was saying that I need a president in there with nuts a president that they're afraid of a president that can end these wars so i'm like yeah. okay i'm trump my other nigga was like man hey fuck trump fuck biden they both lie they both got it i mean they like who we niggas, got niggas. It's both evils you know what i mean so who you gonna choose a nigga that's gonna fall asleep or a nigga that's gonna threaten to drop the bomb like nigga i will bomb your ass nigga yeah. and i don't give a fuck a nigga that disrespected the queen like hey little bitch i don't give a fuck i ain't bound down to nothing like yeah. that I need a president like that. I'm sorry. I need a yeah. Real I'm, I'm a um. I'm a heavy Trump supporter. Uh, I wasn't at first, but let let me start off by saying this. 
why black people always looking for somebody to save them? I seen what the, my man said that was up here last. And he like, Trump ain't going to save. Nigga, save yourself. It ain't about saving black people. It's about giving people the best opportunity to succeed. When you paying attention to what's happening right now, he was, he didn't leave the borders open. He had motherfuckers getting up out of here. You know what I'm saying? When it came to immigration and his short amount of time that he was in office, he renegotiated the North American free trade agreement that then employed and, and, and gave more power to American workers for the people, for the blue collar jobs. That was, you know what I'm saying? That, that, that we depend on every single day. He, he gave more money than any president in history to the HBCUs, even though black people wasn't fucking with him. He, he levied tariffs against China, which Biden then leaned on because we in a semiconductor chip battle, which is why we given so much money to, to Ukraine and a proxy war to Israel and to Taiwan. We don't talk about Taiwan, but Taiwan is the is the country that uh, China is really trying to take over because we in the war. If you know anything about ASML, ASML is the company that actually developed the machinery that puts together the semiconductor chips that we passed the CHIPS Act. We passed the CHIPS Act. Biden passed the CHIPS Act, and he's given more money to semiconductor chip companies, which now you see companies like NVIDIA. They work over $2 trillion. It's one of the biggest companies in the United States of America so that we can start manufacturing more chips here because we're in a trade war and we're in a chips war with China. Right. That's why we fighting over Taiwan. That's why that, one of the reasons why they leaving the border open. Right. When you see what the fuck is happening in Chicago, New York, Boston, they hiding immigrants inside of the airport in Boston, Atlanta. This is shit. We, we got the we got Texas having to go to war with the federal government in order to be able to secure the borders. We got migrants fucking brawling and getting out on bail where black people never would have been able to do that shit in New York. It's crime running rampant. The cities is fucking going down the drain. All of these governors, these blue governors that they leveraged in order to get Trump out of office during the pandemic is supporting this. And they don't even like it. You've seen fucking Eric Mays, who was I'm mean, not Eric Mays, uh, Eric Adams um, over in New York, the mayor of New York, fucking catching cases because he wasn't supporting what was going on um, with the migrant crisis. All across the board, he's just a better president. Listen, I don't give a fuck about how many chicks you fucked. I'm not trying to dick police that nigga. I don't care about, you know what I'm saying, all of this other stuff. The only thing I care about is your policies. I look at the policies and I look at what you did in the short amount of time that you was in office. Yo, it's not about saving black people. It's about doing the thing that's in the best interest for most people. And when you look at the statistics, when you look at the policy, when you look at the fuck, when you look at Joe Biden and he not even being able to remember half the stuff that he's doing. And then you look at who behind him and Kamala Harris, who's going to be running the country. Kamala Harris was the person that they tagged as the border czar. She was supposed to be the one that stopped what happened with, as far as the flow of migrants into the country. They're not doing none of that. They leveraging y'all and they don't even have to appeal to black people. Biden didn't even want to meet with y'all when Ice Cube came up with the platinum plan. They said, yeah, we're going to come and kick it with y'all later. And they they fucking forgot about y'all at the very least. At the very least, Trump was willing to meet with y'all. He gave more money to HBCUs. He, he he renegotiated the North American Free Trade Agreement. He passed policy. He had more jobs. The economy was fucking booming. I don't know what more y'all want from him. And he had all of the legislative branches as far as Congress and the House of Representatives and the Senate against him. And he still was doing shit. All Biden got to do is promise y'all a couple dollars. Hey, vote Democrat, whatever, so on and so forth. And again, it's not even about liking Trump because I don't agree 100 percent with anybody. But if you're trying to name me a better president in my lifetime, including Obama, I ain't seen one. I ain't seen one. So when all of these people get into their emotions, then get the fuck out of your emotions and start looking at policy. Start looking at inflation. Inflation over the last four years has been at an all time high. Niggas can't even get housing no more. You know what I'm saying? So people got to step outside of their emotions, bro. It's not about who can save you. And I'm not telling you who to vote for. But what I am telling you do, to do is to get educated before you vote. And when you start to pay attention, even what's happening on a local level, you more affected by what's happening in your city and on a local level than you are 
what's happening on a national level and they the ones that actually influence who's in office and what happens across the country i see what's happening in uh in oakland with uh what's her name shane tile the mayor man they protesting trying to get her the fuck up out of there it's get her ass the fuck up out of here it's messed up, bro. It's absolutely messed up. So you 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 pointed out too. She said, "What they gonna have supervisors, uh, scouts, <laughs> go talk to people?" Yeah, bro. She like they got three point five million, three point eight million dollars that they basically allocating to to get peace officers. What the fuck is that? I think, I think the nigga. I think one of the peace officers was the nigga that was funking with the nigga that tried to beat the nigga up the little street. <laughs> it's crazy, bro. It's cra- and now they and now what they doing is. One of the things that's beneficial for the migrant crisis is that re- they're replacing your vote. So what Obama did while they, he was they, they, they making it for if they, yep. if they get their green card, if they get a job, they could vote. Yep. And and so now what Obama did when he was in office was he leveraged the alphabet community to make sure that they basically created a new voter class so that they can ensure power and stay and stay in office. And that's the same thing that they doing. You know what I'm saying? Today with migrants, they're replacing people and they don't even have to come to black people no more and give y'all nothing. They don't even have to petition for your vote. They don't even have to ask you for anything in any community because they already know where y'all going to vote. So, you know what I'm saying? When you see the the eight, eight percent voter turnout rate in Houston for their mayor, when you see the the five percent voter turnout rate in Chicago, people get what they vote for and then they looking for a savior. Ain't nobody coming to save you. It ain't about a savior. That shit is over, bro. They need to they need to get out of their emotions, bro. When we start when we start paying attention to people based off of what their wife is doing. And I don't give a fuck about what wife what, what Trump wife is doing, man. I care about the policies. I only care about opportunities. I care about whether or not I can move to a city and I got to get 50% of my paycheck up just to pay in taxes for them to give to migrants and they still at a deficit. So a lot of people just need to get out of their emotions, bro. It's if somebody can give me some insight as to what he did wrong when he was in office, as far as his policies, then I'll pay attention. But until then, people just talking out of emotion, bro. That's all. I think, I think people, you know, think, yo, great, great, great dialogue. Great, great plain land, bro. You talk your shit and you absolutely right. Not to be cussing and shit, but I'm a nigga from the field, nigga from Oakland and yeah. you're from Detroit. But, um, Trump, want to bring jobs back to america like you from detroit right y'all yeah. from the, the land where all the all the Mo- motor city right yep. so yep. you got gmc out there all them factories closed down because the shit moved to what overseas right the yeah China. they all they all moved to to overseas and you know who did that you know who spearheaded that clinton see clinton was the one that opened up um you know for us to be able to move jobs overseas and it basically wiped out all manufacturing inside of the U.S. We don't make nothing in this country now. The only, only thing that only we Tesla. Is, only yeah, Tesla. We, we only and they trying to they trying to fuck they got, that. They got this shit in China too, but yep. and Germany. But Tesla, you know, definitely. But at the end of the day, man, Trump trying to bring jobs back. He talking about all the factories got to be here. He like mandating shit. Like as soon as I come in, I'm mandating this. Whoop whoop this. Whoop, whoop, yeah. that migrants is going to be the biggest deportation whoop, whoop, whoop. i'm handling i'm looking out for america bro yeah you feel me like i want a president that's going to look out for us like i was saying before you came on like tupac i know you hate gangster rap but tupac, no i don't hate it i don't hate it i just you, uh, you don't fuck with it but do you no fuck I, with I, it? I fuck with it because i'm influenced by it too it's just that i don't I don't think that people can separate, you know, what they influenced by, by their decisions. Even if you look at motherfuckers that's in the chat right now, they, they not actually talking a real content. You know what I'm saying? They're not really saying no really real things as to why you should or shouldn't do what you're supposed to do. No, See, like, for example, you, you, you have logic, right? You make your decisions based off of common sense, logic, policy. You know what I'm saying? You look to understand stuff. A lot of us is just influenced by shit and people don't really, even when you think about rap, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times people not really paying attention to what is being communicated. They just doing it because it feel good. And it's a difference. Right. So I'm glad you said that because back in our day, you know, it was a message. You know what I mean? Like you, you, you say you was born in what? 82, 82, 
82, boom. You born in 82, right? So boom, you come from like you young, you seen the beginning of rap to what it is right now. So you've yeah. seen the message of rap to what it is right now. So Pac had a message. And to relate to what I'm talking talking about, he said, they got money for war, but can't feed the poor. Right. How do we got so much money to send to Ukraine to send all these other countries? You got commercials about, hey, feed this baby, give them a dollar a month. But we mm-hmm. got homeless like encampments on the freeways in front of luxury condos and apartment buildings and you know what i mean like like in front of malls and shit like taking over america and we're not looking out and trying to make the homeless like we got the migrants in hotels instead of the homeless like we clearing out schools in new york you know what yep. i mean and putting the migrants in instead of the homeless so yep. my That's thing true. is this like, like money for war, but can't feed the poor. But now you got money for voters too. So <laughs> let's go with that one, man. How do you feel about that Tupac lyric? Do you think that it's really happening nowadays? Did he speak that into existence? Yeah, but th- the thing is, I don't think that you'll ever solve for homelessness. I think that the biggest thing is that it's really opportunity. You know what I'm saying? When people don't have no hope, when they don't have no opportunities, um when they feel like it's nothing that they could ever do that's ever going to get them to a better space, that's when shit really start dying. You know what I'm saying? I see a lot of people living in a vans. Like, I, like I give you, I give you. No, 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 no. We can't, we can't blame Americans for their downfalls because you said it was, it was a, uh, what, what the shit called? When, when the inflation mm-hmm. so rent went up, rent went up, niggas start getting evicted. Niggas got like, let's talk about the pandemic when niggas couldn't go to work. You know what I mean? When niggas couldn't do their business. But part, but part of all of that is how we vote, though, yeah. Hold on, hold on. The most moms and pops, I'm talking about white, black, Mexican, all the franchises that's been here for 30 years, 40 years, got mm. shut down during the pandemic. So it's not just niggas that, that, that just, like, you're trying to say niggas fell off and not responsible. The pandemic shut everybody down. And mm. everybody licking their wounds from the pandemic, including the fucking homeless. The mm-hmm. people that couldn't afford they rent no more. The people that couldn't uh, have they shop no more. The people that couldn't have their business no more. They all got shut down, my nigga. You act like a pandemic didn't happen. Up yeah, under that. So but, that, that, uh, that, that crippled everybody, including you. You weren't making the money you was making. The, oh, no, I, made, no. wait, I made more money during the pandemic than all that. But all the podcasters and YouTube niggas blew up in the pandemic, not you. I'm talking about niggas that had to do a nine to five. You didn't blow up in the pandemic, bro. Period. So you can't blame that on just every civilian in America. That that was, I have that was to. A code. I got that to, yo. Yeah. Nigga, you are a YouTuber. If I a have to. Nine to five. I got to work at Starbucks. I got to work at a tech company. Or that got its own moms and pops grocery store, or moms and pops liquor store, moms and pop blunt shop, and they can't work. They can't go there. Because it's not a sanctioned spot. It got to be a hospital or, or mm. this, that, and the third to be open. You shut down. You still got you got commercial property. How much you got to pay a month? Seven thousand, ten thousand a month to get mm. that property. You got to put a hundred thousand up front. You got to pay the whole year, my nigga. So mm. you pay a whole year and like, come on, my nigga. Like you don't make no money. You you shut it down. Listen, yeah, you got to remember that every decision that we make is our own demise every single person that you see making the decisions on our behalf is people that we put in the office it's people that we put in there we put them in there to make the decisions on our back when you see what's happening with the migrant crisis listen when you look at chicago and you look at brandon johnson the mayor of chicago he not doing no shit any different than he already said that he was going to do before he got in there he told y'all what he was going to do He said that he was going to remove the the police officers out of the schools. He said that he was going to defund the safety officers and what the fuck was happening in the city. He said that he was going to do everything that he doing and the people voted him in there anyway. Now they mad at him. This is not new. You know what I'm saying? People ain't telling you nothing that they already said that they was going to do. They gave you what you wanted. So when you say, okay, well, it's not our fault. All these people that's in office is just a representation of the people that put them there. This is not something that we can blame on anybody except for yourself. 
When we don't hold each other accountable in our own neighborhoods, we then see who the people is that's robbing people. Listen, everybody know who robbing who. Everybody know who the, who the Jack boys are. We know who the Kia boys are. We know who the shooters are. We know who the dope dealers are. We know who everybody is in a place, but nobody is actually going to do anything about it. And they waiting on somebody to save them. That's what my man said before I even came up. He said, man, who going to, you know, such and such ain't going to save black people. I don't fuck with them. I always see what people say that ain't somebody going to do. And I never see what somebody is going to do. Right. I don't see nobody mentoring nobody. I don't see nobody advocating for nobody. People supported that shit. When they was getting them stimulus checks, they was up. <laughs> they didn't invest the money. They didn't take the money and then re-educate themselves. They didn't take the student loan pause that Trump actually implemented and start paying that shit off. They didn't do none of that. They never reinvested themselves, but then they want to say, okay, well, who is it that can come in and save me from myself? You. Ain't nobody coming to save you. Listen, man, I don't feel sorry for nobody, bro. Nobody. No, I, I agree. If, if I, we can I, get I, it out the mud from where we from, where you from, where I'm from, what the fuck? We figure I, that I, shit out. We adjust. I agree with you. Absolutely. And it's so much money available for niggas to do anything. And for, let me, let me get the screen. For, I'm in LA. So when the, when the dudes come over the border, they got instant taco stands everywhere. Like you come out the nightclub, you got the taco little, you buying motherfucking a taco, you buying hot dogs, they setting up shop. You buy flowers, you buy nigga, they got everything set up. Can't even speak English, but they setting up shop. So it's no motherfucking excuse. Nigga, you go to motherfucking Home Depot, you need your shit put together, nigga. They right there in front of that motherfucker. Blah, 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 blah. They got a truck. They got equipment. They were nigga. They could build a whole motherfucking pool in your backyard. Cause they did one for my nigga. Nigga, he did a Home Depot niggas. They put the pool whole oasis in this nigga backyard for the low ninety nine, my nigga. So yes, if they could do it, we could do it. You could make money in America without relying on the government. So I do agree with you with that. But with our government giving so much money to everybody else, I think we can fix the poor. I'm sorry, we didn't see Never so many African. Hold on, we didn't see so many African commercials. Hey, pay a dollar a month, you can feed this child. You see a big stomach little kid African with bees and shit and flies flying around him and shit, and we feel sorry and we want to send some money, right? Why mm -hmm. it ain't those commercials for America? You don't see a nigga in a tent on a meth pipe like <laughs> send this nigga twenty dollars a month. Are you can say. <laughs> <laughs> Why we not like come on? Oh, you can put him in a rehab. You can save his life. Like come on. Why we don't got? <laughs> you crazy, bro. I'm dead ass though. You was come insane. On. You want to show the most worth? No, fucking a white guy. A white guy with a meth pipe. Like whatever race, an Indian guy, Chinese guy, whatever. <laughs> You're insane, bro. It was I'm crazy. just saying, man, like, we got, come on, man. How much money? You know the politics. How much money we sent to motherfucking Ukraine? I'll wait. Um, we, we just agreed for another $60 billion. But you got to remember, though, you got to remember why we sending that money over there. We not sending the money because we like Ukraine. We sending the money over there because we fighting a war through Ukraine on Russia. We don't like Russia. And so because we don't like Russia and what they trying to do, especially when it comes to BRICS, which is basically China, Russia and other countries coming together in order to try to devalue the American dollar. We're fighting a proxy war. We not really saying, listen, that's just the optics of it. We saying, oh, man, you know, we got to protect the people. No, we fucking letting them die and we sending them money in order to continue to fight what the fuck is going on over in Russia. That's what's really happening. We're not fighting China through Taiwan. We want to prevent them from being able to catch up with the technologies and control the semiconductor chips. That's why we're sending money in order to get to Taiwan. We're not fucking fighting with this Israel shit. we fighting proxy wars everywhere because we got a vested interest in order to see it continue to make, our, make us money. We didn't go over into these countries in order to make sure that we save them. We bombed them so we can go and get their oil, right? Like we want to control what is happening. We want to control the trade routes. We want to control what's happening when it comes to manufacturing. We want to control what's happening when it comes to oil. We want to make sure that we have strategic alliances. 
we don't really care about Ukraine. We want we don't give a fuck about Russia. And so when you start to say say that and you start to put it together and you start to understand exactly what's happening, why are we bringing these migrants over here in, for, in the first place? Then you start to realize, oh, OK, wait a minute. So now I need to really start paying attention to policies a little bit differently because it's not about whether or not you homeless it's whether or not you actually add value into us. Most money that's created inside the United States of America, most millionaires are not inherited wealth. It's, that is a lie. That is the biggest lie that's ever been sold to the community. Most millionaires are new millionaires. Most people that create the most wealth inside of the United States of America is people that ultimately come over here and generate wealth that ultimately become millionaires. So when you start to look at the data and you start to look at the statistics, it's going to it's going to paint the picture for you of why. we Remember, you got to remember this. Yep. We don't make nothing over here no more. Right. So if we don't make anything, then how do we continue to generate wealth? Well, the way that you do that is through the money, is through the finances, it's the manipulation of the currency. Right. When you talk about money and finances, I'll give you an example. The way that they keep people poor is the banks continue to let y'all sell each other on the idea of getting a mortgage. All getting a mortgage is because they're going to say, well, um, home ownership is better than rent. Well, basically what they're telling you is that they want you to rent from the bank for the next 30 years with the possibility of getting your property to pay property taxes, pay insurance, pay maintenance, which continues to keep people working throughout the industry. And then you give in 30 years worth of interest, you're going to wind up paying for that property two to three times over by the time if you decide to pay it off and you decide not to go and sell it, right? So the idea is that we continue to generate, we continue to keep people working and in the rat race in order to generate more wealth that we then lend to other nations that then keep us at the top of the totem pole. It's all manipulation. But because people don't understand how the money works, they don't know why they're going homeless, which then puts them in a predicament. And they're not trying to necessarily care, cancel your student loans, but they're trying to maintain power. And so it's easy for them to sell you this narrative. It's easy for them to keep you distracted. It's easy for them to not, not have you read the policy, but then get you emotional about some killing or the police or George Floyd or abortion or some other shit that don't really affect your life because you got control of whether or not you even want to get, get a chick pregnant in the first place. The thing you really need to be paying attention to is the inflation of policies and the thing that's going to keep you poor. But we don't pay attention to that because we emotional. Whenever, whenever you can get a person emotional, you can get them to crash out and do some shit that they wouldn't normally do. We're not fighting a regular war. We're fighting proxy wars. Hey, man. Hey, shit. I can't, hey. I can't back that up with nothing, man. I think that everything you said is absolutely right. But I just think that we give so much money, even though we, it's like a big ass game of Monopoly, right? Mm -hmm. or, 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 or Battleship. We got our shit planted everywhere. So, like you say, Ukraine is our boom bop, our border within if we need to go to war right there. We ain't got to send no planes. We right there already. You know what yeah. I mean? So yeah. we, we strategically setting shit up to where we ain't got to be right there. We got bases everywhere. That's our base, period. Our, that, that The small hat shit that we fighting for over there, that's our base right there in the oil land. Yeah. Like you said, we want oil, right? What's the closest place over there? Right there, right where the small hats is at. So we locking that down. That's you know we got more oil on American soil than any place else, right? We got more oil under our own feet than any place. That's what Trump said. As soon as he get in the office, we get in the digging. <laughs> no Frank Ocean. He we said, do. We it's, it's a fact. Like it, people got to they got to do. I'm with the bullshit, right? I'm with the entertainment. I'm with the fuck shit. I'm with talking about fun shit and all of that. But we got to mix it in, and a lot of us is we. We just ignorant, like we voluntarily ignorant, meaning we just don't know, but we don't really want to know because it's not the thing that keep us entertained, bro. It's crazy. Now, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm a motherfucking, uh, uh, what this shit called? The, 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 the niggas that, that be the, 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 uh, the woke niggas, man. I look at all the controversial shit that, that people don't fuck with. You know what I mean? Period. But I believe that it's UFOs. I done seen a UFO, my nigga. I done seen a UFO, my nigga. Me, all my niggas. We came from the Shock G funeral in Tampa, and mm. we was at Waffle House, nigga. It was about 10 of us. That motherfucker UFO did donuts in front of us, my nigga. We all mm. motherfucker. You know what I mean? So I think that um, 
I'm a uh, what this shit called conspiracy theorist. So I, I look at all the points, my nigga. So absolutely, you absolutely right. It's a big. No, you ain't. You're not a conspiracy theorist, yuck. You a you a um, you're a realist. Like, yeah. can't nobody tell you that you didn't see what you didn't saw. That ain't no conspiracy. That's the truth. No, it, was, it was ten people with me. We all saw. Yeah. It. <laughs> Niggas had it on camera. Everything. So yeah. at, the end of, at the end of the day, man, um, I think what you're saying is absolutely right. But us being taxpayers, should we feel, should we agree with it? You know, that's what I'm saying. Our tax dollars paying for everything that we don't want our tax dollars to pay for. And we got shit in America like, come on, man, you out there in Michigan. I still got bad water. Yeah, Flint, dude, Detroit got the best water, some of the best water in the country, though. I'm talking about Flint. Flint and, and a couple other spots out there still got bad water. Uh, Mississippi got bad water. Correct. We could, go, we could go on, bro. Like, it, it, but why, why would they fix beyond, the water? Beyond the homeless. Why would beyond they fix the water, though? Yep. Why would they fix the water? Why the fuck you gonna send billions of dollars and not fix your water infrastructure in these cities and these countries? Ain't because right. the cities that that want the water fixed don't add value into what it is that we're doing on a on a global scale. So, if, in order for me to in order for me to be incentivized to do something, I got to be able to get a return on. Well, hold on, nigga, you out there in Michigan? You agree with mm -hmm. you agree with them not fixing the water? No, I'm not oh, agreeing I'm with not it. I'm, I'm I'm helping people to understand the mindset of why they doing what they doing. Okay, it don't have nothing to do with what I believe they should do. I believe that it's they what should. They, what they believe. Correct. Because right. whenever, right. whenever I'm trying to solve for something, I'm trying to think why do they think why are they doing this. Right. right. And I'm trying to put it together from the re from the opposite, from the reverse side. Right. From their and point of view. hundred percent. Yeah. So if I see we can, we can feel how we want to feel. But nigga, no, this is this, this how they feel, nigga. Yeah. If, if it's a dying city, then why would I invest in it until I see some incentive to continue to do so? What is the return on that? You know what I'm saying? What is the return on them fixing the water over in Mississippi? What's the return on them fixing the water over and uh, fixing the infrastructure? Because it's not the water itself. It's the pipes. It's the infrastructure. It's the lead pipes. They never continue to reinvest in it. Right. Back back when Flint was booming, they had a whole lot that they was generating from a revenue perspective because that's where all of the jobs were. That's where GM was at. That's where Ford was at. That's where Chrysler was at. Everybody was moving up there for jobs. It's going away. The manufacturing industry is going away. So until they start to incentivize businesses to continue to move there and invest there, why would I fix the infrastructure when it's not going to be no return on investment? If you're telling me I should do it just because I like you, because black people move there, you can fucking forget it. Now, if you now if you start to incentivize you know companies to move here because, OK, well, what's the benefits of being in Michigan? Well, we got the, the biggest, largest body of fresh water in the entire fucking world. Right. With the Great Lakes, we control. Now they going to pump. They pump billions of dollars. And I mean, billions of dollars every single year in protecting the Great Lakes. You know why? Because water is like oil. Water is one of the most valuable commodities as far as fresh water in the world, because we control one of the largest bodies of fresh water. So now that gives you an incentive as to why it is that we doing it. We building a whole nother bridge. I'm sitting over here looking at the Detroit River looking over at Canada and we building the Gordie Howe bridge because commerce back and forth over into Canada and Canada was even willing to put up all of the money to build the bridge. It's incentivized. Now we've been voted the best river walk in the entire fucking country is more money being pumped into the city. Now that they gentrified it than ever before. Why? Because it's a bunch of money here. They've, they've, they've basically rebranded themselves as a technology hub. You got, we got some of the biggest mortgage companies that's here in, in, in Michigan and you, United Warehouse, the guy that owned the Phoenix Suns is building a fucking castle here. Dan Gilbert moved all of his employees from Rocket Mortgage and Quicken Loans into the city. Now they're building some of the biggest skyscrapers that you can fucking see in the city. And black people are always going to be the ones. That's the last. That's the last to catch the wave. So you got all of the white people. You got all of the Pakistan, uh, Pakistanians. You got the, the Arab Americans that's that's here. They getting all of the fucking money. Property values is exploding. But you know what people don't say? Oh, man, it ain't Atlanta. It ain't Houston. And then by the time they catch the fucking wave, they didn't miss all of the money. And then they're going to say, well, uh, man, Detroit used to be one of the blackest cities. It was the blackest city in the United States of America. But now everybody is, is fucking they're going to catch the wave 15 years from now. Then they're going to want to move here when everybody is already priced out. 
Hey, yo, yo, let me let, let me let, I know you're on a good one, but Detroit was our first Atlanta. When you call it, it Atlanta, was. Hollywood, Detroit was Motown. That was, that was our, our, our first Atlanta. Detroit was. Continue, my brother. And, and it's the same thing that's going to happen to a lot of these other cities. When you see, when you see what's happening in Oakland, I believe that what's happening in Oakland is intentional. I think what's going to happen is it's going to evolve and over a period of decades, it's going to become the happening place again. And then it's going to be an opportunity for people to continue to, to make a whole bunch of money once they regentrify it again. And because we always catch the wave late, we always, we are me too people. We are me too ass people. We always want to bandwagon ass when it's too late. We're not the ones that reinvest into it and control the communities. When it's, when it's an opportunity for us to do so, we catch the shit late. So it's hard for me to feel sorry for people that's voluntarily ignorant. I, I can't sit here and say, yuck. I can't sit here and say, well, why are they doing this? When I understand why they're doing it, I have the opportunity to do it too. Our libraries is fucking empty, but the clubs is full. The libraries is fucking empty, but the clubs is full. You know why? Because they got a lot. You got digital digital books. You can listen to audio books. You can do the shit on Apple. Mm -hmm. you, it's digital now. You know, a lot of stores are closing down. Like you got bookstores closing down. Like, where I buy books is at the airport. But right, again, you yo, you speaking to you speaking out of privilege. The library is free for a motherfucker that wanna that ain't got no money. Look, look, let me let me not not to disrespect you, my nigga. Let me get my nigga from the joint, man. And my nigga locked up in the pen, Mike Ascari, man. Mike Ascari, welcome to the stage, my brother. Salute, salute, salute back. Hey, hey, bro, hey, both of y'all cooking, bro. I I really enjoying man uh with y'all on. Yo, you, you you doing your thing this morning, bro. And, and uh that 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 wisdom bro was just kicking man I'm, I'm really enjoying uh listening to it because he's speaking a lot of facts too so uh, yeah, salute salute to man. you big dog I'm about, the, about the oakland it's thing up. the oakland situation i think i think they um i think about the whole california bro i think they mm -hmm. try and clear this motherfucker out yeah period only the risk of survive and they letting all this purge go down. They they letting the laws go down where you can steal two thousand dollars worth of shit. Niggas just going in stores and just snatching shit and walking out. Nobody doing nothing. I yep. think it's a national purge. It's shutting down the stores. It's shutting down the property. Uh, fucking property value was up. Houses that used to cost four hundred thousand is nine hundred thousand right now. Shit then went up overnight. You know what I mean? Rent is like four four thousand. Like in. in in the hood, nigga, four thousand, three thousand in the hood when it used yeah. to be fifteen hundred. So they raising it up so high that they trying to move out the fucking poor, my nigga, and move in the rich. Same with the Bay Area. They trying to clear out Frisco. They want that to be Silicon City, my nigga. Period. They clearing out all the bad niggas. You know what I mean? The niggas got to can't afford to be there. You're gonna be a bum in a tent. Or you can't afford to be there, nigga. You moving to Atlanta, you moving yep. to motherfucking Vegas, you moving to Houston, nigga. And that's what niggas been doing, period. Same they, niggas But y'all love there. Gavin Newsom, right? Hey, fuck I Gavin Newsom. I don't I love him. California love Gav, bro. bro. I don't. You talk to a nigga that I'm gonna I'm 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 tell you why I got a lot of I'm gonna tell you why I got a lot of love for him because he, he he's See what I'm saying? kicking See up. What I'm saying? He, he's he's no no hold on hold on no 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 hold on no 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 hold on bro look first of all I got a better incentive than either one of y'all bro that nigga let niggas out of prison my nigga he giving See? niggas chances my nigga who had no chance to get I'm 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 one of the recipients of this nigga continue with Jerry Brown started back off doing my nigga you know what I'm saying it's a lot of us getting out because of a lot of shit that he's signing off on that most of them govern governors that came before him wouldn't do it's a lot of dudes is getting out right now behind it so on that Anything else he doing? I, I don't. I, I don't care about. I don't care. I don't care for none of that other shit. But when it comes to letting motherfuckers out, he letting us up out of here, and a lot of us didn't have no chance to get out, my nigga. See you know what I'm saying? saying? So all man, they gotta do you know? is dangle a couple carrots in front of us, and it's dangle a couple carrots, nigga. Hey, hey, bro, you come sit behind these walls for half of your life, my nigga, and talk about that some carrots. What the hell you mean? That's a couple of carrots, yo, yo, yo. nigga. Listen, he letting listen, a lot listen. of niggas up out of here. That was that nigga. That that that. Bro, I was served facing a hundred and forty-seven year of life sentence. You talking about a couple of carrots, my nigga? Yeah, because really? listen, 
Listen, yeah, I'm gonna tell you the truth. Listen, you talking to a dude that truly don't give a fuck. I don't. Okay, I don't then. Oh, okay, then. Oh, okay, no, well, no, no, we, no, no. we, we on two different. We on two different let coins today, bro. About, most of y'all deserve to be in there, so don't sit here and tell me that I'm supposed to feel some well, type of well, way. No, I'm not. Hold on. Don't get Hold on. Let me. Let me. Well, 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 I can't. Well, 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 it's not emotional. It's not a conversation for me you to have, bro, because you because. It ain't for me to say who belongs and who don't in here when well, you got a fucking government made to kill niggas for lesser for for more pity reasons and a lock me and you up for the same bullshit, get niggas no, license nigga, for the same bullshit to kill people for. You know what I'm saying? Never. Okay, well, but well, well, look, I, look, look, I don't That's expect you, I don't what expect you to have no feelings for that, bro. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying it ain't it ain't Listen, it ain't you're it not ain't for me. Get me to fuck up the entire state just because I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't I don't okay That's not a good okay well okay to okay well you ain't well, 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 you not out here though bro so your opinion don't count I, I don't what Listen, you think about it that it doesn't Oh no, my opinion does count because y'all the ones that's fucking up the entire country. Don't you see that everybody that's leaving Who California is y'all? Who is y'all? The people like you that support Gavin Newsom. <laughs> The, the, listen, listen. People from California don't even want to fucking be in California. But what they then doing? Why you think that Texas is saying don't don't fuck up our don't fuck up our our, our state? Hey. They say, yo, stay, <laughs> yo, they saying stay in fucking California. Then hey. niggas, niggas in tech, people in Texas and Florida is saying why y'all moving here and turning our our city and turning our state into where y'all fucking ran away from. Because y'all ruined your own fucking your own state. So listen, if you if no, you, told me you said that I'm Gavin supposed to, Newsom did it, not us. No, it's Gavin the people. Newsom it's the people like him that support it. Because you like him, you don't know. First, first of all, first of all, I ain't voted for none one of these motherfuckers, nigga. It don't yeah, matter. So nigga, like, you, you speaking a narrative, and you got a voice, and you influence the people that's around you. It don't matter, yuck. It's it's the mindset. Bro, but yeah, you time, missing what bro. I'm saying. You missing what I'm saying. This is he's a reflection. Is his narrative is a reflection of how people in the black what narrative in a you know general suit. You know why I fuck with Trump because he pardoned a lot of my street niggas. He pardoned my nigga Little D. That's not why you should support him, yuck. That's one of the reasons that I you do. should support him based off of his policy, not based off That's of one. whether he released Man, don't all that. Don't none of these niggas' policies help us, nigga. What the fuck you mean? You don't even okay. Name one. I said don't none, nigga. I can't name one. Name a Did you hear what I said? Name a Did policy. You hear what I said? Because you can't say none of the I policies. Said don't, don't I said don't none don't of these policies, nigga. Man. You don't know no policies. Everybody. Okay, what policy? You name one. They helping us. You don't us. know no policies. You name one that's helping us. Trump, Trump renegotiating the North American Free Trade Agreement with Mexico and Canada. So that help us the how? They help the black community. The they help the black community him. how? He he. What are you talking about? He gave more money to HBCUs than any president in history. HBCUs, really? That's what you're talking about? Yes, that's one example. That's exactly one of the things that I'm talking Come about. Come on, man, you ping ponging, bro. That don't have nothing don't to do with us. My nigga. You ask me to name some stuff. I'm naming stuff. <laughs> how many? So so how many? How many blacks oh, are, on the average probably, outside probably outside probably outside of southern that. states outside of these southern states? How many black people are actually going benefiting off HBCUs, folks? What do you mean? The HBCUs have more professionals that's black that come out. More professionals come out of HBCUs is, is, um, with regard to science, technology, engineering, medical fields, doctors, lawyers. More black people come out of All HBCU right. than any other All institution right. in the United hey, States of hey, America. Hey, 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 let, hey, let, hey, let me let, let me say this. Let me say this as far as me. Let me make a let me let me make a bro, bro. We both can't talk over each other, bro. You can't educate me on anything, bro. So let me let me let me make an eye statement. Let me make an eye statement real quick for me. Let me speak for me real quick. Let me speak for me real quick. You asked a general question. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, I'm about to make a general statement real quick, folks. You know what I'm saying? For me, for one, I don't I'm not a sympathy case and I don't make no motherfucking excuses of why why I spend my I spend most of my life up in this motherfucker. I made decisions that I owned up for and I did mine right standing up like a man and I made corrections to, to, to rectify my shit. So I ain't saying I ain't no I, so I ain't no violin music sitting here for me. You know what I'm saying? But however, you know, having said that, you know what I mean, it's motherfuckers in here who didn't change their lives around that deserve another chance to be out there with their family. Families made it in the earth. 
that man. When you finally got a motherfucker in the office that's actually opening the doors to let them out, you know what I'm saying? I applaud that. Now I'm not giving him no rubber stamp for anything else he's doing. I'm not, I'm not endorsing anything else he's doing. I've spoken on that right there. So that's the part. I everybody vote for their own reasons. Most voters are not sitting there going line for line on a on any candidate's entire agenda. It's a particular what they thing to move doing. them. That's it's the a particular thing. Of, it's a part, okay. Well, most of them ain't doing what the fuck you think they should do. I'm telling you what most people exactly. do. Exactly. So it's not. Reality. It's not a I live in reality. It's a. I live in reality. Okay. Well, okay. No, no, that no, might be no, true. Time. Anton, what, what he's saying is absolutely right. Anton, you know in this game, right? They make packs, right? Mm -hmm. They make packs that 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 put money behind these these governors, that put money behind these mayors, that put money behind these government officials and the president to push they a fucking agenda, right? <coughs> right? Am I lying? Every or not? community comes up with that. Who? Every community does that. Have you, ever, listen, have, have, have you ever listen? Have you ever? Have you ever? Every community got a pack. Yes, absolutely. A hundred percent. Name. Okay, we got. They got an Asian pack. They got a air pack. They got no, it, it's pack. it's not by race. It's by region. It's by like, for example, have you ever noticed that Trump is never going to, or Biden is never going to go I'm to Chicago? Say, I'm gonna say the pack. I'm gonna say the pack. That, that, that they got the small hat pack, right? To where you can't go against the small hats and they're gonna put money behind your campaign so when the small you know this shit that's going down you're gonna support the small hats no matter what happened or whatever whatever you're gonna support them you're gonna we'll pass laws you're gonna do this the same thing biden doing giving them money and shit that's how you got an office because the small hats put a lot of money up for that nigga to get in the office that's a pack my nigga that's what i'm saying you i know what i know what a pack is. is i know exactly right. what a pack is so He's saying that this governor is pushing their agenda and he's with it. Is it wrong for, for the small hats to push their agenda and we send them billions of dollars over there out of our tax money because they're pushing their agenda and they got their nigga in the office that they wanted, that they paid for, that's going to run the laws that they want? They're supporting that, but they get money from that. This nigga don't get money. They just get released. What's the difference from a small hat and a nigga that's in the prison system that's still getting the same fucking type of benefits. What's what do you difference? mean? What are, because b the difference is that we not getting this, the benefits. We getting the motion. As a, as a, listen, listen, listen. Let me tell you the difference. Let me tell you the difference. When, when he started speaking, he took it away from my talking points because he knew I was cooking. And he starts speaking from an individual perspective, right? And the reason that that is, and you saying what's the difference? The difference is that they understand that there's going, they're going to do the do what's best for the collective. So when they come together and they put their resources together, they put their resources together based off of a collective agenda, not an individual feeling that they have amongst each other, right? Because for me, I'm willing to sacrifice for what's best for my daughter. It's not about me and how, how I feel. Every decision that I'm going to make from financial to whether or not I'm going to go over here and do some criminal shit is based off of who's going to be affected by my decisions. We don't think like that. We think based off of how I feel when most of the decisions that we make on an individual basis is self-inflicted. It's man, a self-inflicted wound. Like, hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yuck, yuck, yuck. You said... When please, he first, when, when he first speaks, yeah. When he first spoke, yeah. You talking about niggas self inflicting? We talking about a governor parting niggas and letting niggas out? You talking about we self inflicting? Yeah. You you disagreed with him when he first came up here and said that shit. Now you switched based off of the emotion that he that he no, exerted right. on the on the last trip. When he first says, "Oh man, G Gavin Newsom is cool," you was like, "Oh shit." You felt no, the same I'm way. Not, I, don't, I don't fuck with Gavin. I, I, no Frank Ocean. I, I, I agree with you. Fuck Gavin Newsom. But for but what you he, can't have both sides, yeah. Which one is it? Is My thing is this. First, so first, said, first, first of all, what, what he said that he let niggas out. I agree with that. that. Like we don't agree with everything. He don't agree with everything that Trump do. You don't. You got some shit that you agree with Trump do. I don't Correct. agree with shit that Gavin Newsom do. But him letting out prisoners. That's when I agree with. Period. So I'm just landing on that. 
Period. I don't agree. And that's the only and that's the only thing that I see. I don't know. I don't care about the number of Cause I go on effects. Whoever's in office, my my people that's being suffering suffer for the same fucking reasons, regardless of what faces in the damn office. You know what I mean? So I go on the one thing that I that, that I saw that I have saw. You know what I'm saying? When I've been on a line with motherfuckers that I know earned that other shot and they finally got it, bro. That's the part I'm on. All that other shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm not I'm, I'm not an endorser of none of that other shit, bro. Because don't I because I don't see the effects policies, on that. Half of the policies of the person well, hey, that you support hey, like, like, is you one of the reasons why you went there in the first place, is because yeah, well people, I mean, the people that ultimately end up there or the people that even get released, they wind up reoffending. Because you don't okay, have well, no well, 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 okay, well, 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 I don't have nothing, I don't, I don't have nothing to do with that. I'm talking about niggas who no, spend hold on, let hear, hear, hear me out. You talking, you talking, you, 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 you talking about these short, you talking about, you talking about these short term offenders, my nigga, that ain't spent years of their life rehabilitating themselves, making real changes. Most people, my, you not asking yourself the question, why they ended up there in the first place? Hold on, hold on, let me, let me give you some real math. It ain't no opportunities. Let me give you some real Man, man. Let me let me give you some real math. Let me let, let me give let me give you some real math real quick, bro. Niggas who done did my time, who done did ten years or longer, we have the lowest recidivism rate, bro. Dudes who done did ten years or more, bro, we rarely come back to prison. You talking about niggas who done did uh, five that. years or longer? Why well, you well, ended well, up well, there well, in well. the this, first place? This this is why, why you this is up why. there in the first place is based off of because the policy. Because we because because we have a system we, we because we have a system that made a business off incarceration, man. That's why when they got rid of the plantation, man, the prison cell, my nigga became the new form of slavery. That's why we ended up there. It's institutional. Personalized, bro. Prison and crime is a business in California and in the United States. Do you know how many tables stay filled with food and how many families may get jobs and employed based on the incarceration system? In California, the CCPOA is the largest union in the state because it's a business. They make a business of crime. That's why it ain't. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's far bigger than this shit. That that's some damn policy, bro. It's a business. It's not. It's not. It's not. Man, look, bro. You you are, you, you, you are part of the problem, bro. You, you, you are hundred percent wrong. Me. You tell me, no, man, no, all right. You are hundred percent wrong. In order for something to be slavery, in order for something to be slavery, the people that's enslaved, it got to be beneficial. It's got to be a return on investment. If you actually do the numbers and you do the math, it's a reason why California is operating at a deficit and why they're trying to prevent rich people from leaving the state. Because ultimately, they take from it's the it's the people in the middle that suffer. The reason why there is not going to be any middle class is because y'all are the ones that's getting taxed. And then ultimately, you're the ones that's going to pay the price. The thing that you're not having a conversation about, and this is what's wrong with black people, is we're not proactive enough to think about why we ended up in prison in the first place. Fuck being reincarcerated. Fuck being uh, change your life and all of that shit. The policies, the same policies that they standing on it, and the shit that you voting them in for is the policies that landed you in there because you don't have the opportunities. Your schools is fucked up. And instead of them funding your schools, they continue to fund the prisons. And so it would be much more productive on a return on investment perspective for them to incentivize you to go into science, technology, information in order to fix your communities than it is as far as them getting a return on investment as far as you going into prison. So in order for them to do that, they got to continue to play on your emotions because they know that you're going to think on an individual level instead of collectively. And on an individual level, you like the fact that Kodak Black got out of prison. You like the fact that Lil Wayne got out of prison. So they play on that shit and they put it in front of your face because they know you're not going to read the policies that ultimately will make your schools better. They know that you're not going to understand the millages. You don't know who your fucking city councilman is, but you know who the latest rapper that dropped the mixtape, though. You don't know who your treasurer is. You don't know who the person that represents you in your community, but you know who the motherfucker is that's dropping all of the bombs that's happening over in Ukraine. We don't look at the policy that individually help us and collectively keep us out of prison in the first place that replaces the, the, the prison pipeline. But instead, we get emotional and we vote for the shit that ultimately is going to land your children in prison in the first place. We got to stop thinking like that shit.
It ain't about whether or not he letting you out now. It's about how it's going to affect the, the kids that come in the future. The one thing that civil rights leaders had back in the day was that they was willing to die for the people that came after them. They didn't think about themselves. It wasn't about them. It wasn't about me. It was about, am I going to make the decision whether I'm going to go to school, whether I'm a protest, whether I'm a freedom rider, whether I'm going to do this, whether I'm going to do that. They was OK. Man, listen, you know, why I don't give a fuck about why people think about me because they didn't. And I'm not comparing myself to him, but they didn't like any of the civil rights leaders back then until after they died. They didn't fuck with Martin Luther King. They didn't yes, fuck they with did. Malcolm X. Yes, they did. No, they yes, didn't. They Black did. people hated no, Martin Luther yes, King. When he, bro, listen, I, I read every single Why book. Hold on, hold on, let me finish real quick. I'm, 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 I'm about to stop. I'm about to stop. I've interviewed and I've read every single biography, including the one that was written by Malcolm X's daughter. They didn't fuck with him in real time when he was alive. He was killed by his own people. He was incentivized by the federal government in order to die, but you can't force nobody to do nothing to you unless it come from your own people. They didn't fuck with Martin Luther King. Black people hated Martin Luther King when he was alive. Whoa, 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 slow down. Oh, Sorry, bro. I'm not letting you know. I don't know. Hey, who, I don't know what blueprint you getting this from, but hell no, bro. Are you, how many people march with Malcolm? I mean, and Martin. How many people march with them? Are you serious, nigga? They invited it's Malcolm amazing. X to overseas, nigga. It's amazing. Period. It's amazing. They invited that nigga to Mecca, and he found out the real motherfucker Islam. And it, come on, man. Jesus Christ. Why do you think Damn. he left the nation in the first place? Because he discovered that the nation was 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 uh, worldwide. That's not why he left. That's why. That's not why he left. That's not why he left. There, was, it, there, the there, there were there were there were there were multiple reasons Malcolm left the nation. It was not yeah. no one reason. There were several reasons. Right. Let's just let's just say that it was multiple reasons. Period. We ain't gonna put that on. Well, y'all y'all can't watch the Denzel but, but, movie. Y'all gotta but, read the book, bro. Just, if, no, first of all, first that. of all, okay, okay. Why did he leave then? Since you know listen, so much, listen, why listen. He leave? He left because he realized that the that the organization itself was corrupt and it was self serving. It wasn't for the people. It was a self-serving okay. organization. Okay. It was oh, based. You care to be more specific? Was, you care to be more specific? It was, ba it was no, no, based I'm, off of. I'm, I'm, it was I'm gonna based be more specific. specific. That's surface. Can you be more specific? Okay, you gotta let me finish, bro. I gotta finish. You're being like, surface. I'm asking you for specific answers. I'm giving you the specific answers. You gotta let me. Because I know the point. specific answers. Hey, let him let him talk, Mike. Let him talk. Let him land. It was a self. First of all, it was a corrupt organization. OK, secondly, <sighs> you see, it's too much emotion, bro. Like you got to you got to be able to have a conversation and then you can respond. If you think that I'm wrong, then you can respond after you let I me know, finish. It's not a matter food. of what I think is what I know. I asked you okay. for a simple okay. answer and you give right. me this, this, this. You give me this runaround. Give me a direct answer. I, I can't I can't do it. Yeah, I can't, man, because. If, th if this is if this is all based off a of debate and it's not based off a of conversation because I don't get shit out of this, you know what I'm saying? Like, me neither. It has it has to be beneficial to the audience. It's, it can't just be because uh, I'm all for debates, but I'm only for debates on shit that don't matter. This shit matters. Like, right. what happens to our children matters. What happens for people that come after us matters. Whoever the fuck we are, me, you, yup, Mike. We, we already who we going to be. Our lives is pretty much what they are. And it don't really fucking matter. Like we got a limited amount of time on this earth going forward. The only thing I care about conversating about is the shit that's going to benefit the people that come after us. And so when I make a decision or when I even decide to engage in a certain conversation based off of productivity, it's got to be based off of what's beneficial for the group. It can't be based off of how I feel. It can't be that, bro. I, I can't do it. Yeah. I can't do it. Well, well, you said something about, you know, I asked you about the water situation out there. You're like, hey, well, it's not really beneficial. Well, but you. Well, I said that I didn't agree with it, but I'm thinking from their perspective of why they won't reinvest in the infrastructure. I didn't right. speak from my perspective. I'm speaking for why I don't believe that they will invest in it. So, look, he's speaking from their perspective. You feel me? The niggas that's getting out of jail, the same thing. You know, he's not speaking like he, you know what I mean, agree with extra shit, like whatever he did from the perspective of a, of a nigga that benefited off of that. He's agreeing with that. 
You know what I mean? Period. Or, you know, saying that this is how they rock. You know, I don't agree with the, the rest of this shit, but on this one, I rock with it. And that's how they get down. So um, at the end of the day, man, that I think we have a real problem in America. And the thing I was saying before you got on was we need unity, bro. Like, like, literally. like You're never going to have that, yuck, because if we don't have understanding, you're never going to have unity because on two different... Most of us is on two different pages because we all got our own agenda and I'm we don't want this. All, all races. We need we, to unify. We, we, all, we never going to have unity, ever. It's never been unity it's since the history of this, this fucking earth being made. It's yes, always it been division. Yes, it has. It's always been division. 9-11, 9-11, everybody came together. Everybody in America, white, black, brown, tan. We was finesse, yeah, and I don't want to fuck up your platform. 9-11, no. in my opinion, is in my opinion, so I'm gonna take it off of you, is not real. Anyway, whatever it was, it was unified it, and a lie. Yeah, whatever it was, it unified America, all colors. I, I am a real American. Because, but 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 again, I, 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 I gotta I gotta, I gotta, I gotta agree, I gotta agree with I gotta agree with him on that because he did they did use the emotion of the time to play us against a certain group of people that was in this country. So I do agree with that. I agree I agree with that part right there. They did, they did, and they and they do that a lot. Yeah. So we still gotta be unified in understanding. If we don't have understanding, it's it's almost like if me and you having a conversation and we talk about gender wars, but then we can't even agree on the idea of what's the difference between a man and a woman no more, then we can't even have the conversation because we don't have a fundamental understanding and an agreement on the basics. Now we can have a difference of opinion as far as the nuances and the individual details, but if we can't even agree on the, on the basics, the foundation of what we standing on as far as this, because, you know, I was watching a, a series What's the one with Forrest Whitaker where he was uh, going back and forth with Malcolm X and um, it was something like Harlem something. I forgot what it was. And he was playing Bumpy Johnson. He was playing Bumpy Johnson. Right. And Forrest Whitaker and Malcolm X fundamentally disagreed on a lot of different things. But the one thing that they agreed on was that it was a problem as far as a specific demographic of people that was controlling Harlem. And that's the thing that united them because we can go our own separate ways but how are we going to come together to do anything when we disagree on everything? And so you got to get an understanding before you can start getting an agreement. Godfather of Harlem. Shout out to uh, FNO Camaros. Okay, bingo. You 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 just out of boy. You just threw the nigga to dust. Ah, 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 ah. You get by. The common denominator, like the Harlem shit, is we're losing America, man. America is falling off. America is about to be a fucking rap, bro. Period. We are the we're in a tr- super trillion dollar deficit. This shit is falling off, my nigga. If we want to save America, we need to fucking unite as Americans, not as the fucking immigrants coming in as fucking Americans, as all races in America. We need to fucking unite to protect America, protect the middle class. You said the middle class is out of here. That's all the taxes that the rich niggas only have to pay tax. They get the tax write offs and. They get all types of well, they pay taxes. I agree. They pay taxes. They pay taxes, but they get a lot of lot of curbs and, and able able to wiggle and shit. Do all types of shit that that, that they can bend shit. They can write down to everything off. Everything else, man, boom, pay your tax. Okay, cool. The, the 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 niggas that's working at their job, they get tax return. You know what I mean? They're not. You know what I mean? They don't get the tax write off. They don't get the little cuts and shit. They so, get it. They can get it too. They just but, don't understand the game. But at the end of the day, they're paying for everything that's going down. I'm paying for everything that's going down in America. You paying for everything that's going down in America. If you ain't in that one percent, I'm not pay- paying. For, I'm not paying for that shit. Well, shit. Floyd just said he paid what twenty million in taxes, and he's a one percent. That's, unfor- that's unfortunate. So, so anyway, you you writing a lot of shit off. You figured it out. But anyway, a lot of people ain't figured it out. So a lot of the middle class is basically paying for everything, paying for the wars and all the shit. So the middle class is being dominated and eliminated, my nigga. That's why I got so much homeless, my nigga. You saying Go that? Ahead. I agree you with you. That? Yeah, you saying that? Oh, I agree with you. Yeah, that. That's why I so much homeless, nigga, because the middle class is being eliminated at the same time paying for this whole shit. So once you realize that, like, come on, man, you got to rebel against that shit. And the second time America came together, was January the 6th. They came together. 
Did they or did they not? You said what? What happened January 6th? I said the second time Americans came together. They came oh, you're together. talking about for the for the Capitol? At the Capitol? Them niggas came together for the Capitol. Oh, okay. I thought I get what you're saying. They they came to fucking gather for that capital shit. Period. And it wasn't just white people. It was the Mexicans. It was all the, the leader of the Proud Boys is the Mexican. I, I don't believe that that I don't believe in that I don't believe that that happened the way that that's being painted either though yuck but that's a whole nother conversation I'm just saying they united <laughs> I don't I don't believe I don't believe that that's that that's what really happened bro we seen that shit on camera with our own eyes my nigga like we seen okay. Jordan, like they, like, they try like, to like, I, like I said we seen the towers get hit with our own eyes too but you still standing on that <laughs> are, are we saying are, 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 are we saying that the Proud Boys represent the interests of black people? No, we ain't saying that. I said the Proud Boys had a Mexican nigga. It was different races. Not it wasn't a black I mean, nigga. There. If, if you if you kind of prison, if you kind of prison, you gonna see a lot of Mexicans in white and white boy gangs. Trust me, you gonna see a lot of that. But, but <laughs> you, you you had black people in there too. You had like Tommy Sotomayor. Like you got a black. No, that's a fact. That's the fact. That's the fact. So I'm just saying that bought that bought them that bought them together. I'm just saying, look at the turnout. That bought motherfuckers together, and they went against. Hey, you saying you this AI, my nigga? Hey, bro, I know I'm not saying nothing yet. No, you I got on one hand how many, saying, how many black face money, how many black people you saw in that whole yeah. crowd? I gotta, I gotta dip, but I, what I am saying is that. Um, we need to continue this conversation. Let's just put it like that. Oh, my nigga. Don't say it was a simulation, my nigga. We go, I didn't no. say it was nothing. I didn't say I'm anything. Just gonna, I'm not going to say this, man. Everything we going through is all end time, folks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Thanks for tapping in. And, uh, one hey, young, hey, listen. Stop. I love you. Shout out, shout out to you, Mike. Salute um, to you, man. I appreciate y'all. I'm going to holler at y'all later, bro. It's good. Out. Salute to you, man. Time to have a good one, bro. Anton and this motherfucker tapped in on it. Get out of me, tap in with the motherfucker million dollar, uh, million dollar podcast. Uh, morning, the morning million dollar podcast with Anton Daniels. It should be Liddy in the city, man. Salute that brother. I definitely still support that brother. You feel me? He had it, he had you going crazy, man. He, he struck your nerve, nigga. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't gonna lie. He got in my skin a little bit. I, 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 I you know. I, I, hey, because hey, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna tell you something, bro. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, motherfuckers in society. Like, it, this ain't a feel bad for me statement. You know what I mean? Because we put ourselves in these situations at the end of the day, right? But I'm just saying, said, though. But, 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 but I, 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 but I'm saying, but, but that ain't why I said that though. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's like, I mean, niggas that go to war for, for shit that don't have nothing to do with our best interests behind somebody else's agendas all day, it won't bat an eye at that. But you know what I'm saying? But I didn't sat on these yards and watch niggas, you know what I'm saying, spend most of their lives in here making changes to get back while their families and shit died off on them. So when niggas put themselves in position, man, to get free and bounce out after doing it right the correct way, man, I applaud these people because I'm one of them. I get that. So when we get a nigga outside of that, they feel like he can shit on them efforts, bro. I know some people that would not allow their brother to walk away from saying those type of things, bro. Because you don't understand. You don't understand how deep that cut with motherfuckers, man, who a lot of dudes spent their lives and died in the process, man, fighting for their freedom. You know, in the day and age, when we got motherfuckers that snitching, man, to get out of doing six months, you know what I'm saying? You got niggas doing a lot of years, stand up, doing that shit right, the correct way. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's it's a different world. But if you ain't from where we from, it, I don't expect a dude like Anton to understand why I feel the way I feel or or what I'm talking about. I don't expect that because this, this dude ain't probably never been or grew up in the hood like West Oakland, you know what I'm saying, or East Oakland, or know what it is to, the, you know what I'm saying, the, the walk in the shoes that I've walked in and a lot of dudes who've been here before you and I were even born, bro, you know what I'm saying, I'm just saying this, bro, you know what I mean, yeah, it did, it did cut deep, but
But when I when I realized that I had to check myself though, bro, because you know, throughout the years I ran across a lot of motherfuckers like him, bro. Period. You know what I mean? And that's what society consists of, but they don't count. You know what I'm saying? I was speaking on the fact that for once, we finally got a politician in office, man, that followed through on what he said, doing what he said he was gonna do. He said that he was going to continuously pass the law and legislation to let motherfuckers out, bro, and he fulfilled that. I'm a recipient of that. I'm grateful for that. You know what I'm saying? And once I'm about this motherfucker, I'm about to double time it, triple time it to get other motherfuckers out. Because I got G's in here that been uh, that been locked up longer than you and I both been alive. You know what I'm saying? And they need to be out, man, so they can enjoy the rest of their days because they did theirs right. If you talk to them dudes right now, you wouldn't even know they was in prison, man. They spit so so motherfucking rich. So when I hear motherfuckers like Anton try to talk and speak, he don't know what the fuck he's talking about. You can't be about black history, bro, without understanding our history, bro, because this is all about black history. To deny that the prison industrial complex was created to, to house our people specifically. When a lot of them subjects created roles to lock our people up for that, to keep them subjugated, that's a lie. That's ignorance of history, bro. You know what I'm saying? When we're talking about it. So all of, none of this excuse the motherfucker who chose to go sell dope, who chose to go rob, who chose to do that. Yeah, we, we made them decisions. But we're talking about the existence of the prison system. In California, it is a business. In most states, it is a business. You know what I'm saying? Why do you think they put crack in the ghetto, bro? To fill prisons up. It wasn't that many prisons in California, bro, prior to, prior to the 80s, bro. It wasn't that many prisons, bro. It was maybe only maybe like five or six of them. When they bought crack in, bro, you know what I'm saying? Crime went up and it became lucrative. In most states, it became lucrative. You got motherfuckers way from the East Coast that was getting locked up in San Quentin. Way from New York getting locked up in Alcatraz and San yeah, Quentin and shit. Far Muhammad, the one the nation of Islam, they pray. Man, that dude was locked up in San Quentin, right? In the night in the early 1900s, bro, for pushing uh 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 what's the name of that shit? Uh 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 fuck. It's the one of them amphetamines, man. Opium, one of them opiums, man. They were sending these way from over there. That's just how few prisons it was in the United States. This is a business, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm pointing out. So anybody that would deny that, bro, I look at them funny because I look at them as being part of the problem. They would want us to ignore that fact. And that's not overlook the fact that the government do plant niggas in position to have voices to throw us off. That was a huge part of the Cointel Pro program. You know what I'm saying? They use us against each other. We can't forget that for whenever we have unity, we're going to have a nigga that's in here talking about, oh, no, y'all wrong. Why these good? You know what I'm saying? We have to pay attention now when we get to talking about unity. We have to pay attention to those. Everybody ain't going to be for it. Some niggas go put on the best face for it, but really working for the other side. That's been a death for almost every movement. So let's not forget when we get to talking about doing things that Huey P and Bobby Seale and them doing, when we get to talking about going on that mission, we got to remember the things that caused them dudes movement to fail. We got to address that first so we don't fall into that same snake. Foremost. And we got all of the, we have all of the means and technology to do just that. Yeah. That's all I'm getting at. You're absolutely right. Um, I'm, uh, bro, you got to understand, bro, come from a nerd perspective. He He's an admitted nerd. You know what I mean? He come from a nerd perspective. So, I mean, if a motherfucker never been to jail, never knew the politics, you can't, uh, Expect the motherfucker to respect it. You know what I mean? He's coming from a victim type of situation. If he get robbed, fuck a nigga that's trying to rob me. Fuck a nigga, you know what I mean, trying to sell dope to my mama. He's coming from that perspective. So I get it. But I get what you're saying because it was the Cointel Pro, the Reagan era, all that shit, the war on drugs that really fucked us up. Like my dad was in and out of jail, like from selling dope, like quick, do a year or two, boom. Nigga. Once that Reagan era came, that crack era came, nigga, and motherfuckers start giving niggas 10 years for a crack rock, nigga, and, and letting all the 
nigga, you get caught with powder, you know, because you know that's a that's a social drug, like the white people doing powder in the clubs and shit. They get caught with an ounce of powder, nigga. It's no time. They get let out of jail. You get caught with a crack rock. You're doing 10 years, five, 10 years, nigga. Some crazy shit. Then they came with the three strike law, nigga. Three felonies, nigga. You're doing 25 to life, nigga. So it was all types of motherfucking um roadblocks and and and, and, and shit that detours and, and, and traps, booby traps and shit that really got niggas locked up in jail to where back in the day a nigga wouldn't even did no time for the shit that he did. Period. And on top of that, the the just putting us struggling man like they put us in these areas and shit low income areas and shit to where we're on welfare you know what i mean we on low income shit to where nigga we gotta survive my nigga and then you put the drugs in the motherfucker to where a motherfucker can sell drugs to survive and like come on my nigga niggas gotta survive because you it's government it's, it's, it's by come on man it's by design my nigga period it's by fucking design, bro. We don't got no planes. We ain't we ain't in Colombia, nigga. We ain't nowhere out there. Nigga, when the shit was coming through in the 60s and the 70s and shit, nigga, we didn't have no planes, nigga. That the government was bringing it through, nigga. Period. Same same thing that the nigga uh the same thing that my nigga um what's my nigga name, man? That said uh he said, "Yeah, I know. I know. Motherfuckers got uh, nuclear bombs and uh, and uh, uh, whatever it was over uh, in uh, the Middle East, because America got the motherfucker receipt." The same thing. Yeah, hey, that's yeah, Paul you don't Paul mind. Paul if you don't Paul mind, I, go talk your shit, bro. If you don't mind, I want to answer a question that I couldn't get him to answer because you had asked why did Malcolm leave the nation? It was several reasons. Foremost. You know what I'm saying? He learned a few years leading up to him leaving the nation. You know what I'm saying? His brother Wilbur X, I believe, was excommunicated for the nation of Islam for having a uh uh having an affair with one of Elijah Muhammad's secretary. So when later on when Malcolm come to realize after he made a statement about chickens coming home to roost. And Elijah used that as an excuse to throw him under the bus. You know what I'm saying? You know, simultaneously, you know what I'm saying? He had got news of Elijah Muhammad being guilty of the very same thing that his brother got excommunicated for. So that was one thing. You know what I'm saying? To him, ex him exploit that. You know what I'm saying? Um, he went overseas to make Hajj. You know what I'm saying? And for once in his life, he learned what real Orthodox Islam was. And it wasn't, and, 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 and it wasn't, all right, probably, and, 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 and it wasn't way um was uh, being spread out to him as, you know what I'm saying? So that's another thing, you know, when he learned what actual Islam was, you know, well, he got 31 heads of states. I'm busy right now, bro. He went over there, and he got 31 heads of state. Um. From the, from the African nations and other people to agree to support him in bringing the United States government before the world court, before the UN on, on uh, human rights violations. If you remember, Martin Luther King was preaching the propaganda about civil rights. Everybody's talking about the civil rights movie. Well, the thing, the difference is that, you no, know, the civil rights is a domestic issue. Your right to sit at the counter and eat with somebody, you know what I'm saying, it's a civil issue. You know what I'm saying? No one can intervene. No external government can intervene on a domestic issue. But when it comes to us being lynched, churches get blown up, you know what I'm saying, little kids getting massacred and slaughtered, you know what I'm saying, by government agents and all of that, those are human rights violations. You know what I'm saying? We get Martin Luther King that was talking civil rights. Malcolm was trying to wake people up. You know what I mean? You know, so that's one thing. Um, if you ever wonder how when Malcolm became a part of the nation of Islam, how did it, it bloom? It blossomed. Membership bloom. Temples started getting erected all over. Do you know how much money it cost that goes into building the temple and all of these buildings and all these houses that they had? Elijah Muhammad, Elijah Poole didn't have that money. He didn't have money like that. Malcolm didn't have money like that. So where did it come from? Do your research. Write this down. The name is H.L. Hunt. 
His name is H. L. Hunt, a white, a white supremacist hey, billionaire hey, 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 no not even a what the kkk was funding niggas that that the yeah, his name is his, his name that's a the name is hl hunt that's yeah. that's the name that you're talking about yuck his name was yeah. hl hunt yeah, his son his, his son his son lamar hunt is the owner of the kansas city chiefs oh wow that's the son of hl hunt you know what i'm saying wow. you can research this and look this up right now he's being wow. credited he was also credited and also being associated with the assassination of JFK as well. If you look up H.L. Hunt, he was he was he was he was one of the people funding Elijah Muhammad. So when Malcolm made that statement, H.L. Hunt is the one who had an issue with Malcolm making that statement. Not Elijah. Why would Elijah have an issue with Malcolm saying something that he taught him with taught him how to say? Elijah Muhammad is the one who taught Malcolm. All of his thoughts that he had. So why would Elijah Muhammad have an issue when him said chickens coming home to roost? No, it was H.L. Hunt. H.L. Hunt threatened to take back his funding. So Elijah Muhammad, being that he had other people that can replace Malcolm with, you know what I'm saying? Malcolm became expendable. It's a lot of things to go into this. You gotta go and read deep. They don't teach you these things in the textbook. You gotta go and do your research on it. If you go and talk to a lot of people, they won't, they won't even tell you, they won't even tell you that for Muhammad actually had a criminal record, but they'll tell you that he was God. He was God who came and said a person of a man. They won't tell you the truth. Malcolm found out all these truths. That's why he left. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? See, history is not as exciting as you think it is. It's frightening. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to say the nation of Islam. I'm not going to do what Anton did. I'm not going to say that the nation of Islam was a fraud organization. It was not a fraud. Now, his, now his tenants were off. His, his tenants were flawed, but it was a great organization because it taught black people to stand up for themselves at a time when black people were being massacred. When you had the civil rights organization. Organizations, NAACP and all them that was telling niggas, you know what I'm saying, to turn the other cheek and allow themselves to be to be humiliated and mutilated. You had the nation that stood up, you know what I'm saying, to you know, at least project, you know what I'm saying, black resistance. But that's another thing. Malcolm left the nation because he pointed out the fact that since Malcolm during the whole time, not one time did the nation ever Ever on record, from the time of Malcolm to his beginning, did the nation of Islam ever engage in white supremacists in any kind of war, in any kind of uh um of combat? With all the with all the shit that was happening against black people, not one time did the nation of Islam go and stand up and engage in any kind of confrontation. Malcolm wanted to rise to action. Elijah Muhammad is on record saying that he Malcolm. One of the things that got him excommunicated because Malcolm wanted to go to war and he didn't. So why would he throw Malcolm under the bus? You told him to stand up, but all of a sudden you want to throw him under the bus. All of these reasons are the reason why Malcolm left. So I'm giving you direct answers that you can go on research on your own. That vague answer that Anton gives just do us an injustice. When I speak on these topics, I'm compassionate about it because I care about our people. I am a student of history, man. I really, I seek the real answers, man. This ain't about probably just being up here talking just for the sake of talking because I'd rather listen. You know what I'm saying? But this is a serious thing. He right. It's kids that's going to be, it's, it's affected by what we're doing. So the worst thing we can do for kids, man, is continuously allow them to be fed lies. We got to tell them the truth so that way they can work out, work out real answers, having the truth. They can own themselves with real solutions, man. That's what I believe in. So if I'm going to be a part of this discussion, that's where I come from. I'm going to give you the hard facts. None of this old poor me ass shit. I'm not coming talking to y'all as no poor me. I don't feel sorry for myself. Any situation I was in, I put myself in it. I stand before you as an accountable dude, but I did mine like a man standing up, not like a bitch on my knees whining and complaining, pointing the finger at somebody looking for some easy way out. I took the long, hard road to get where the fuck I'm at. That's why I'm standing here. That's why I'm sitting here talking to y'all. That's why I'm on my way back. I earned my way back. I took no shortcuts to do it. You know what I mean? You know, it's a lot of OGs in here that did this like men. 
I was just talking to one this morning when I got off with you. Bro, you know how long that OG been down? Straight. 56 motherfucking years. God damn, bro. 56 years. You think a nigga like Anton just say something to me when I'm talking to a nigga that did his standing up for 56 motherfucking years? God 56 damn. years, nigga. Can you even, most niggas can't even imagine doing 56 minutes. This nigga did 56 years of his life. I feel this motherfucker. Wow. You can't even tell if you didn't talk to that dude that he been down that long. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, I'm going to speak highly of these dudes, man. I'm proud of them for their survival skills, man. It's about survival up in these motherfuckers. You got niggas to go to war every day, man, for shit that they don't know nothing about. They go over there, they give up their whole businesses and everything in their life. They give up, man, and go over there and fight in the war and come back from a country and they got shit to show for it. You got a lot of fucking, you got a lot of motherfucking that is homeless living in 10 cities where them niggas shit, them niggas shit own all kind of shit. They didn't gave up everything. They didn't lost limbs and all kind of shit, and they can't even get, they can't even, man, they, man. Come on, man. Don't talk to me about this old American flag ass shit. This shit is a business, man. Straight up. So I'm looking at it as it is. I'm not talking to you as a dude who feel like nobody owe me nothing. I'm going to earn. I'm going to earn whatever the fuck I get. But it starts with my respect foremost, though. You know what I'm saying? Respect is mandatory. And I would be disrespectful if I was to sit on a nigga stage who I grew up valuing and listening to so much, man, and come on here with some bullshit ass, jargon ass excuses, excuse making, man. These platforms, man, is to give y'all the facts. Do what you want to do with it from there, but we're going to give you the facts. If you're going to have a platform, give the people the facts. You ask that man direct questions. He said, oh, yeah, I don't want to give my opinion. I want to speak on how I think. No, we don't want to hear what, what they think. We ask you for your opinion. You got to give solutions. Give solutions, man. You owe the people solutions if you... And that, that's the whole so, thing. I didn't, I didn't, it sounds like we was complaining about a lot of shit and not giving a solution. I kept trying to give right. a solution. We need to unify. We need to realize that all Americans are equal. All you niggas are in the same boat. You're paying the same taxes. You're going through the same shit. Nigga, when COVID came, we all was locked down. It wasn't just the white niggas that was able, nigga, we all was locked down. It wasn't just the Asian niggas that was able to go. We all was locked down. Everybody. When 9-11 happened, we is all in, in shock, nigga. It happened to all of us, bro, period. So at the end of the day, bro, I think it's more of, like, the solution. Like, he said he was against niggas going to prison, but we wouldn't have Malcolm X if it wasn't for prison. You know what I mean? Straight up. That's where he became. That's where he did it, you know, became a Muslim in jail. That's where he got the Malcolm X name. What what was he? Uh, Red? What what was his name? Before he went to prison, Malcolm X. Anyway, he went by Detroit Red. Detroit Red, Malcolm Little, whatever. I mean, one of the motherfuckers. Yeah, hanging out. Detroit with Red was the street name, but Malcolm, but Malcolm Detroit Little Red. was 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 yeah. Malcolm Little, Detroit Red, and then also he was hanging out with Red Fox. So back in the day, Red mean he was a fly nigga. So. That's like fly fox, you know what I mean? It well, he had he had red hair though. His hair, his he he had he had red skin. You know, light skin is light skin. Us light skinned niggas, they call us red bones. We didn't just have like wasn't just light skin. He had red hair. His hair turned a reddish color when when a when, you know how they had the conk before the perm. It was the conk. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? When they had them eggs and that lie and all that shit, they burnt your damn scalp up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So That's yeah. Hard. That's called a natural. They, they put the, 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 uh, the natural on your ass. It's called the natural. That, yeah, that conk, man. Yeah, well. But look, history. Look, look. Yeah. But prison, prison developed Malcolm Little, and he came out Malcolm X. You know what I mean? You know, uh, and, and we, we have who we have. You know what I mean? If he didn't go to prison, it, it, it'd probably still be Malcolm Little or a Red. You know what I mean? Whatever he was, and just Detroit Red, and just out there wiggling and doing his one too as a street hustler, whatever he was doing, you know. But jail, prison, anytime, juvenile, all that shit changed your life, my nigga. First of all, you got too much time to think. 
can meet up with too many people that could change your life, nigga. Too many, too much game is in there. First of all, you are in the motherfucking Hall of Fame of game, far as being able to make some motherfucking money and women. Am I lying or not? Niggas, you have niggas from all walks of life, credit card scammers, nigga, bank check scammers, nigga, uh, niggas that Absolutely. know how to do this. Like you, this the hard, like you seen blow. Yeah, that nigga Boss of George yeah. got the gas from Miss Sally. Yeah, you're around Diego. some of the you 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 around some of the most sharpest minds, man, ever, man. Ever. You're around some of the sharpest minds ever, man. I'm talking about the span several, several decades, man. I can walk down one tier, man, and, and, and walk through like five or six decades, man. You know what I'm saying? Of just game and wisdom. Period. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, I don't glorify this shit. I don't glorify this shit, man. I don't wish this shit on nobody, bro. Period. No, this is why I do what I do, man. Because I hope it, it discourages it discourages anybody, man, who may be on the verge. The difference between me and any of y'all that's listening to this conversation right now is one fucked up decision. You one fucked up decision from being where I'm at, man. That's the only difference between me and you. You're no different. You know, some of y'all, I'm freer than a lot of y'all out there mentally. You know what I'm saying? Some of y'all are more locked up mentally than I am, than I've ever been. You know what I'm saying? I free my mind, then everything else follow and will follow. But I'm just saying, you just one fucked up decision from being where I'm at. You know what I mean? This is why I do what I do. You know what I mean? So that way, whoever's on the verge of actually wanting to put themselves in this position, you know what I'm saying? I hope that my words, man, could cause you to think differently, man. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of hidden costs to come with this, man. It's a lot of loss. I don't want nobody to go through this shit, bro. Period. We done lost a lot. I done lost over 80% of my family done died since I've been up in here. I don't wish that on nobody, bro. Period. That's not a feel sorry for me thing. That's not a pity me thing. That ain't why I said that. I said that because I don't want you to go through it. Some of y'all think, oh, I ain't going to go through it. Well, look, man, if you out there with this job, Jackie, you know what I'm saying, up in everybody else's business, you know what I'm saying, doing all this cloud chasing shit, you're going to put yourself in a situation where you got to defend for yourself or you're going to either be the suspect or the victim. You know what I'm saying? If you're a motherfucker like me, you know what I'm saying? Nine times out of ten, you're going to be the suspect. Then if you got to do that time, how you going to do it? How you going to do it? You know what I'm saying? The fact is, don't put yourself in this situation to begin with. There's too many ways to get into the bag now like, where you ain't even got to commit crime. Yep, man. Man, just me being on this stage gave me a motivation that I can never turn back from. This motherfucker's getting paid just for doing this. You mean to tell me a nigga like me, man, who got a got a, a world of wisdom to get a motherfucking world? You mean I can also benefit off of the block? I never see me again. Unless I'm going to try to motivate somebody, man, to get the fuck up off of it. Period. I wish I would be out there curb serving a day again in my motherfucking life. Ever. Whoop my ass if y'all see me out there doing it. You got permission. Period. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. Shout out to my sister, Nick, with Town Business, man. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. You know what I mean? What I'm just saying? I'm a man. I've been too long. Huh? No, nah, on some real shit. You're absolutely right, bro. Like, you, you right. And um, I'm right. And he right. You know, from his own different. Because you can't judge how everybody has a right to have their point of view. Or they, they, uh, opinion you know you can't change a nigga's opinion and niggas from different walks of life so people probably that didn't go through what we've been through you know what i mean and i ain't been through what you've been through but uh it flashed because the same thing with a rich nigga you know what i mean you could be in the same situation like i just got out probation my nigga i told you i was on the half a million dollar bill like two years ago when i had to you know the shit when the you know what I mean the shit happened when I had to shoot up some shit in front of the house, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, it could happen to anybody. You know, you gotta know the rules when an intruder come into your house. You know what I mean? You gotta know the rules. You can't shoot at a motherfucker unless they in your house. I didn't know that. I chased a nigga outside with shoes and got arrested and had a half a million dollar bill. They treated me like nigga, I damn near attempted 
you know, the N word on a nigga, you know, so I was fighting for my life, nigga. I was facing a lot of time. So the same thing that Anton Dam was talking about, like, I don't give a fuck what y'all did. Y'all made a mistake. What if an intruder, God forbid, knock on wood, you know what I mean? But it happened to me and I had to defend my family. I found myself behind them bars with a half a million dollar bill and I had to bail out and fight my case. So it could happen to any nigga. You don't have to be a street nigga. You'll be a rich nigga in a mansion and some shooters come in. You got to protect your shit and you could be in the wrong. You know what I mean? On that intruder shit because in California, they got to be facing you for you to shoot them. And they got to be in danger. If they running away, and you shoot them niggas in the back, you going to jail for murder. If they run outside your house and you shoot them, you going to jail for murder. They got to be in your house facing you, shooting at you like a shootout, and you can shoot them. And you know what I mean? Self-defense. So it's some more wild shit. So even a rich nigga in the wrong predicament could get caught up and be locked up for life, my nigga. So at the end of the day, man, the Melendez brothers, nigga, they, they murdered their people. You know what I mean? But they was rich. They didn't have to do it. They just wanted the, the money. You know what I mean? So rich or poor, motherfuckers do fucked up shit, bro. Period. You know what I mean? Sometimes it could be defense. Sometimes it could be survival mode. Sometimes it could be greed. You know what I mean? But rich, poor, nigga, we all do fucked up shit, my nigga. Period. Trump, nigga, just got a, a settlement that he got paid. Not a settlement, but he got paid eight, uh, 350 million. You know what I mean? For some fraud shit he did. So the richest to the poorest niggas do crime. Let's not forget that. And we'll end that on a good note. And get the fuck up out of here. Michael Scar, thank <laughs> you. Did you I already that know, big bro. Did I land that plane right? Man, you land that motherfucker superbly, bro. And you know what I mean? And again, just to be real quick with it, bro. I appreciate it, bro. This is why I come on here, man. We got to have a lot more dialogues like this. And I'm all for it, bro. Off top, man. Salute, man. Nigga, free mic, man. Salute. I can't wait till you get out, my nigga. Thanks for the uh, fucking cash app. And thanks for tapping in, my nigga. Free mic, my nigga. Thanks. Most definitely. Hey, uh, Scar, give your shout out to your shit so they can tap in with you before you get up out of here, bro. Oh, well, I can tap in with my shit, man. the Ghost Regime Network podcast by Michael Scarry, man. You can also follow me, man, on Instagram, man. You know what I'm saying? A Scarry underscore Mike, man. You know what I'm saying? Or, or on Clubhouse. Find us, it's the Ghost Regime, or it's the Crowded Music Streaming Domain, or the Bay Area Side Show. Uh, houses on there, man. But uh, thank y'all for the support, man. I appreciate y'all. Thanks for tapping in, my nigga. I check you on the next one, bro. Yada. Hey, man, check this out, man. Salute to everybody that tapped in. Salute to motherfucker Mike and Scarry, man. Salute to everybody that tapped in in the chat. You feel me? The whole motherfucking C committee, nigga, was clowning. We went on a whole LeBron debate, nigga. It was crazy tonight. Salute to Anton Daniels for tapping in on the surprise visit. You feel me? Um, And shit, follow Anton Daniels shit too, man. Go follow that dude, man. I know he's the most hated dude. The Millionaire Morning, the millionaire morning Show. That's Anton Daniels. You know what I mean? Go follow his shit. And he, got hella, he got like four or five different handles on YouTube. But definitely an intellectual. You know what I mean? Um, you definitely can get some good game from Anton Daniels. You know what I mean? Um, especially when it comes to the relationship game, especially when it comes to the financial game. And uh, yeah, he, he's dope, man. So salute to that brother, man. Thanks for tapping in, and uh, thanks for y'all tapping in, man. And um, shit, man, we're gonna be out of this motherfucker, man. I, I'm kind of lit. I'm kind of fucking tired of shit too, man. I damn near passed out four times, man. Literally, man. <laughs> Long dialogue tonight, nigga. Good night, good morning, nigga. Good morning, Kanye voice, nigga. We out this motherfucker. Young Mouth TV, subscribe to your motherfucking guy guy. You feel me? Shout out to motherfucking Earl Stevens Selections. Yeah, I mean, go get that E. Clementa. You feel me? Shout out to Gasco. Go get that motherfucking Yuck Mouth Culado. Yeah, feel me? Mouth this bitch, man. Yuck Mouth TV, subscribe to your god new Wonder Twins coming soon. Motherfucker, uh, Smoke Light Radio coming next week. All that shit, man. Stay tuned. Hit them likes on the way out. Hit the subscribe on the way out. All that shit. Hit the motherfucking cash app if you really feel with the motherfucking cash app. You feel me? Got it, boy. Bye bye now. I'm saying hell of stupid shit. Bye. <laughs> Nigga, bye bye. <laughs>